I can't wear that. I'm trying to drink my coffee. It's ridiculous. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our regular commission meeting of March the 9th. Can you believe it's March the 9th already? Um, we are going to start this morning with our invocation by Pastor Joe Marin of the Bayside Community Church, East Bradenton Campus. Nice to see you. And then we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. If all would stand, please. Let us pray. Father, what an honor it is to be here this morning to start our day guiding this county, Father. Lord, I was looking over their job descriptions, the county commissioner's job descriptions, Father, and God, they have a big job. They run a, a lot of people, big budgets. Father, they need a lot of wisdom, Father, and a lot of guidance, and a lot of support. So, Father, I pray that you would strengthen them, you would encourage them, God, that you would reignite their passion to lead the people of Manatee County. Father, you're a great God, and you do great things, and I pray that you would use the county commissioners to do amazing things. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with our uh, awards, presentations, and proclamations. That's why we're starting this morning at 8.30. Um, the first is our presentation of the March Employee of the Month Award to Brian Bellamy. Hello, Bill. How are you? Good morning. William Steele, Public Works Transit Division. Here to recognize our teammate, Brian Bellamy. Brian is in the logistics section. He's a, our lead transit attendant. Uh, working for Steve Roberts, our logistic, logistics manager. Both of them are here. Uh, just by way of introduction, what is logistics? Well, you've got these things that need to get done between fleet maintenance and operations. Uh, and there's a lot of little things that need to get done every day. This includes daily uh, fueling cleaning of the fleet, daily maintenance of stops and stations, uh, supplies that are needed for our customer service personnel. These are daily missions um, for our success. But there are also major initiatives that this section has performed that are worthy of, of noting. We've made over 800 bus stop improvements in recent years using a very innovative procurement approach. All of those stops have seating. Brian led that effort, leads that effort, puts in those benches and shelters and bike racks. Uh, very important for our customers. He's been part of our refurbishment efforts for our stations. Um, he's been part of the regional rodeo preparation uh, and implementation a year ago. So he's done a number of things as the lead, and he's progressing as the lead to become the logistics manager one day. There is some background noise. Mm-hmm. I heard it. Um, it was time for us to take the effort uh, the initiative to recognize him for all of these efforts. He's integral to our daily success, but also for these special initiatives. Uh, somebody you can count on all the time. No job's too small. In terms of leadership, you see that he always treats people with courtesy and respect. Um, he has that can-do attitude. And he can lead um, or he can support. Whatever needs to be done on a given day, on a given mission, he can do it. Um, so we're very proud of Brian. We see him as the future of the logistics uh, section. Um, and we recommend that um, in the future he get a supervisory position and then advance to our logistics uh, supervisor, or I'm sorry, logistics manager position. That's where we see him in the future. With that, I'll turn it over to Steve Roberts. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Steve Roberts. I'm a longtime listener, first time speaker. Um, whoever came up with the phrase go to guy must have thought of Brian when they came up with that. He is that guy 
Brian and the team does so much more than just clean and fuel buses. Commissioner Whitmore, remember the bike repair rack down at the DeSoto station? They were there. Ryan was the one that put that in for us. Cool. Ryan and his team. When someone decides to drive through one of our bus stops, which happens quite often, Ryan and his team is the, goes out there, cleans up the wreckage, and they get it uh, ready to install a new amenity as soon as possible. When somebody messes up the downtown stations or the DeSoto stations restrooms, mm -hmm. Brian and his team go out there and clean that up. <clears throat> right now, Brian is our unofficial lead attendant. He's uh, unofficial because there is no lead attendant position. We like to get one, if possible, event in the future. He's always looking for ways to improve his leadership skills. The recognition is well-deserved and long past due which is my fault. I had never put him in before, and finally I did, and he's been recognized as the Employee of the Month. Thank you, Brian, for all you do. Your efforts do not go unnoticed. Thank you. Come on. You, so, Brian, we <laughs> want to make sure you're recognized for the official of the March of Employee of the Month. And, uh, you know, Ten minutes. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Awesome. Full half hour. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. I'd like to say a few things. Uh, what a distinction to be recognized for my work ethic throughout the years here at Mandy County Government. Without a great crew behind me, I could have not accomplished this award. I'd like to directly thank Bill Steele, Jim Egbert, Steve Roberts for their continued support and leadership. I would also like to acknowledge my coworkers who helped me on a day-to-day -day basis making our work possible. My fellow transit attendants, our administrative staff, our bus operators, and our fleet mechanics. Together, we are able to facilitate a safe and reliable means of transportation for our residents of Mantee County and our surrounding counties. I will continue to strive for excellence in my position at some point, move up the leadership ladder as I have great mentors before me. I am truly honored to be here and to represent my department. Thank you very much. We've got a few people here that would like to say a few words. Sure. Commissioner Servia. Yes, uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, Mr. Bellamy, and thank you so much for being here to accept this honor. It, it makes me feel so good that we have leaders like you who are up and coming through the county. Thank you for your leadership, and when I see you thank others for what you've accomplished, I mean, that's always the first sign to me that you are just a dynamic leader. Thank you for your work ethic. Thank you for your hard work. Please continue and inspire others, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Commissioner Whitmore. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I have a question. The, hard, the hardest part around, is around the central the, the bus stop here, the mains bus stop, the yes, transit stop. And I heard that you have to oversee all that. Um, and we close the bathrooms at a certain time, but yet we still have homeless on the streets. So are you seeing issues still? I mean, they're uh, close to a bathroom but can't get to it? <laughs> not really. Lately, it's been pretty quiet around that area. Um, every now and then, you'll get one or two homeless mm -hmm. trying to do their, do their, do their deal. But yeah. it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good these days. I've asked a couple times, but um, I think for safety reasons, everybody's saying no about leaving the main bathrooms open at transit during the night, because if not, they go in the bushes, so. Correct. So um, anyway, that's something, maybe something in the future we can look at. Yes, definitely. That would be a good and idea. And I was asking you, because you're firsthand, you're on the, you're on the ground. Yes, ma'am. Still Tuesday. So, okay, thank you. Good job, congratulations. Thank you. Thank Commissioner you. Bellamy. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy. Yeah. Hey, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you for everything, sir, and thank your, you, sir. your continued leadership. And one thing that I've heard is your, your desire to continue to strengthen your leadership and for you to move forward and continue to impact the county. Thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Thank you. And I guess I'll finish it off. Um, you know what? It's because of people like you 
that the county is what it is today. Um, Thank you. You know, we can all sit up here and it's not about us. It's about you guys that are out in the field working every day. So just thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you've done. I look forward to you moving up the ladder. I think, it, you know, you've got a lot of opportunity here. And thank you for everything you've already done. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, Commissioner, Va Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to thank you as well. I've, uh, I think you and I have cleaned more buses than anybody up here. Uh, <laughs> I, run, I ran a tour company. Uh, I guess I technically still have the license. Um, but, uh, ran a tour company for like six years and uh, here of my own, and I ran one in Alaska as well. And uh, I've, I appreciate every single day and every single evening that you're out there cleaning those buses. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was doing it for myself, but you're doing it for the people of Manatee County. So I appreciate it, and I wish you great success in the Thanks, future. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead uh, to proclamations. What is the pleasure of the board? Uh, motion to approve a pro proclamation. Is there a second? Okay. I'll second it. Or, uh, thank you. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Bellamy, a second by Commissioner Cruz. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, it's... Uh, any nays out there? All right, it is approved unanimously with five. Everyone but James Satcher. Six. 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 Yeah. Now we have the adoption and presentation of proclamation designating March 21st <coughs> through the 27th as Florida Surveyors and Mappers Week in Manatee County. Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. It is my honor to read this proclamation. And who do we have here today? Come on down, guys. Good morning. <laughs> so um, I love surveyors. I've worked with them my whole career. They tell us where we are in the world. It's really important to know that. So today, uh, it's my honor, as I said, to read this. And it says, whereas surveyors and mappers are counted among the founding leaders of our country and were instrumental in the formation of property boundaries, which support the enjoyment of property ownership. And whereas we recognize the valuable contributions of the surveying and mapping profession to history, development, and quality of life in Florida and nationwide, and make important decisions based on the knowledge and expertise of licensed surveyors and mappers. And whereas the surveying and mapping profession requires special education, training, the knowledge of mathematics, the related physical and applied sciences, and requirements of law for evidence. And whereas surveyors and mappers are uniquely qualified and licensed to determine and describe land and water boundaries for the management of natural resources and protection of private and public property rights. And whereas the continual advancements in instrumentation have required the surveyor and mapper not only to be able to understand and implement the methods of the past, but also to learn and employ modern technology and finding solutions to meet the challenges of the future. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that March 21st through 27th, 2021, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Florida Surveyors and Mappers Week in Manatee County, Florida. Adopted with a quorum present and voting this ninth day of March 2021, it is signed by our Chairman, Vanessa Baugh. And who would like to accept this? Hi. Hi. Thank you. I'm Aaron Levine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Say a few words. Uh, uh, good, morning, uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Aaron Levine. I'm vice president of MSB Surveying and Mapping. I'm the current president of the Mayo Chapter of Florida Sur Surveyors and Mappers. I uh, just want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to come before you on behalf of your local surveying and mapping community. Um, during this time of economic growth and development, the service our firms provide to this community is more important than ever. As local surveyors and mappers, we take the responsibility of stewardship over our community's valuable land and water boundaries very seriously. We use the latest technology and measuring systems coupled together with extensive experience and legal principles to accurately map and preserve what, in, what is in many cases the most important asset our clients will ever possess, their real estate. We are passionate about protecting these assets by conducting ourselves as professionals and unbiased arbiters of the position of land boundaries. 
Uh, currently, there are bills before the Florida House and Senate that look to degrade the educational requirements to become a licensed surveyor mapper in this state. Specifically, the bills look to remove the requirement of a four-year bachelor's degree. Given the importance and complexity of what we do, we believe the passage of these bills would be a grave mistake. It could put our community at risk of not receiving the quality surveying services it needs and deserves. We ask for your support in stopping this legislation. Uh, my fellow co colleagues and I sincerely appreciate the board publicly recognizing our permission today. Thank you so much. Thank you. you know, I'm going to ask a quick question. Do you sure. by chance know what the numbers are on those bills? Is it a House bill and a Senate bill? Uh, it's a House bill and Senate bill. I actually I don't have the numbers with me today. I wish I did. Um, but Look yeah, they up. are um, in the House. It's made it through the first re review committee. It's on to the second now. Okay. Thank you for the information. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, who all did you bring with you today? Are you by oh, yourself? Yes. Um, so this is, <laughs> Todd will let you go ahead and speak, but this is Manatee County's uh, uh, surveying uh, professional and his staff. <coughs> Todd Boyle. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, board, uh, Todd Boyle, Manatee County surveyor. And my staff, uh, Priscilla Seleska, uh, Joe Carnavalli, and uh, Ryan Clark. Uh, they're, they're my staff that makes it possible for us to do the survey work that we do. And I think we're a small but really effective team. Awesome. And I appreciate the opportunity that, to have the proclamation. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate what you do. Although, as a realtor, I've had some up and down relationships with surveyors in the course <laughs> of my career. Uh, <laughs> Surveyors have had up and down relationships with realtors. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> touche, touche. Um, so uh, on Thursday, April 8th, actually, I do a, I'm working with county staff every other month. I'm picking a different um, area, and I'm, I did road with uh, EMS uh, on Medic 10 last month, and so next month. Uh, I'm going out with your survey crew on April 8th, uh -oh. and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, I told Charlie, you know, you can stick me in the middle of Cortez Road, that's fine, and if you stick me in the, <laughs> in the mud in, in Mayaka, that's fine, too. You heard so him I say thought, it. Whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever the day is, that's the day, whatever the draw is. So cool. anyway, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Good. Commissioner Whitmore. I, and I wanted to thank uh, our staff for um, hanging in there. There's been a few issues where our staff our staffs um, stood strong on, didn't agree with what uh, what was happening. Misty, I want him to come up. Misty, can you come up? I for balls. What's your name? No. What's your name? Tom. Tom. I, uh, Todd. Yeah. Todd. I I just want to thank you because you um, when you've come before us and you felt strong about something that we were doing. You didn't cow down to us and you told us what your professional recommendation is. And actually, that gets more respect than anything. So I just wanted to thank you guys for um, trying to get us on the right track when we need to be. And I just thank wanted you. to thank you because I know you've taken some heat through the years and coming up before us on very contentious issues. And, you know, some of the board would go, just, you know, let's just do it. And you go, no, no, that's not the way it's going to be. I mean, this is, these are the rules. And then we made the decision. But right. I do want to thank you for standing your grounds when you fought, felt that there wasn't something right. Thank you very much. Yeah, you need to hear that. <laughs> thank you. How long have you been with the county, Todd? How long? I've been here since 2007, and, and I count it an honor and a privilege to have served all these years. Uh, it's been a tremendous opportunity professionally and personally. I, you know, I we really feel the same way about you, right? You know <laughs> thank that. you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other commissioners? All right. Thank you so much. Yes, you're very welcome. <clears throat> Every Thank year you. you guys come forward, and it's always great to see y'all in here for this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next uh, proclamation is Government Finance Professionals Week. Commissioner Cruz. A few friends. <clears throat> I don't think you get to come up for something you signed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're to uh, to finance. My my favorite subject. 
And uh, we have a proclamation, whereas March 15th through 19th, 2021, will be celebrated throughout the state of Florida as Government Finance Professionals Week. Whereas the Florida Government Finance Officers Association is a professional association founded in 1937 and serves more than 3,300 professionals from state, county, and city governments, school districts, colleges, and universities, special districts, and private firms. And whereas the FGFOA is dedicated to being your professional resource by providing opportunities through education, networking, leadership, and information. And whereas Government Finance Professionals Week, sponsored by the FGFOA and all its member governmental organizations, is a week-long series of activities aimed at recognizing government finance professionals and the vital services they provide to our state and community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that March 15th through 19th, 2021, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Government Finance Professionals Week in Manatee County, Florida, and the commissioners extend our appreciation to all government finance professionals through the state and here in Manatee County for their hard work, dedication, and leadership. This is adopted with a quorum present and voted this ninth day of March 2021, signed by Chairperson Vanessa Baugh, and attested by the Clerk of the Court, Angel Colonisa. So we have Jan and, well, a million people here. <laughs> <laughs> saw a few of you walk in before I started talking. So, here you go. Can we hear from the clerk first? Yeah, I like that. I want to hear from you. Sorry. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, George is right. Commissioner Cruz is right. The camera's not showing it, but there are quite a bit of people in this room that make things happen on a daily basis. It's 250 years of combined experience in finance in this room. And, <clears throat> excuse me. This is both Jan's team and my team, and I'll let Jan speak for her team. My team, I am exceptionally proud to lead this team. They have 41 years. We were awarded consecutive awards for excellence in finance reporting, financial reporting by the, the GFOA, and that's the Government Finance Officers Association, as well as 27 years for our port comprehensive financial report consecutive awards um, for excellence in finance reporting, and as well as 22 years in our port uh, um, popular report, um, excellence in financial reporting. And what goes into this is behind, there's all all kinds of, it's an alphabet soup, it's GFOA, FGFOA, GAAP, um, the government accounting standards, and there are also, um, there's law out there that all of those incorporate, and this team gets it right, and they get awards every year for us. We've continued that tradition, and I'm so proud to, to be their clerk and comptroller. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioners, Jan Brewer, Director of Financial Management. I just wanted to say um, on our side of the house, we've had 32 years of budget awards um, consecutively by the, governor, by the Governmental Finance Officers Association. And I just want to take this moment, I'm so glad you're letting us do it, because this is our public service in our own little way. We count beans and we're very proud of that but <laughs> but we do it with pride because we're doing it for the public service and we appreciate you giving us that opportunity to to applaud them thank you wow anybody else going to speak <clears throat> all right we'll get to some <laughs> get to a few commissioners how about that <laughs> commissioner servia Yes, um, good morning and thank you all for being here. It certainly does take a lot of effort to run a budget that is almost a billion dollars. And so I am so appreciative of all of your experience, 250 years, I guess that's what it takes. Um, thank you uh, to Angel and to Jan and to those before you for always um, serving with excellence so that we are recognized with all of those awards. Um, I know that you guys do an excellent job and I'm so proud of the work that you do. Thank you. That's all I can say, thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. Um, I'd like to ask, our budget is a little, what, it's over a billion now, correct? I think it's one point. Yes, Commissioner, it's right at 1.5 billion and so is your CIP. <clears throat> so it's 1.5 and, and um, you know, it's good that you guys are down here and you know, education is power, knowledge is power. And, um, 
you guys, uh, uh, people don't realize, they think it's, uh, they think government, some think that government is just like the private sector and it's not because it's public funds. We don't make profits. We just, we provide public service. And I know you guys are doing in-services. I know Angel's um, doing something with us in the future. Um, also, uh, it would be good if we also did something Angel included with the Inspector General, because you know we get a few emails as I sent you one yesterday. Um, and Jan, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, I know you were uh, in um, DeSoto County, you were um, in your position now, and then you were put into the administrator mm -hmm. position, and you hurriedly came back, <laughs> and, you be and you took this role over because you knew what the other role was. And so we appreciate you. You guys, um, I, I know you all work very, very hard. You don't hear it, we don't see you guys. You're behind the scenes, only a few. And just wanted to thank everybody um, for giving us that AAA rating to be able to do what we need to do to keep this county going, so thank you. Thank you. I'm very humbled to work with all these people, I have to tell you. They set a high standard, and that's that's good to compete against. So it's 1.5. Guys, I think I'm last here on the board, so you know what? <coughs> a couple of things that I've heard from my peers up here this morning is very true. You know what? We couldn't do what we do without all of you because you guys are out there making sure that the money is well spent because it's not our money, it's taxpayers' money. Everybody that lives in Manatee County uh, helps to contribute to county government. So it, it's very important, thank God for all of you. Keep up the great job. You all make us look good, so we love you for that. But really, I know it's a tough, tough job, and sometimes it's extremely demanding. So thank you for what you do for this county, for all of us. Thank you, and have a great day. Um, Madam Administrator, are there any updates to the agenda that you need to share with us this morning? Yes, Madam Chair, good morning. Bless for the you. updates to the agenda, for item three, citizen comments, written comments submitted through the online public comment forum were added to this item. Changes to the consent agenda, financial management. Item seven, adoption of FY21 budget amendment resolution B-21 dash 053 and infrastructure sales tax resolution B-21-030. Resolution B-21-053 was updated and replaced to correct a Scrivener's error in the batch ID number for item number five. Under advertised public hearings, building and development services, item 20, Adoption of Ordinance 21-09, establishing the Prosperity Lakes Community Development District. A typographical error in the notice of public hearing advertised this ordinance as number 20-09. All other information in the notice was correct. The applicant is aware of the error and wishes to proceed with the public hearing. Changes to the regular agenda. Under the administrator, item number 22, updates on CARES Act strategies, the emergency rental assistance program, and coronavirus local strategies involved with testing, local data, statistics, and vaccine distribution, extension of the local state of emergency. The following items were added to this agenda item. The Governor's Executive Order 21-45, extending the state of emergency for the state of Florida for an additional 60 days. Written comments submitted through the online public comment forum. And PowerPoint presentation on the ongoing response to the COVID-19 pandemic. That is all, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Administrator. Okay, so we do have two time certains. First one's at 11 o'clock. Item number 22 on the CARES Act. Then at 1.30, we have another one on item number 23, <coughs> consideration of amending the 2021 legislative platform policy statement for emergency water treatment options at Piney Point. So that being said, um, we'll move on forward. Commissioners, are there any items from consent that you would like pulled? <coughs> this is two meetings in a row, there are none. Okay. I've already reached out to department heads for my questions, and I'm good. Well, that's why it's so nice getting the agenda a little sooner than, than before to be able to get that done. 
All right, so great. We have no items being pulled then. So we're gonna go into uh, citizen comments for uh, future agenda items. I have several cards here uh, that I'm looking at. Uh, the first one, Pam Freeney. If you'd like to come forward, you'll have three minutes. Thank you. The camera? I need to put something on screen. Maybe that'll work. That'll work. There we go. Okay. Good morning. I'm Pam Frenny of Shelter Manatee, and it's been 686 days since you approved the new animal shelter. The importance of the new East County Shelter continues to grow. Providing visitors transformative experiences has become a critical draw for many tourism locales. Swimming with the dolphins, bungee jumping, you get the idea. Each giving vacationers something to write home about on social media. Going to the beach on Anna Maria is not interactive enough for many generations anymore. They want destination vacationing. Best Friends Animal Sanctuary is in tiny Kanab, Utah. To get there, I have to fly to Phoenix, drive for five hours. It's the original destination location for the animal rescue experience. Best Friends opened 35 years ago and after five years was almost bankrupt. They changed their business model, becoming a destination, and in 2019, this amazingly obscure rescue had 100,000 visitors, 30,000 volunteers, and their budget was $79 million. Kanab's lack of hotel rooms was a bottleneck to adding sanctuary visitors, so Best Friends opened their own hotel. This brought more visitors and a significant new profit center. Beyond destinations, shelters are becoming facilities where animal welfare and social services meet. You can see it actually made the front of, the, of one of the magazines here. The best of them have evolved into community centers that include animal rescue, vibrant places devoted to pet training and behavior modification with community interaction and educational programs. And now, new shelters are force multipliers. They're an animal shelter, local meeting place, a safe place for a pet owner, fleeing spousal abuse, a public dog park, a running buddy program, a public meeting facility, a hurricane shelter for families with pets. I could go on because shelters are exploding into multi-use facilities as their value becomes apparent and as our imaginations broaden. Many cities are in pursuit of the triple bottom line of financial, social, and environmental success, with more and more communities investing in new infrastructure that benefits their citizens and local businesses. Multifunctional assets can dramatically increase the resource efficiency. The East County Animal Shelter would not be a dog pound. It would be an architecturally and environmentally socially conscious facility similar to the one here. Manatee County Animal Service is the leader in our region for its life-saving success, and our new shelters can be animal welfare destinations while functioning as broader social assets in the county. An East County shelter supporter recently noted, the Bishop Shelter development is almost magical. In it, I see a clearer path to what we all have dreamed of, Manatee County as a world-class leader in total animal welfare. If we don't pursue destination sheltering and a multi-use facility through the East County Shelter, we're gonna be on the outside looking in again as someone else in the area does. And once again, we can be Sarasota's ugly little sister. <laughs> wow. wow, I never thought of it that way. Ugly <laughs> little sister. Thank you. Christina Skepton, come on down and you'll have three minutes. Good morning, commissioners. I want to start off by thanking Commissioner Ball. She recently made me so angry that she caused me to get involved. Could you please state your name for the record? Christina Skepton. I want to start off by thanking Commissioner Ball. <coughs> she recently made me so angry that she caused me to get involved. And since I have now lived in Lakewood Ranch for two years, it seems the perfect time. With that said, no, Commissioner Ball. Your recent actions in response to the vaccine pop-up site aren't going to quietly slip into the night. Many of us will never forget how you decided to grant access to additional vaccines only to your constituents. Many of us will never forget how you bypassed the countywide process for vaccine distribution. Many of us will never forget how you created a VIP list of vaccine recipients. 
a list which we all know included yourself. Many of us especially will never forget how you said last summer that you would never wear a mask and you would never mandate a mask in your business, yet the moment you had the chance, you put yourself at the top of a list to receive a vaccine to combat that very virus. Many of us will also never forget how you voted to repeal the countywide mask mandate in the fall, yet the moment you had the chance, you put yourself at the top of a list to receive a vaccine to combat that very virus. Recently, you stated you love Manatee County. I think you should have stated you love the people in zip codes 34202 and 34201 who just so happen to be the people that can vote for you and the rest of Manatee County residents be damned. Who are these other people? People in these zip codes, 34201, 34203, 34205, 34207, 34208, 34209, 34210, 34212, 34215, 34216, 34217, 34218, 34219, 34220, 34221, 34222, 34228, 34243, 34250, 34251. That is a lot of people who were overlooked, and we will not forget. There are certain bad decisions that can be moved beyond with a simple apology. This is not one of those times. I recommend the commissioners vote to ban Vanessa Ball from running for any county position in the next election. There needs to be consequences to her abuse of power. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Nathan Levinson. Nathan Levinson. As the other two have spoken, and thank you both. State your name, please. Yeah. Nathan Levinson. Okay. We are all drawing a line in the sand over your corruption. As we seen last week, what you did to Sherry Correa, which is now you, all, all four of you are being investigated by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. <clears throat> we all seen it was cold and calculated what you did with your strings being pulled by the Debbies, by Agatha, by Andra. <clears throat> now what you have forgotten and what you didn't do was walk through this building and talk to every single department through all of Manatee County Works and see what they thought and how they felt about Sherry Correa. You would have been surprised. I would like to say you would be ashamed, but we all know that's not possible. <clears throat> And as far as the ones pulling your strings, you are all just doing damage. Damage to the no-kill movement. I will get this in words from Nathan Winograd himself. <clears throat> Robbing and stealing, taking these funds for a new shelter. I'm up here in support of Manatee County Animal Services. For the past nine years, I've been up here, I hate to say against them, but complaining about them. But I'm out your support for, for all they've done, the good they are doing. And because of everything that has gone on, again, we need a charter for discussion, put on the agenda, and for a vote. We're not waiting for the Department of Justice or the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to come cuff you and take you away. We want the power back to the people, and it's time. Again, what you did to Sherry is not going away. In fact, I'm going to, with her permission, put out a petition for her reinstatement. This is all far from over. Everything you have done is far from over. Vanessa, George, Kevin, James, far from over. All your removals, you might as well just resign, are imminent by the power of the people. You have betrayed the public trust. You will continue to betray the public trust. We, the people, have had enough. Well, I have the time to say Quotes from the paper. 
Let's put this up there. Make sure we get that on there. I'll go ahead and read it from here. Oh, I'll it here. Okay. Mr. Levin, Copies sir. of the phone records and test conversations show a text sent text sent around 6:45 a.m. on November 19th, in which Cruz texted Satchel for instructions to ignore our call the other night, stick to the original. The vote to proceed with terminating Coriolis contract came just hours later. Mr. Levin, you are all you need guilty to of sin. Up, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Richard Carnard, you're next. Come on down. Good morning, County Commissioners. My name's Richard Conard. Uh, I came today to express a concern that I have. Uh, at the present time, uh, uh, we've got a, an increasing amount of homelessness and and hunger uh, uh, problems in our community. As I'm sure we're all aware, communities are really, really evaluated on three things. The success of their businesses, the quality of our education, and the well-being of our citizens. Uh, and uh, it's, it's the latter one that I'm, I'm concerned about. Uh, we've got a great job going with our businesses through the chamber. Great job doing with our education through the Manatee School District. Uh, but we need to do a lot more on how we're going to deal with homelessness and, uh, and, and the hunger problem. Uh, I'm on the board of a small little group called Feeding Empty Little Tummies. And in trying to deal with this uh, circumstance, I'm putting together a collaborative effort with the University of South Florida to study this very uh, very situation and see what uh, what we can do to accomplish uh, more because we're we're seeing more and more panhandling and people sleeping on the streets and uh, I think there's every chance this is going to lead to civil unrest as we go forward. Uh, my request of you today is to uh, uh, I, I'd like to participate and do anything I can do to help uh, by setting up a workshop to study this situation because we've got, we've got a lot of effort that's happening individually and with organizations sort of in a silo, and I think a great deal more could be accomplished if we organized that and uh, focused it. So my request to you is uh, as soon as we possibly could to set up a workshop to deal with, the, uh, with those two issues. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great idea. Total agreement. Uh, Tim Ritchie, you'll have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Ritchie, this is not, if I could ask, please, this is not in reference to our time certain on Piney Point? No, Commissioner. Okay, great, thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Tim Ritchie, and I happen to be a resident of Charlotte County. So I just spent an hour driving north up here. I was at your Piney Point special meeting a couple weeks ago. So we're here to discuss the Peace River Minnesota Water Supply Authority, I-17. Now how many permits does Mosaic have pulling millions of gallons of water out of the Florida aquifer every day? And how many have every one of you commissioners on this board taken a check from Mosaic for donations? I know every one of you have. Well, I'm glad to see that, Mr. George. You get a check. So we have this real problem today that we're all coming back to get together about. Do you think you should be issuing any more permits to Mosaic Phosphate Mining? Any NPDES permits? 
we shouldn't be having any. You are polluting Charlotte Harbor in the Peace River via Horse Creek. My Peace River and Charlotte Harbor. And I'm up here representing Charlotte County and DeSoto County citizens. I don't need to be elected for this job. You all should take from your personal checking account today and send whatever money they sent you back. And Jeff Barath of HRK Holdings, you've been put on the top 10 environmental list for, mo for Florida environmental polluters. We don't commend somebody for opening up and breaching and polluting Hillsborough, uh, the Bay. Now, what am I up here saying all this for? Because guess what? We have a real problem in Florida. Mosaic phosphate mining. And that needs to stop. And I don't mean a little bit. It needs to stop today. You should put out a letter and tell them, we're not issuing you any more permits. Why? Because we have over 27 big gyp stacks. Go to Polk County, Bartow. This is serious. It's destroying the water. Alpha gross particles, cadmium, arsenic, fluoride, sulfuric acid, forsylic acid. You know what that does? It burns through everything. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, sir. Michael, I know I'm not going to get this right. Sarzano? Did I get it right? All right. Sounds good. I'm impressed. Good. Yep. Thank you. I did something good today. I'm impressed. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Michael Zarzano. I'm the administrator for the Florida County Congress, a grassroots oversight committee of counties. I'm here today to alarm you, I hope. Today's newspaper, the Herald Tribune, experts say nutrient-laden waters may be fueling red tide. Maybe? Yesterday in the papers, and all these articles were from today and yesterday, all about water and pollution in Florida. Facebook Live event planned on radioactivity and phosphate waste. That was last night. We attended that on Facebook. Yesterday's Herald Tribune, Florida still failing to save our springs. And finally... This article from yesterday also, manatees in death spiral across Florida. And we continue to allow a corporation, a corporate monster called Mosaic, who is making lots of money while we sacrifice our environment. Who are they selling to and making lots of money from? CCP. Do you know that acronym? Chinese Communist Party. That's right, the butchers of Beijing. Are you going to sleep well at night now that you know you are helping the Chinese Communist Party grow their food so they can grow their armies and keep their soldiers strong so they can butcher their own people? Here, here is right. Folks, commissioners, audience, this is no joke. We are destroying Florida so that we can sell phosphate to the red Chinese communist. We're building gyp stacks that now tower over 400 feet high. The highest point in Florida used to be a natural hill almost 400 feet high. Now, the highest point in Florida is a mountain of pollution, radioactive waste by this corporate monster called Mosaic. And they are a monster. They are destroying everything in their path. And they're about to come into DeSoto <laughs> County. And we recommend a referendum be put on the ballot to say no to Mosaic. The people of these counties are demanding a referendum to say no more to Mosaic. 
This would release you individuals. Put it up to the people's vote. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And Cynthia Zardano. No, hold on. Zarzano. Did I get it right that time, too? Good morning, Commissioners. It's good to see some of you again. It was driving me crazy where I'd seen these faces before, and it was at a certain meeting. Um, and at that meeting... Um, could you please oh, state sorry, your name Cynthia, for the record? Thank Cynthia you. compton Zarzano. Um, I'm here to talk about water, too. And again, um, this is not a manatee county thing. This is not a Sarasota county thing. There are so many counties that are combined that are that will be affected by every one of y'all's decisions when when the the water flows downstream from Polk County down to Charlotte Harbor it affects so much and if you guys are not aware of the effects that it has had for the last 10 15 years then you shouldn't be sitting up there. There are people whose lives have been destroyed because of Mosaic. Last night on the, the Facebook live chat, they, they talked about how we house the toxins. We are left with the toxins that Mosaic re stirs up and leaves while Every, the rest of the world gets to have the fertilizer shipped to them, but even the fertilizers are dangerous to our aquifer, our beautiful Gulf of Mexico. This morning on the paper, Inglewood already has warnings for red tide. Mosaic wants to blame sugar. Sugar wants to blame Mosaic. They want to say it doesn't really happen. It's a natural phenomenon. Yes, it is a natural phenomenon. That fertilizer escalates. What do you want to do? What do you do when you want your flowers to bloom? You fertilize them. That's exactly what happens with red, uh, blue-green algae, which manifests into red tide once it goes through the brackish waters of Charlotte Harbor. So if you guys want to allow Mosaic to continue, then you need to figure out a way to stop it on the Peace River where your county ends, and good luck with that. Otherwise, I don't recall, and I could be wrong, but I have been to the workshops that Mosaic has in trying to convince us that this is a good thing. I haven't seen any of you at these workshops. And if I'm wrong, then I apologize, but I really don't recall seeing you. They are trying to convince us that this drilling, or this, this whatever they do, I'm sorry, I'm, I wish I was more educated than I am on their tactics and stuff, but all I know is it's destroying our aquifers. They are not properly lining their gypsacks, or they would not be experiencing leakage which destroys the limestone underneath, causing sinkholes, which then flow into our aquifers. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience would like to come forward and speak on future agenda items? Come on down. State your name, you'll have three minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> I know, good morning. My name is Betty Sales Rose, and I'm going to be here for several times to this board get their stuff together. And I think, Ball, you should not be up there as chairman of this board. Now, I know for a fact, you never trust a person to have let you down more than one time. And I cannot control your behavior. But for me, I'm not in the hate zone. Now, these new commissioners just came on, just like the guy say, yes, you all is involved in the sunshine violation. So, you all got to suffer the consequences along with your chairman of your board. Now, if we turn the shoe on the other shoe, 
if a person of color would have been up there as the chairman of that board, every one of you all would have disbanded and say for him to uh, her to step down. See, I don't see no color, but you all see color. If you all was right as a commissioner, you all knew what she did, she should have been down, and her as a person should have stepped down herself. And another thing I need to tell you all, a lady came up here two weeks ago and made a little issue about, I guess, on your side about the vaccine. No. Manatee County Rural Health is not charging for no vaccine. And I'm going to give thanks to Reggie Bellamy for opening up the Palmetto Youth Center, for Derek Rallon for opening up 13 Air and Roboni Youth Center, for the people of my people and other people to get that vaccine. And then to start the ball rolling, whether you all know, you all didn't even think about north of the river, where some of you all commission at large is supposed to help, that um, Michelle Rainey, along with Reggie Bellamy, um, the Path of the Community Christian, and three Republicans now, and you all know their name, I don't have to mention, they opened up for five of us, 500 people to get that vaccine. Now, I had my last shot Sunday. Yes, I had the two doses of it. But I waited my time because you out there, your voters, I don't read everything about you, but they're not going to be around y'all time to try for you to get their vote to help them along their way. And we're going to pay close attention to you. What be happening out in Lakewood Ranch with some of you commission, what has been built? Yes, Cruz, I'm going to be to that meeting Thursday, and I'm going to ask you a question over north of the river because, see, they send everything to me, to my email, and we're going to see what you are talking about for that Thursday meeting. You understand? But like I say, you all, you all sitting up here, and I applaud Missy, Raym, and Carolyn for they did their duty as a commissioner. When you do wrong, you're supposed to step back. You don't supposed to step in like you're powerful. You're not powerful. And every time you have a commission meeting, as long as I'm living, I'm going to be here and say something about it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public like to come forward? State your name. You'll have three minutes. Uh, my name is Missy Head. I live in, proudly live in District 2, and I proudly work in District 4. I recently moved down here from Michigan, and all I can say to you guys is do better. Just do better, okay? You owe a lot of people a lot of things. You made a lot of promises, and I voted for some of you. So that's all I'm asking. Do better moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Seth, do we have anyone on the phone? Yes, Madam Chair. First caller, 605, 605. Please press star six. Okay. Caller, please state your name for the record. Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. Um, so I found some things out that are a little disturbing to me. Um, one was that uh, the HR department started uh, looking for jobs to protect uh, the inner workings of the night floor um, on a advertisement for February 23rd, the day Cary, uh, Sherry Corrier's contract was uh, ended, was separated. And so I'd like some information on that, why we were paying somebody anywhere between 50000 to 75000 to do internal investigations so they can save their jobs. Uh, secondly, um, Ms. Whitmore is currently under active investigation herself for violating Florida statute, not an internal policy. Um, as everybody is up in arms about related to Vanessa Baugh. So I'm also asking for Carol Whitmore's resignation for her violation of Sunshine Law and blocking people from going to a meeting on January 22nd. So the idea that this FDLE for the Sunshine has not even concluded. So there's no, nobody has even been charged with anything. It's just an assumption. So we assume that they broke the Sunshine Law. Well, we have clear violation from Carol in that secret meeting on January 22nd that nobody's talking about. George. Furthermore, uh, with the Piney Point, I will discuss that at that time. But if you can take minerals out of the earth, you can definitely put them back into the earth. And with that, I am, uh, I think I'm, I'm done. Oh, it, and for, uh, yes, 
I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Seth, next caller. 445. 445, please press star six. Glenn Jibalina for the record. Thank you so much. I'm not going to be the most popular public comment today. Back off, probably burn a few bridges, but to me, that'll just light the way. So my first concern is, do we have a renewable energy project um, policy yet? I mean, that's, that's my first thing. My other thing is, uh, thank you, Doc, for showing up for the, uh, the homeless. We have pop-up clinics. Why don't we have pop-up homeless shelters? It's done all over the country. I think we, there's an opportunity to look at that and, and, and move on forward. Uh, my other thing is Mosaic. They've been a disaster for the last 46 years I've been in town. And, and I think if you take a look at their reclaim process, they've done very little. So until, until they get to up to where they promised to be, I wouldn't renew anything personally. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is Visible Mind Academy. There's four acres that they have not done anything with. I think it's time to take a second look at that property for affordable housing. Uh, you know, the pandemic put, uh, put a lot of stress on them. Um, they may not be around much longer, I'm not sure, but that property is, uh, is going undeveloped. And, you know, the, the taxpayers took a hosing for 800000 when we first bought that. And, uh, you know, we need to reclaim that back and make affordable housing. It's in a great area, and Pride Park desperately needs safe housing compared to what's out there now. Um, the other thing I want to say is the animal shelter. I have to tell you, I like dogs, but I love vets better. So my, I'm not one more cent, not one more second of discussion for animal shelters until we get veterans shelters. That's where I'm coming from. Not one more cent, not one more comment on it. We're done. We're done with animal shelters until we take care of our homeless veterans. Absolute disgrace that we have homeless veterans on the streets of Manatee. So that's my, that's my other concern. Let's talk about the pop-up the pop up clinic. Listen, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes. I've got a lot of stuff in my closet, skeletons. But let me tell you, we're worried about a few vaccines. Uh, Vanessa, you can have mine. I've opted out. I'm not taking it. So, uh, you know, we all make mistakes. But I will tell you this. There's pop-up clinics going on all over the state, and there hasn't been the pushback that there has been on Vanessa. So uh, uh, hold your ground, Vanessa. The other thing is you talk about, you talk about mistakes. You guys give out density, density bonuses like candy on Halloween. That's far more destructive than misaligning a few vaccines. I got to tell you that right now. When you straighten out your density bonus, and you're all guilty of it, you give out hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of density bonus, and we don't get one square foot of affordable housing. That's a travesty in this. So I'm not very popular today, but I'm not running for office yet. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Next caller. 721, 721, please press star six. 721, please press star six. Star six to unmute. And that's all the calls we have, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Seth. All right, with that, I'll close public comment. I do want to say right off the bat that I think this entire board would be in favor of looking, uh, having a workshop on homelessness. I think it's very important. We have over 2,000 uh, students in our school system that are homeless, and it is something that we need to take a look at. So um, I would agree with Dr. Conard. I, th I think we, we definitely need to take a look at that. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, first of all, uh, we had a workshop uh, last year on homelessness. Um, with during budget time, uh, trying to take examples from other uh, counties and in the mm -hmm. and also in the state where they have a resource officer with the um, sheriff and if somebody could find out because at one point I talked to Sherry and um, I think it, we had some kind of position, Karen, that uh, or the sheriff did that we were going out and reaching out to the homeless. So um, we saw a video of it, all of us did, that were up here at the time, and it was good, it was very good. But, you know, on my agenda today, I ha I've attended two um, 
large or, um, meetings uh, that I've helped coordinate um, regarding those issues, so I'm going to report that later. And Dr. Connor, he's not here now, but Karen is majorly on top of um, the, um, the food pantries and um, feeding empty little tummies. Kim Bailey is the director of that. Um, so maybe during later today you could give us a report. I think they probably did receive some funding either through the school board or through us. I'm not sure. But um, we can't let any kids go home hungry. That's, um, you all know I lived on my own since I've been 15, so that is not a question with me. Um, and I heard about evictions. If I'm not correct, you can't be evicted right now. Maybe there's some circumstances, but I'm not sure. So if somebody could let us know at the end of the day, of course we're going to see it, and we have to be prepared for it if we are. Our unemployment is real low in Mantee County. Maybe it's not going to hit us as bad as other places in Florida. But again, if there's any, anybody here that's experts at that that just could give us an update, um, I would appreciate that. Um, Andrew's comments about whatever. Um, I have, for the third time since 2006, um, somebody's written the ethics board to see if I have a conflict with my son-in-law as he belongs to a firm. Um, the, um, the, my, the law firm is sending, um, I assume, or I have to respond, uh, what the relationship of Mr. Rudisil is with his firm again, because I just handwritten a note, so they just want, I'm going to have to get um, his law firm to write what his position is, and um, that's all that's ever been on that, so I don't know what she's talking about. As far as an illegal meeting, I'm kind of tired of that. It was a duly, lawfully organized meeting that six county commissioners before me had done before, um, properly advertised. In fact, it was advertised eight days before the meeting. Um, the doors were open. I know um, Andra was checking on the doors. The doors were open. And it, minutes were taken. Audio was taken. At first, I think they were going to just do minutes, but they did audio, so that was great. Uh, and I, uh, and we've said that since day one. I know um, maybe some don't believe it, but that's absolutely the truth. Glenn, very nice presentation. Now, you sent us a very hostile email about what's been going on. Um, and, um, but you didn't say that publicly. Um, so I know maybe you just don't want your friends to know what you're writing us, but you did scathe us about this incident with the vaccines and when people knew and when they didn't. So, you know, if you're gonna write to us, at least tell the public what you're telling us and maybe don't sugarcoat it or don't write it to us if you really don't want to. Um, and also uh, the animal, it's, I'm not gonna stop on that, I'm sorry. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people in this community don't want me to, and um, I believe, I support, as you all know, the elderly, elder abuse, animal welfare, and social service issues, and I'm not going to stop that. Uh, also, um, Miss Betty, I don't know if she's here now, but I actually, um, Pat Glass years ago voted for Gwen, I think it was Gwen, to be chair of the board, and she uh, was censured by the local Republican executive committee and taken off the executive committee at the time. She told me, I don't remember all that. But I actually nominated Gwen Brown since I've been in office and she became chairman. So um, there has been an African-American chairperson on the board. Has there been, I mean, of course, I mean, you know, if I thought that Reggie Bellamy would have had the votes before, I would have nominated him. But the way the board is and the people that support some of us, it would probably never happen. I hope it does. I'll be the first to nominate them. Every, any, this, all, this job is ceremonial and running the meeting. So anyway, I just wanted to be clear. But Dr. Conard, um, <coughs> I, I would like to get maybe a, an update at, towards the end of the meeting. And then we could communicate with Dr. Conard. And uh, since he's on the board of feeding um, um, empty tummies, um, maybe we could just get them some information and see if they're having any issues. Homeless is a big, big thing, big thing. And right now, I don't think people can be evicted, so we just need to see what the plan is. And I know you all have a plan because I've talked in the past to you all about it. Uh, I, you've got uh, different pockets of organizations that are working on this. So thank you. Commissioner Bellamy. Yes, just wanted to follow up and echo the comments um, from Dr. Connor. Um, but to let everyone know, the, the sheriff does a, have a, a hot team individual, a homeless outreach team, and they're not. actually out there. Um, on the streets, um, but I do think we can come together. I, I agree with the, the workshop, mm -hmm. so we can see how we can kind of look at um, homelessness uh, um, with a collective approach to see how we can move the needle 
um, on, on that. I do like the idea about the pop up um, pop up um, homeless shelters, but I just don't know how that looked, and uh, I, I would be interested to see or, or hear um, some some ideas on that. I did. This is to Glenn. I did ask staff to give me some information on the visible men um, email that you sent out, and obviously that's going to take. And, um, and, and be addressed. And, and I will say this, um, I agree that we have um, too many um, homeless veterans that are out there on the streets. Um, I do think where we are right now uh, with, with looking at budget and looking at some of the ways that we can actually move the needle and do something unique and different from this board, um, finding ways to address you know, veterans should be a strategic um, um, plan of ours. So if we can look at that a little with, with a little bit different focus lens, I would appreciate that. Not just for me being a veteran, but for the veterans that have served our country and they need us to make sure we support them to the best of our ability. That's it for me, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Serbia. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I had planned to bring up the homeless issue uh, during my commissioner comments today. So I thank Dr. Connard for the comments that he made. I had a, a meeting yesterday with our sheriff, um, and we talked about the homeless problem, which is something that I talk with people in my district about every day. Um, the sheriff does have a staff member. I think her name is Joy Jewett. Uh, she is out there every day in the field, and let me tell you, she is making a big difference. I'm so thankful for the work she's doing, but you can imagine she is um, overrun with mm -hmm. work. That we need more people out there. So I'm sure we'll be talking about that in the days to come. Um, homelessness, as you all know, it's not an easy fix. It's a problem all over our country. Um, if this were easy, this problem would have been solved long ago. I sit on the board of directors for the Suncoast Partnership to End Homelessness. And, um, you know, it's something they're focused on every day. Uh, there are no easy answers. The sheriff tells me that he is out there or his staff is out there literally moving homeless camps from one place to another because neighbors will complain. The sheriff will go out and ask the homeless people to leave and clean up the site only to have them move to a different location. And that cycle continues. So, um, you know, we need to look at this. Um, we've looked at it many ways. Uh, definitely there's a financial angle, but we need to look at this from a humanity angle as well. And we need to look at some ways to start making a difference in the problem. Um, yes, most of the people that are on the streets are suffering from mental illness or drug addiction or both, but there are families on the streets. The sheriff was telling me about that yesterday. Mm -hmm. So um, we, I'd like to do another workshop. I'm in favor of that. We had some great information presented last year that the new commissioners uh, may want to see that because there are some things that different communities are doing to help uh, make a dent in the homeless problem. So I would be in favor of bringing that forward again. Of course, it costs money. And so now that we're in our budget season, it might be a good time to consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would agree with Commissioner Servia and Whitmore on uh, having a, a workshop on homelessness. Um, I think we need to take a deep dive and look into that. Um, Ms. Sales Rhodes uh, has left, and I wanted to address the comments that she made. Um, so I'll choose my words carefully since she's not here. I, I, I like her very much. I have a lot of respect for her. I know members of her family mm -hmm. uh, whom I like and respect very much. Her, her niece was my fourth grade teacher and I have the utmost respect for her. Um, but her comments uh, I take strong issue with uh, to say that I see color um, and to imply that I would treat a, um, a minority chair any differently than our current chair is 100% wrong, mm -hmm. um, and she should not be putting those words in my mouth. That's not how I was brought up, um, and my I stand by my reputation when it comes to that. Um, and I'll, I'll just stop there because she's not here um, to speak for herself, but I, I do like and respect her very much and her family as well. I just take issue with her comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Satcher. I think, uh, Commissioner Whitmore's comments that we should be looking ahead to uh, when 
the orders change and evictions are allowed is, uh, is really smart looking ahead. And so we do need to uh, consider that. Um, and I like the idea of having either a work session or at least uh, agenda item at a work session um, to talk about homelessness and how to uh, how to get rid of that blight on the community. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, how to take care of those people that don't have a place or, you know, a roof over their head. So I think that's something that should be, um, you know, that we need to look at seriously uh, moving forward. The uh, feeding empty little tummies. And uh, they do an amazing job at uh, Felt, and uh, their headquarters is in uh, District 2. And, but Kim and David Bailey live uh, real close to me in District 1, and uh, just uh, absolute all-stars, amazing people, excited about the work they do. And, of course, I always put in a plug for the Salvation Army as well. Um, they do the day in and day out um, of housing a lot of the homeless people here in our community, and so we really appreciate them and need to keep them in mind uh, with our plans. I'll just say on the, uh, when I, I pastored a church, and it was, all, it was important as pastor in a church that you're not looking at what every person in the church is giving when you're helping them and doing what you're supposed to be doing and when you're serving them. Because you would never want um, to prefer one member over another because of that. And, um, and of course, you know, government and politics is different. Um, but I'll say I'm pretty sure when it, when it comes to Mosaic, I didn't take their phone call until the election was over. Um, and uh, because I knew that there was going to be contentious issues and tough votes, and I'm going to go with my conscience on those votes and what I believe the right thing to do is. Um, you know, so if they made a donation to my campaign, uh, they may have, if you say they did, but I literally didn't know. Um, and uh, so, but, that, but I think that they would want that, everyone should want, that their, their elected leaders are going to do what they believe is the right thing. Um, and once again, I didn't take their phone call, and it's not like I was super friends with them before I put in to run. Uh, I didn't know any of them uh, there and uh, didn't meet with them until months after I was in office. Um, so just, uh, uh, you know, and that's not to say that anyone that didn't make that decision uh, would be in any other uh, position. We're, you know, we're elected officials. It is what it is. Uh, we're in a community, and you're having to balance, uh, you know, feeding people and jobs with the environment and red tie. I mean, those just aren't easy calls. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that we can, you know, hold our head high and make the right decision when those calls do come up before us. Um, you know, I saw a lot of, well, I won't say that, but I'll, you know, the question uh, that a caller had about the uh, hiring someone to police the ninth floor, I'm curious about that. Didn't know, don't know anything about that. Um, so I'd like to know if there's anything to that. What was that? Who said that? Uh, Andrew. A Andrew mentioned that, yeah. that there have been some, you know, I, sometimes you bring stuff forward and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully she's on the wrong track, you're right. Uh, but if she were to be on the right track, we'd want to know. Um, so, and I'm sure she's the same way. I'm sure she hopes she's wrong. And uh, Glenn, I'd just say that uh, your connection was rough today, so I had a tough time hearing everything that you said. Um, so don't hold me too accountable for, for what you spoke about. Um, but, but you bring the same issues before us, and you do a good job of uh, bringing us facts that we might not have considered. So appreciate you uh, calling in and being here. Thank you. All right, I don't have any other commissioners on the board, so we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, I do have, I'm going to open up, public comment on consent agenda items only, and that is items 5 through 18. Um, that's not... 5 through 18. Mr. Ritchie, I, I know that you've already spoken, and you have down here item number 17, and that is on consent. It's... The mm -hmm. only thing it covers is the approval of transmittal to the Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority. So if you want to speak on that, but that is what that item is. So, you know, if you, you'll have three minutes, but you need to keep it only to what the item is. Please. Sure. 
Oh, the mic's not on. Yeah. Give it just a moment. Debbie, do you know how? Here comes help. Sometimes they have the volume. Yeah, the button might. It's, it is on. Yeah, it's on. Okay, there you go. You must have hit it. Okay. Again, my name's Tim Ritchie. I'm a resident of Charlotte County, Florida. I am the citizen water czar, and I am the founder and president of March Against Mosaic. Okay. Approval of transmittal to the Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority of water supply projections and future water supply needs from the authority. Good morning, Doug Manson, attorney, and uh, director, Mr. Lehman, if you're watching. We have millions and millions of gallons being drawn and pulled from the Peace River. Every day, Mosaic Fertilizer has permits, just one in Polk County, to pull 70 million gallons of that water out. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna Tim, finish it needs to stay on the topic. Of I am on the topic. 17. This is about the water that the Peace River, Minnesota Water Supply Authority is in charge of, and they're doing a piss poor job. And I, now my time's not, Commissioner, I, I, I am on the topic, to and you keep, keep interrupting topic, me, so. and for a lady who's under so much scrutiny in the public, I would sit back. Going. I'm no. tired of you interrupting yeah. me. You interrupted uh, me at the Piney Point meeting, please. and you knock it off. Madam Chair, I'm going to call for order, please. Excuse me. Um, uh, sir, you have to follow our rules to address this board, or you'll be asked to leave by law enforcement. Mr. So William, I am it. following the rules. I am addressing this agenda item, and I was so rudely interrupted. Now, the Peace River Manu Water Supply Authority is in charge of the Peace River, and I happen to live very close by to that water supply facility. And Mosaic's getting ready to put a chemical plant on Horse Creek and they are destroying the water. And I'm not going to drive an hour up here and be interrupted by anybody, because I am a registered Republican, and I'm not going to be interrupted. I am a citizen of this state, and I drove an hour up here to be here today, not to be interrupted. You aren't scrutinizing the Peace River, Minnesota Water Supply Authority enough. You all have allowed permitting to Mosaic. You did it permitting a couple years ago. They are taking our water and they are destroying it. To do what? To dilute. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Your time is up. Now, I have two more cards, but we need to stay on the topic of item number 17. Approval of transmittal to the Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority of water supply projections and future water supply needs from this county. So I have two more cards. If you'd like to come up and stay on the topic, that'd be great. Michael Zarzano. I have to stop and think every time I say it. That's quite all right. Thank you very much. My name is Michael Zarzano. I am the administrator of the Florida County Congress. We are a grassroots citizen oversight committee. And I'm here to challenge the authenticity and the authority of the Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority. Suspicion, questionable, dangerous are a few of the terms I would use to describe their behavior in the past regarding the water supply. I live in Charlotte County, and what gets put into the river up north comes down and empties into our Charlotte Harbor. And the relationship that Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority has with some of the polluters is very dangerous and suspicious. 
And I'm referring to the corporate monster called Mosaic. Hey, Mr. And Zarzano, the this is that, not this topic that you're referring oh, to. Oh, I, I am referring to well, the Peace River you Water need to Supply stay on Regional hours. Authority. And I am questioning their authority and their authenticity and their accuracy. I am right on topic, ma'am, and how dare you attempt to interrupt me as well. I am speaking exactly on the topic. And I am here to challenge their authority and their honesty. And I'm here to challenge this board of supervisors, commissioners. Perhaps we might need to impanel a grand jury to examine the evidence and the relationships that you have had with this mosaic monster. Maybe we would summon your telephone call history, your email history. A grand jury subpoena is the proper direction this needs to go. This has been going on for way too long. The water in this county and adjacent counties is being threatened. And those who have been put in authority to manage it have shown themselves to be less than respectable, less than responsible. That is a compromise to the benefit of this community. You have a duty to provide oversight to this water authority. And this is not happening. You're proposing to dump water, poisonous water, into the aquifer. This lacks common sense and logic. And I'm here to challenge you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. We have one more. Cynthia, come on down. You'll have three minutes. Thank you. Um, again, Cynthia Zorzano. And um, I appreciate another three minutes to talk about this in a more spe specified um, talk, speech. Um, I, I have, I, I'm still learning a lot about this because there is so much to digest. I do know that I can't drink water out of my faucet and I'm, I have to brush my teeth with this water. I have to shower in this water and it is disgusting. I can't even bathe my dog in the water in Charlotte County because he breaks out in a terrible, terrible inflammation. Pus just oozes from his skin and um, it, it's awful. And when I quit bathing him, his skin cleared up and he's my happy little puppy again. Um, I, I, one, one of the things that I have learned in my research is that once a toxin enters the water, there is no chemical, there is no treatment, there is nothing that you can do to remove that toxin out of the water. And so what does Florida's, uh, many, many commissioners, many counties do, they try and fix the water that has been damaged. Okay, so I see somebody is really not interested in what we have to say. He's getting all excited looking at his computer over there, unless he found some very interesting information about the water that is being discussed right now. So if we have to stay on topic, I ask that the commissioner stay on topic and what he's getting all excited about over there. I yield. Thank you. All right. Um, public comment is, is there anyone else from the public on got consent agenda? On Seth, got somebody on the phone? Yes, Madam Chair, 605-605, please press star six. Six zero five star six. Anybody there? No, maybe it's another issue. Paula, please state your name for the record. You guys hear me? Yes. Before I get started, I just need clarification. This is the Andrew for the record. Uh, the Andrew Griffin. Um, is this consent agenda or just a water topic? 
just consent. That is items okay. number okay. five so, through eighteen. Okay, I believe seventeen is the surplus vehicles. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Sorry. Okay, so surplus vehicles. This is what I'd like to know. We have a lot of disadvantaged people in this county, and I'd like to know where those vehicles sit to. And uh, if they're sent to Tampa and auctioned off at Tampa, why we're not doing something here in Bradenton with those vehicles for underserved communities. There's a lot of people. We have more computers. Ninety, According to our census, 93% uh, of the people in Manatee County have computers. But not all people have vehicles to take their kids to school, to go get groceries. And here we have, I looked at the list, and it was a pretty extensive list of different vehicles. Why are we sending those off to be auctioned off when we have a need right here? That's my only comment. Thank you. Thank you. Any other callers, Seth? That's all, Madam Chair. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and close public comment on consent agenda. What is the... Oh, I'm comments. sorry. We've got some comments. Commissioner Whitmore. Yeah. Uh, regarding the surplus vehicles, I remember years ago the... Uh, Ernie Pageant um, used to offer them to municipalities if there was any surplus. And, um, but then previous boards thereafter decided they wanted to um, get the income off of them, and that's why it went to auction. <coughs> and usually you can, I mean, you know, you can go up and you can bid on it and get a very fair price. <coughs> but uh, that's, it, we used to give them to agencies, and then then the uh, newer boards decided they just wanted, they wanted to receive the income. So with that, um, somebody else made a comment about you can always replace the lands with minerals. I don't think that's physio, I mean, I don't think that's scientifically correct. I don't think once you take minerals out, you can replace them. I mean, you know, you can spread the land, but I don't think that that's accurate. Um, what I am going to, the, I had made a note um, about Peace River. Pat Glass was um, the original commissioner that actually helped start the um, Peace River Authority, I, I think. And she was on it for many, many years. Is it true, and I saw Charlie here, but is it true right now we're pulling off 33, 33 million gallons a day um, according to the flow chart that we have? Um, and, and if you look, even when we go to 2035, it'll be 42 million. I know we've always prided ourselves in Manatee County of not having to draw as much waters as Charlotte County um, and Sarasota County. So, but according to this flow chart, am I correct? No, we, we draw zero from Peace River right now. What's this projected? That, that's, that's our water use. It's all coming from Manatee River right now. In fact, we, okay. I, I'm on the Peace River board. That's all yeah. the orders I mentioned. Uh, we actually sell 5 million gallons to Sarasota. I remember a, we As well, started. that's, that's if you see one of the charts, it dips down. It's because yeah. that agreement with Sarasota has been ramping down. I say, are we weaning off? We are. The There's okay. only a couple more years left, and that's going to buy us more time. That's why every year we have to submit this. All the counties do. There's four counties, us, Sarasota, DeSoto, and Charlotte, that use Peace River. And every year everyone submits, here's our anticipation of the next 20 years of use so they can manage supply. We're not anticipated to use it until 2035. Five or 37. Five, 37, um, now yeah. it's changed. Yeah. It's 42 million. Because we, we could supply ourselves. At some point in time, just our population growth is going to get to a point where Manatee okay. River alone can't supply, and then we're going to start utilizing Peach River. So but the majority the of the water is is, Sar um, is Sarasota and Charlotte County? They're, they're taking Correct. water and, off and the And DeSoto and uh, okay. Soto County and City of Inglewood as well. I know throughout the years we've prided ourselves in not having to use it and getting Sarasota whittled down so that they're not buying from us. I think they were actually so. talking about Mosaic. No, I know what they're talking. No, that we were I was supposed to be talking about Peace no. River. No. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm right. staying on topic. Okay. Thanks for clarifying me. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Is that it? Yeah. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, actually, Commissioner Whitmore hit a couple of the topics that I wanted to cover. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to add would be um, that I would urge you um, to be a little quicker and more stringent in exercising your authority as chair to maintain uh, proper decorum and order in this chamber, especially with uh, when people start to burst out uh, at the podium. So I would just ask you to be a little quicker to, to 
utilize your uh, and to act on your authority as chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner, it's my observation from my past years on this board that sometimes you have to let right. citizens speak what they want to say. And to do otherwise sometimes makes a scene that really isn't advantageous to us or the citizen. So that is one reason why I let it go. But thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. And Commissioner Ba, I 100% agree because um, we have other citizens that talk and are very passionate and um, comes across as in your face yelling, but we allow, we, we have to, and, it, and it's, um, the only thing I ask, well, you know, is just to tone it down with, if you see somebody escalate and say, you know, calm down a little, we're listening. But that's about all I think uh, people should be able to say what they want. It's rough up here, um, but like Commissioner Boss said, our year's up here. If you don't allow people to speak their mind, your life will be held for about five or six meetings after that. So I, I would rather just listen and then move on. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, just to be clear, I'm not asking that you have people hauled out of the chamber or anything like that, uh, you know, nor am yeah. I asking you to sort of corner a dog either. Um, I'm just simply asking for a little little quicker reaction when it comes to, to outbursts, that's all. Well, and, KBO, and would, I will keep that in mind, sir. Thank, thank you. you. And that would apply equally whether they're speaking on an issue to the left or to the right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Uh, wait a minute. Second. If I could just wait just a moment. The attorney would like to say something. I would, um, Madam Chair. We have had people removed from this chamber. Uh, I've done it have, myself. Yes, and it happens have. in local governments all over the state at times. That's right. But it is what we call a limited public forum under the First Amendment. So we establish rules and we give them the opportunity to speak about subjects. And as long as they are doing so, they, they have a right to speak. They don't have the right to personally attack people up on this dais. And that's where we do need to draw the line, because if we don't, then others will begin to do the same thing. So that's, it's, it's not always easy to make the judgment of when somebody's crossing the line, but we do have to err in favor of letting people state their views to the board. Yeah. That's Thank you I for know. that. And, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, uh, he was only attacking me, and I didn't take it personally. So yeah, I, I know that. I didn't and, have a problem with it. And I think that's why you were <clears throat> so lenient. But it was exactly why. Right. I think had he had been attacking another <coughs> member of this commission, you wouldn't have been so lenient. So I I'm always try to let the citizens speak. Well, Even when it's about me and it's not favorable, sure. it's still their right. I just wanted to extend to you that, you know, you have my support to speak up when well, needed. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Uh, Commissioner Servio, would you like to go ahead with that motion, please? Yes. Motion to approve the consent agenda as recommended. Second. We have a motion to approve consent by Commissioner Servia, a second by Commissioner Cruz. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. It is approved, Madam Clerk, unanimously. All right, now we're going to go. We do have an 11 o'clock, so we'll keep an eye on the time. <coughs> Advertised uh, public hearings, uh, presentations upon request. Item number 19, uh, Madam Administrator, did you want to bring that forward? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we'll have the, um, this is the first public hearing for Land Development Agreement-09-04, Revision 5, Local Development Agreement for Summer Woods, and this is quasi-judicial. Does anyone need a full presentation on this? Mm -mm. All right, well, how about a short opening? Yeah. Since this is quasi-judicial, should she be sworn in? Mm -hmm. need to do that. Yes, and go anybody ahead. Anybody else? Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the factual statements and representations you are about to make to the board are truthful and accurate? Thank you. When you step to the board, please state your name and if you have been sworn. Good morning, Commissioners. Nicole Knapp, Impact Fee Administrator, and I have been sworn. I understand you don't need a full presentation, but for the record, I have to point out a few things procedurally and for the record. Um, uh, let's see. And I'd like to read the full request into the record. So the request is for approval of an amendment and restated local development agreement to establish the amended terms under which the Summerwoods developer shall provide proportionate share, uh, fair share mitigation to satisfy the transportation concurrency requirement 
The developer shall provide <coughs> certain transportation infrastructure improvements. The county shall provide an extension of the transportation concurrency approval, and the county shall provide transportation impact fee credits. And like I said, I have a few things just to point out for the record. Um, the combined changes that have prompted the amendment to the LD um, local development agreement upon which the staff and the developer agree complexity of the changes necessitate amending and restating the entirety of the LDA. <clears throat> this is the first of two public hearings. No action is requested today. The second public hearing has been advertised for March 23rd at 9 a.m. or soon thereafter. Is that a land use meeting? It is not. No. Wow, okay. It's unusual to have a quasi-item in a regular meeting. That's I why I was saying times. that. Yeah. All right. Any uh, comments from commissioners? Any questions? No. And I haven't talked to the applicant? No. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. So do we need a motion to... No. No action today. No Just action today. No okay. Action. Two. All right. We'll go ahead. Uh, well, should I open public comment? Yes. Okay. If there's anyone from the public that would like to come forward on item number 19... Not seeing anyone. Seth, do we have anyone on the phone? Okay. We'll close public comment. All right. We'll move ahead over to item number 20, adoption of ordinance 21-09, establishing the Prosperity Lakes Community Development District. That's a mouthful. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Tracy Trahan with Building and Development Services. Um, I'm here if you have any questions related to the Prosperity Lakes Community Development District. Any questions, commissioners? All right, I'll go ahead and open this uh, to public comment. Anyone want to come forward on item 20? Anyone on the phone, Seth? Yes, Madam Chair, 605-605. Please press star 6. All right, go ahead and then we'll get back. All right, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. ma'am. Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. Um, what is this? Uh, <laughs> so I, I have no idea what this ordinance is for, and uh, the person supposed to be presenting it just asked if we had any questions about it. I've got a lot of questions about it. What is it for? What's the implications of it? Um, what what are the pros and the cons, if there are any? I, I don't understand why we are establishing a Prosperity Lakes uh, CDD unless it was associated already with uh, an active building right now. Um, so I would like some a a additional information on that for, you know, the people at home that have no idea what this is for and how it may impact them in any way. That's my comment. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Anyone else, Seth? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, unfortunately, I've not been sworn. If I could be sworn. Oh, time. Madam Clerk. No, this isn't quasi. You're okay. CD. Oh, of course, Madam legislative. Quasi. Okay, so Kevin Reale here for the applicant. Um, we're, we're just here to answer any questions based on that comment. I'll, I'll just briefly mention Please. for the public that the purpose of this district will be to allow for public financing so that the eventual development uh, in that area will be financed by itself and not by the county. It'll allow uh, infrastructure roads, uh, water sewer to be constructed and then paid for by uh, the, the residents in that area rather than by bonding from the county itself. Um, and the staff report was very comprehensive, so we have nothing to add and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, we've done thousands of these. Thousands. <laughs> Just since you've been here and then probably a uh, maybe 20 since I've been here. Um, this is a development taking their property into their own hands and um, setting the rules that they want to do in their, in their development. And this helps, again, you heard with the financing and stuff. So uh, yeah, and it's in the backup if you read it. So um, anyway, just wanted to, this is nothing new. In fact, we haven't seen one in a while. Usually you hear about it at the beginning, but yeah, we, we do this for thousands. Yeah, and there, there really isn't anything uncommon uh, no. about this. I mean, basically, the community uh, is taking over control of their roads, probably, and, and so forth. And they're going to be spending and raising their own funds to do that. So it's, it's a good thing, not a bad thing, necessarily. Um, any other commissioners have any comments? All right, not seeing any. What is the pleasure of the board? Make a motion to approve as read. Second. 
We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, a second by Commissioner Servia. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. Madam Clerk, it's approved <coughs> unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item number 21, uh, adoption of resolution R-21-033 regarding the infrastructure sales tax. Hey, Jan. Hi. I thought Good it would be you. <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioners. Jan Brewer, Director of Financial Management. The item before you, um, anytime there are scope changes, ads, or deletions from your IST or a change in a category, we need to bring before you and receive your vote. This um, has a presentation. I can quickly go through it if you like for clarity, or I can just quickly. I would like to see it personally, okay. too. Okay. So, <coughs> Seth, if you could put it up for us. Thank you. Um, this is a resolution to adopt. It would help if the mouse was on, sorry. Um, the first item through this are three scope changes. Um, the items have been itemized for you in the detail in the backup description. The first one is to amend the scope of Canal Road. The original scope was to reconstruct the existing two-lane road to include standard lane widths, pedestrian and bike facilities and lighting. They are now changing the scope to include design and construct four travel lanes between US 301 north of 17th Street East specifically and include realignment of Mendoza Road connecting 37th East to 39th Street East and Canal Road. So that is the first request, is amend the, that scope. Any questions on that one? No. Moving to the second one, is amend the scope of Robinson Preserve Improvements Trail Shelters Project. Originally, um, the scope had eight trail shelters within it. Robinson Preserve Improvements had one project, but it was later segregated into several different projects. The new scope we want on the trails just to say design permit build several trail shelters over the network of walking trails at Robinson Preserve. It just adds the clarity and removes the other pieces out. I'm sorry, was there any questions on that one? Not seeing anyone. Okay. Moving on, the last scope change is to amend the scope of the Robertson Preserve Improvements Pavilions for three. Originally, this, again, had several different pieces in it, but the part of it had three pavilions. And at the current time, they want to change it where it, the further design of the scope says, design permit build picnic pavilions, not limited to three, following the construction means and methods util, utilized, ooh, can't get over that one, in the construction of the picnic pavilion installed at Jigs Landing Preserve. Um, includes fixture, electrical outlets, overhead ceiling fans, um, LED lights, and a spigot um, capable of holding picnic tables. The main with this is to remove the three and they have the availability to do four. Correct, Haley? Yes. Any questions on that one? No, not seeing anyone. <coughs> Project removals. Um, the first two on this are artificial turf. That was originally brought up during a public hearing, I believe two years ago. And the commissioner, one of the commissioners at the time, I believe it was Priscilla Trace, Trace asked only one project to be done. Mr. Hunsaker had brought several. Two of them were within the five-year plan and placed outward. We're asking now to remove those from the official list. Artificial <coughs> turf is not an option at this time, according to Parks and Recreation, due to the, the weather and the heat. The last one is the removal of Coquina Trail Phase 2 project from the project and equipment list in the amount of 692095 if it's removed from the list that funding goes back still within that same category same pot and will be reallocated at a different time if there's any questions on any of those i've got mr i think we've got some questions commissioner bellamy yeah i just um 
re removing the artificial turf from the projects, I just would like to hear from that just a little bit more. Um, maybe I'll start there. So, I think I'm going to ask Charlie Hunsaker to come down if you don't mind. Thank you. Madam Chair, may I, may I dialogue? Sure, go ahead. Quickly. So now a days, unlike when you and I were playing ball, um, <laughs> weather, weather issues mean that, brace yourself, it's, quote, too hot to play football. And before I get myself into any trouble, I'll simply say that is a thing now. It is too hot to play football. Um, and, yeah, and at Manatee, we had issues with uh, the athletic train. They have a device that you set up on a tripod, and it takes into account all of these different factors, the breeze and the humidity and the temperature. And... Uh, uh, homeboy was putting it in the parking lot and then on the black asphalt and then four days in a row it was too hot to play football so we finally got it moved over to the stadium in the field you know where we play football and then we were under the limit and we were able to play football the problem is with with the turf is you have the black um, you know, the little black shredded up rubber that goes in there right. and it's attracting heat sort of like the black asphalt would and as a result the artificial turf ends up being much hotter, hotter. than it is on natural grass so, so when issue. you put the device out there it's too hot to play football oh. <laughs> so, so use regular old-fashioned grass grass so old-fashioned grass allows you to play football so it's it's a <laughs> i know man <laughs> I know. Don't blow it. <laughs> I mean, all survived. Don't we, just, we all survived when you and I were out there, but uh, we drank out of trash cans with holes in the bottoms oh, of them, and we were talking. happy to get to that water. Never so happy to suck water out of a trash can. Uh, but at any rate, uh, that's the issue. The, the black uh, rubber in there is attracting sun and heat, and then the device says that it's too hot to play football. So, this Charlie, the, we, so technology will catch up eventually, we're assuming. <laughs> Charlie can probably make that uh, state it more articulately. Is that what I you did. wanted to comment on, uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge? Was that? That, that was it. Thank okay. I, okay. I was given salt tablets uh, to try to keep my hydration down. Fashion salt tablets. Yeah, yeah on a football field. That wasn't real pleasant either. Uh, we didn't take that decision lightly, uh, and Van Ost Commissioner Van Ostenbridge is, is entirely correct. But we did, did a, we did employ uh, a professional company to give us a full range of alternatives and assessments and uh, determined with their input that grass was the preferred alternative here in Manatee County uh, because of the temperature issues all around. That's weird. Okay. Uh, the Kikina Trail, uh, at, questions on the Kikina Trail? No, I just, I just. It's okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I know. I, I'm with you. I, and I, I want the turf at Bray and some other play at Lincoln and, and some places where we're, you know, they're, they're running lacrosse and football and soccer at all these places and the grass gets well, the, the, on, the only thing that I'm saying is, you know, traveling down south um, in, in, in areas of Dade County, you see multiple turf fields. And um, even south of us, immediate south in Sarasota, um, right there at the Robert Taylor, you see a um, turf um, lacrosse and football field. And I'm trying to, I, I want to identify, and maybe this is another time, Madam Chair, <coughs> what's the difference between their science and our science? What's the difference between their youth and our youth where they're having the ability to, to play on it, right, and continue to move forward, and ours can't? We don't have to go into it in depth right now, but that is, I think those are good questions to have. And the last year was the first year of this new technology. It was too hot. <laughs> where it became too hot to play. You, know, you can't, so too, you're like too wet, it's too hot. It's too, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Charlie, is is it an expensive venture to put in the artificial turf? Totally. Is that really expensive? Like it's about a $1.2 million expenditure per football field, uh, and it, as opposed to around a hundred, about $200,000 re-turfing on a three-year basis. Uh, remember, we re we first recommended this, um, mm -hmm. yeah. and we were a couple of years ago. Yeah. But we, we've been unable to feel comfortable that the content of the filler in the in the grass itself to lift the carpet up and keep it in a grass form. That filler can be black rubber, crumb rubber. It can be cork. It can be sand and cork. It can be walnut shells. It can be any variety of, of systems that either retain heat, attract heat. Most of the athletic fields you see are also irrigated. They're watered uh, mm -hmm. to cool them down, and uh, they provide. The, the advantages, of course, are year-round use. Uh, within a couple hours of a rainstorm, you can be right, right back on the field again, and your maintenance costs are substantially less. But again, 
with a full assessment that we had at the time, uh, we did not feel we could find a composite combination that would give us the temperatures we felt were needed. We've actually had some comments from some of the, uh, the smaller uh, leagues also who had their own concerns about the heat and were, uh, were not, in, not in favor, actually, of some of the artificial turf alternatives, given the fact that property management doing a good job out there, keeping the turf in a good condition and replacing it as, ne as necessary is the alternative uh, at higher maintenance, but um, more, more utility for the players. Okay. Um, Commissioner Whitmore. And um, yeah, I, I know just the little at animal services that um, Animal Network raised like 40 or 50,000 for just that little area for the dogs. I can't imagine. So uh, I think we need to go back to the old fashioned way. Um, and it's, it seems like it's safer and, um, you know, uh, I, so I 100% agree with that. I got a question about the removal of Coquina Trail Phase 2 project. Um, the, an equipment list and amend the adopted 2125 CIP in the amount of 692. So you're just taking the money out of this year and you're putting it in our in a reserves area for when you're ready to do whatever. You're doing. Yes, we are. This and is what you're doing now. Yes, this is what we're doing now. And I want to say that the Kikina Trail on the Gulf side has been remarkably successful, well used, and constantly maintained. In fact, we're looking at other ways, I believe, to uh, make it even more durable than it is today. This was a proposal to take the trail at its terminus at Longbow Pass right. and bring it back to the north on the east side of the road. And passing by the Marine Safety Building, which is an issue of concern, passing up and joining up to eventually to the Kikina North boat ramp. Mm -hmm. While we felt pedestrian movement on the golf side from parking lot to parking lot to beach was very appropriate, a trail on the east side did not seem to serve a purpose um, of any kind. Right. Uh, when the application was made, uh, there was a belief that you know we could have a, a loop somehow trail system, but we can't get back and forth across that road very safely. Uh, we certainly can get underneath the Longboat Pass Bridge, which was which was the idea. But coming back to the north, you dead end at the at the uh, boat ramp, and then where do you go? So, uh, just from a standpoint of where was the best place to spend the limited IST funds, this was not it, and we have other priorities that uh, you have reviewed are ready to approve other cost, cost expenses, and uh, it's a better place to put the funding than into a trail that would be little used. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Servia, did you have anything you want to add? No, Charlie just answered my questions. Thank <clears throat> you. All right. I'm going to go ahead. Yes, Jan? We have just a few more. Go ahead. The remainder of where we were at, um, we stopped there at project removals. Seth, you're going to have to forward it for me. It won't go. Um, we have one category change. We had placed the volunteer education pre-engineered billing that's going in Robinson Preserves in district parks and aquatics. We're constantly going through the list, making sure we've put everything in the appropriate category because as you get further into the list, you're looking for what's left within the funding to spend. It really should be in the environmental preserves. We're just asking to put that there and, and give the money back to district parks. And then the last one, if you could move forward, is this is in reference to where we did the scope change before. We had Robinson Preserve improvements, say three pavilions. We just want that number removed, but we wanted to clarify what we were doing. Thank you for letting me do that. Sure. All right. Um, is there anyone from the public that would like to come forward on this item? Seth, do we have any phone calls? What about? Well, in that case, I'm going to close public comment. What is the uh, pleasure of the board? Motion to approve the resolution as recommended by staff. Second. We have a motion to approve the resolution by Commissioner Servia. Second by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is approved, Madam Clerk, unanimously. All right, we, it's 1031, so we have uh, about 30 minutes before our time certain. 
Um, so we take sure right could we at some point have a recess between now and 11 for the benefit of the We'll clerk. go ahead and do that now, and we'll come back <clears throat> um, on item number 24 when we return. We'll take a 10-minute recess. Thank you.
We've got a quorum, so. Reggie, by the way, I'm impressed that no one made comments that you and I were the two concerned about. No, no, no toupee comments about the artificial turf. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't give anybody any ideas, okay? I'm sure someone would comment. All right. Just go ahead and stop. <laughs> we are back from recess. Thank you very much. We're going to start with item number 24. We've got about 20 minutes. Uh, direct, direction and or approval to proceed with the design of Canaan Park Improvements using the conceptual site plan presented as the basis of design. How are you? I'm fine, Commissioner. I haven't seen you, you in a while. It's been a while. It has. Uh, this is Tom Yarger with Manatee County Property Management. I'm the Construction Services Manager. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you uh, a conceptual design of Canaan Park. I'm going to talk you through um, <coughs> the uh, scope of services, the original scope in the CIP project. I'm going to show you how we're in compliance with that, with this uh, uh, conceptual design. And I'll talk a little bit about the funding and uh, ask for you guys to give me any comments that you have. Um, that would either uh, add to or uh, remove items on the project or change locations or whatever you want to do. This is the time to change it. Uh, so I'm going to give you that opportunity as well. So first off, the, um, the CIP sheet reads, uh, it's tentative construction of a fitness trail, small dog park with small shelter, two pickleball courts with shade structures, and parking lot less than 12 acres with ADA, with improved access to the trail and dog park based upon the final site plan and environmental constraints. That's what it reads. So if you look at the sheet, you can notice that there is um, a shell trail, which is depicted by the brown areas um, and <coughs> as trails. There are a number of open play areas. Uh, we have a small dog park. It's about um, a third of an acre but we've actually divided it into two sections, one for small dogs and one for large dogs. Each one of those will have a pavilion. Uh, we also have a, a larger 1,000-square-foot um, pavilion that's access to the trail and uh, between the dog parks and the pickleball courts, and we have the two pickleball courts. Um, and that shade structure, that 1,000-square-foot shade st structure is meant to serve the pickleball courts as well. We have... Uh, 12 parking spaces uh, coming off of Prospect Road. This project is located at the corner of Prospect and Talavast, in case anybody doesn't know where that is um, or, or where the park is. And we have a lot of constraints, site constraints. You can see in the red hashed areas, those are the edges of wetlands um, along here and along here. So those are areas that we can't use. So there's probably about almost 11 acres of park, and we have 4.8 acres that we can use as open area. Um, that also includes the restricted areas that we would use as stormwater ponds for the required impervious surfaces that we put out there. Um, the, uh, again, there's 12 parking spaces. There's a mile of trails. Um, it's 15,200 square feet dedicated to the two dog parks. 4.8 acres of open space, two dog park pavilions at 300 square feet each, and a thousand dollar, a thousand square foot um, pavilion. One of the things I want, two things I want to add. One is we don't show restrooms on here currently, but we are stubbing for restrooms. Um, there were some in the area when we received comments that were concerned about how the restrooms may be used after hours. Uh, we have ways to combat that with um, uh, mag locks and lighting and those kinds of things. Um, so we don't currently show them. They could be added as a phase or they could be added now. That's the pleasure of the board. And um, <laughs> the other is that there is the P25 tower that's out there. There was, I hated to say it. The, I but know there, it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There is um, uh, some additional landscaping that is going to be required out there to shield that. We are also doing some landscaping uh, enhancements along Prospect Road because there was some landscaping. Well, it wasn't really landscaping. It was pepper trees. But when they were removed, it exposed uh, a, a more open line of sight across the road and into the park that some of the residents feel like they would like to have closed back up again. So we're looking at that. But based on the fact that we need to do something with the P25, uh, we may be coming back with you with a change order because that would have to come from a separate funding source. So once we know what that is, I'll come back and let you know what we're doing and how much that would cost. Yeah. Um, right now, the project originally was bu uh, budgeted at $575,000. We have about $56,331 that we've used for um, design work. 
Um, we're in that process right now. This is the conceptual. We'll move into 30, 60, and 90, and then we'll have a hard number that um, I will talk to Jan about um, afterwards and uh, determine whether additional funding would be required to complete the project. With that, uh, if you have any questions. Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you, Tom. Excellent presentation. I'm so excited to see this project uh, come to fruition. Finally. This is right down the street from where we live uh, and in my district in an area that has wanted this type of park for some time. Um, regarding restrooms, I think restrooms are very important uh, to have at this park, and I have heard that from the community. So I would please like to see restrooms. Please tell me what you need. Do you need a motion in that regard from the board, or is it something that we can do? Tell me what you need. I, I, I'm not sure. I think probably a motion would be, uh, in the motion might be to approve the park as it's drawn with an addition to the park for the restrooms. So when I make the motion, I, I will include that, and I hope the board will support that as well. Um, thank you for addressing the landscaping on the P25 tower. Again, that's something that the community there has heard was going to happen, and they're waiting for it. So um, please keep me informed as we move forward on that. I have a question about lighting. Um, I imagine this park will be open sunrise to sunset or, or something like that. Um, and there may not be a need for lighting the park, but security lighting there is would, always desirable. We, uh, we have lighting that we're going to have. If we had a restroom, that would be um, lighted for uh, security at night. Um, it, I believe the intention is to have it only open during daylight hours. Um, and I don't believe there is any um, intention to put security lighting in the limited parking area at this time. Okay, and then uh, finally, there is a sidewalk gap along Prospect Road, which it may be a separate issue entirely, but as we get this park going, I hope that we can also get that improvement scheduled because we have a lot of children in the area who are walking to and from Canaan Elementary, um, and there is this gap that exists on the west side of Prospect Road, um, which I've made those concerns known. Uh, on sidewalk topics. I hope that we can maybe schedule that to uh, come about at the same time this is completed. But thank you so much for your hard work. I know that our architect uh, left midstream. We had to hire a new one. And you guys have just done a great job on turnaround time. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Whitmore. First of all, Tom, you've been doing a good job in this role. I just want you to know that. I mean, you, st you worked your way up into the ranks, and I just want you to know that You've been doing such a good job, so I wanted to congratulate you. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, I had written down Kingfish Boat Ramp. If, if we want to um, do something and plan for a bathroom, but it, it, until we get one, you know, we have done in the past a, um, a Kingfish, and it's been good. It's fine. You know, we put lattice around the, the portalettes until, but we aren't going to put anything there because it's on the water and it costs like $400,000 for that bathroom. But um, in the meantime, we could do something temporarily and just see where the money's coming from if we can't do that. But yeah, I think long range we should have one, especially since it's closed and open at certain hours. Um, the, uh, the, the dog park, um, are you going to have some type of running water? Like, you know, you usually have a faucet where you can fill the dog bowls with water. Yes, Commissioner. It's, it, it'll be uh, the typical dog park with the dog watering stations and, and a drinking fountain and a hose bib. Yeah, I know GT Bray has them and all the other. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, I don't, Tom, I don't have anyone else on the board. So, Commissioner Bellamy has a Yeah, I just here. want to make sure I'm clear to understand this right here as, as far as where we are with the bathrooms. I, I do think if we're in the planning phases of it now, I'm not necessarily sure where the, where the money's coming from. That's always, you know, like our good friend, Steve Johnson always says, you know, <laughs> the, the money is the answer money. To, all, to all the questions. The um, but I, I do think if we're in the planning phases, we do need to make sure that we have restrooms. And um, I mean, if we're gonna provide water um, for our furry friends, we want to make sure we provide, you know, restrooms for, you know, humans also. So I, I, I'm just a little, I, I just want to make sure it's clear. I mean, I don't know whether she is or she is not going to make a motion, but I'm, I'm just, I will support the idea of moving forward with restrooms at, at, at Canaan Park um, because, again, whether it's the hours of regardless when the people are there, they may still need to use the restroom. We need to make, need to get in front of that. 
<clears throat> Commissioner Satcher. Uh, what, do we have an estimate on what the restrooms would add to the project? That's my question. I, I do not it? at this point. Okay. Um, it would there be uh, a de determination whether we can hook into whether a gravity sewer or, or a uh, force main, which would mean we need a lift station or a small grinder pump. There's a lot of moving parts right there. <clears throat> But um, I, I can certainly uh, um, look into that. And we'll, and we'll know that as we get to uh, 30, 60, and 90% plans, we'll have a construction manager, a local construction manager that we'll bring online. Mm -hmm. We have local designers that uh, are, are working on the project right now. And um, it's a construction management at risk. So at 30%, I'll have an estimate. And if it's the board's decision that we move forward with restrooms, we'll start the design of the restrooms, which would cost a little bit more in design. But, um, you know, that's something that we do in, in a lot of parks, so it's not a big deal. But, uh, you know, it's going to affect the cost, but I'm, I don't know how, to what extent yet. Right. Well, the kids going to go um, to the bathroom. Is the... Um the amount that's for the dog park is that set in stone or would would that have to go back to a brand new drawing or could that be adjusted if they weren't decided going forward to make it a little bit bigger it could the um i believe that the scope and i would have to confer with fmd financial management to make sure that i'm not getting too far away from the scope but the scope is it says a small dog park uh, certainly a third of an acre or maybe even more than that could be considered a small dog park. Okay, I would just, you know, encourage looking into that because if it's a third of an acre and then we're halving it uh, between the big and the small dogs. But uh, that's, you know, that's just a, a preference. And um, it looks like a good project to me. So, you know, I'll, I'll support it. Um, District 4, I think that uh, the county, you know, needs to um, do more uh, to take care of those citizens. So... Um, with uh, with money that comes in from that, I do. I will say though that uh, there's going to be. I'll uh, just a fair warning. There's going to be some big parks projects coming from district for District One in the future. Mm -hmm. Just the growth is uh, is exponential out there, and um, so I just want to remind the board um, that that's part of what we do. You know, the number one thing is to I think the infrastructure and getting people in roads and safely where they need to go. Um, but then we also need to support our communities, give our children a place to, to live and play. That's all. Thank you. It's called impact fees. Right. Yeah. Um, My district. Commissioner Serbia. Yes, uh, great discussion. And thank you, Commissioner <laughs> Satcher, for your uh, support of parks because um, we are on the low end of providing the parks necessary to our, our community, and they're so so used and desired. Um, I appreciate this project, as I said. Um, I would move that we go forward uh, to approve this project with the addition of restrooms. Uh, everything else is recommended by staff. Second. Okay. All right. Um, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Serbia, second by Commissioner Satcher. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy, did you have anything to add, sir? Not to the motion, ma'am. Okay. Not to the motion. I did have a question for Parks and Rec. Ask afterwards. it now, because I've got do, to go to public comment anyway. Do, do we have any Manatee County parks that don't have restrooms? Yeah. I, I believe we do, yes, sir. Yeah. Because yeah. all the ones that I'm familiar with in North River, you know, from Emerson Point to Blackstone and Lincoln Park, um, even out to Buff Buffalo Creek, there, there's some restroom access there. So I'm just curious. I've been to them. Uh, Charlie or somebody? Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Here comes this Charlie. Charlie Bishop. Oh, Char Ooh. did you see oh. Debbie's <laughs> eyes? Did you see Debbie's <laughs> eyes? Wow. Away from that microphone. <laughs> yeah. Charlie Bishop, Director of Property Management. We do have parks without restroom. For example, Sunny Shores is one example that don't. There's small passive parks throughout the county. Uh, Bishop Harbor, but uh, majority of them do. Jigs Landing, Blackstone, Buffalo, GT Bray, Lakewood Ranch. Johnson Preserve, I don't think, does. No, I don't. Yeah. Uh -huh. but Johnson's doesn't. You're right. No, we've got them all over the county that yeah. don't have bathrooms. Yeah. Water. we got to run water to them, so <coughs> it's kind of hard. Yeah. Um, I don't see any other commissioners on the board. I'm saying that now to see if anybody. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open this to public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to come forward? Seth, do we have anyone on the phone? <laughs> 
Yes, Madam Chair. First caller is 605. 605, please press star six. Go ahead, caller. Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. Um, so I do like uh, the dog park and the bathrooms. I think anybody needs, I think any park needs to have a bathroom. However, I am for transparency, less government, less taxes and less regulations. So by adding even more parks and recreations, we're adding additional employees, additional salaries, additional vacation time, additional health insurance, additional retirement. Um, so at some point, I would like this board to start migrating back to the role of government. And what I mean by that is we're talking about a park and a bathroom, yet we still didn't, we're not even having discussions about sidewalks and parish for school and the school kids. So the school buses don't have to pick them up a block or two from their, their homes when they can walk to school. So I, I just would like to start getting away from these pet projects and start getting back into the infrastructure conversation about how, because we've got a big development that we just approved against Mr. Satcher's recommendations out in Parish off Erie Road. We need, we need infrastructure in Parish. I'm from District 4. I welcome any uh, opportunity to have nicer things in this district. However, to an extent, we have to get back to reality into the infrastructure at hand. We're not even talking about roads. We still haven't even started talking about roads. We haven't talked about sidewalks. We haven't talked about our drainage system. We're not talking about the things that we need to be talking about up here. And we're talking about back again to parks and recreation. Um, you know, it was $8 million that was taken from parks and recreation to have a animal shelter that we no longer need because after the complaints about not having enough facilities for the animals, we now have bishops, which was donated to us. So that eliminated that problem. Now we have plenty of spaces. Um, as far as, and just to, to, to uh, also hit, Carol, the investigation I was speaking to you about was not an ethics complaint about your son-in-law. It is about a criminal complaint of you locking people out of the January 22nd meeting. Right. That Andrew, is now please at the stay on the topic, being please. Not true. Sorry. That's all I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other calls, Seth? Yes, Madam Chair. 445, 445, please press star six. <clears throat> Glenn Jablina, for the record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has been a long time coming. Thank for, you. For oh, the commissioners have. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. So, let's, you know, this goes back way back. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had that property for decades. I remember when there were cattle grazing on there and uh, the owner passed away and they gave you the property mm -hmm. decades ago. Decades ago, you sat on it. 10 years ago, I, I came to you with a plan for a community garden and bring in a bush hog. You know, for a few thousand bucks, you can make a, a nice walkway. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it fell on deaf ears. You spend how many hundreds of thousand dollars on a tower and we're even discussing what it's going to cost to put in bathrooms, it's laughable. You've got a Canaan school right next door. You don't think some moms are going to go there with their strollers and enjoy that park? In fact, the bathrooms should have changing stations in them, quite frankly. You've got several houses going in, just awesome. several hundred houses going in just north of there that are going to enjoy that park. So it's time we get off our butts and do something about it. 15 years too late as far as I'm concerned because we I only live a few blocks from there. We should have had the enjoyment of that property for decades. And under Mr. Hunsinger's rule, he didn't even want to talk to me. So I'm glad, you know, I've nothing got, got, I got marginalized every time I came to the county to talk to you about that 16.9 acres that has been sitting doing nothing for decades. I'm glad it's finally moving forward way overdue. Again, when that property comes available and that farmer gave the property to the county, there should have been an immediate review of that property. What are we going to do with it? How can we enhance the neighborhood? Do we want to sell it off for, for affordable housing? Do we want to keep it as a park? No. It sat there for decades, regardless of how many ideas I brought the county. So I'm glad it's moving forward. 
the bathrooms, absolutely. Pickleball Park should be replaced with a community garden, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you got the school right next door. I don't think plumbing in to the sewer and water is going to be a big deal after all the money we spent on, uh, on that tower in the corner there. And by the way, it was even in the wrong place, and, and the citizens still ate that. So let's move forward with the park. I think you can enhance it with uh, some uh, some permaculture that uh, allows some fruit trees uh, and cranberry hibiscus along the walking trail so folks can also uh, enjoy the nature and, and benefit from the fruits in there. So I'd like to sit down with the planning and, and let, let me know what kind of shrubs and vegetables you're going to put in there. So that's my two cents. Decades overdue. Thank Again, you, Glenn. Property <coughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. uh, Seth, any other callers? That's all the calls we have. Now, all right. Chair. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and close public comment. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I just want to respond real quick to, to Andrew's comments. Um, but I, I get what you're saying about trying to keep taxes down and, and focus on, on essentials, but at, at no point in time do I believe anyone up here or anyone who lives here, uh, we don't want Manatee County to be the, the lowest cost provider. You know, we're not, we're not looking to lower taxes to a point where everyone's quality of life is miserable mm -hmm. uh, and, and only build roads and houses. You know, that, that's bedroom communities, and nobody wants to live in those bedroom communities because there's nothing to provide. People want libraries. They want parks. They want a quality of life. They want an enjoyment in their life, and those things do, in fact, cost money. And that's what we're here to provide, a, a balance of, of affordability, with quality and parks are one of those things and in fact i would argue you know just looking at this it's probably one of the more affordable things we can do to provide a quality of life to people and you know I, i'm 100 percent in favor of this we, we need more of this i just had a long meeting yesterday and and people asked me you know what's your main focus on the cip and and i, and I talked about trails and i talked about bike lanes and i talked about places for people to, to run and, and enjoy the outdoors. That, that's what we should be providing with our, our capital and, and, and our tax base. So, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but, you know, I think at some point in time, you trim things down so much that you just make people's lives a, a little less, uh, you know, a little a little less nice, and that's not what we're here to do. It's it's to find a balance, and, and building parks is one of those things that we do collect impact fees for. It's one of the things we do utilize our taxes to maintain, and it's something that I, I believe this board is going to continue to do, and rightfully so. All right. It is after 11, so one more commissioner, and then we'll vote. Commissioner Servia. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you, Commissioner Cruz. Your comments are excellent. I really appreciate hearing that. Um, yes, we, we do not want to cut to the bone to be the Walmart community of Florida. Um, we are here to provide a uh, continue to maintain a lifestyle for our residents, and um, parks are one of the most important ways that we can do that. I do have one more question before we vote. Um, I think there's an opportunity, Tom, to, um, and when we build these parks such as this one, to provide some stormwater um, facilities that help an area like this that is subject to flooding. So I hope we'll take that opportunity um, as the design goes forward to capture some more of the runoff, maybe more than just the what's leaving the site currently, because this is an area that's subject to flooding. That's all I have. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you, Commissioner. Uh, you know, I might add, too, that a lot of people don't realize that most of our parks, when we build them, uh, it's not really with taxpayer money. It's impact fees. Some would say that is taxpayers' money, but it's not exactly, it's not the taxes you generally pay to the county. All right, so we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Servia, second by Commissioner Satcher. All in favor said aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is approved, Madam Clerk, unanimously. We will move forward now to our 11 o'clock. Time certain updates on CARES Act strategies. You didn't have to get up. <laughs> I'm used to standing here. Thank you, Madam Chair, Karen Stewart, staff. 
So I have a brief update regarding CARES Act extension and also the um, emergency rental assistance program. I'm very pleased to report that we received our amendment and executed it for the CARES Act extension on February 26th. And I also want to send a thank you to uh, Senator Boyd's office. Uh, his staff helped us uh, get that amendment um, back to our community, and we really appreciate that. Since that time, the Neighborhood Services Department, who've been working very hard on CARES this year, uh, completed uh, the Community Health and Wellbeing Funding Agreements, uh, the amendments uh, for previous rounds for nonprofits. This extends the ability to draw down the CARES funding for these nonprofits through March 31st. Uh, the payment requests from the agencies will be due to the county uh, no later than April 30th. As you might recall, our extension is only through June 30th per the state. In addition, the Neighborhood Services Department opened an online application for round four funding on March 2nd, and they closed it on March 5th. This was for PPE and safe opening items for nonprofits in the amount of $500,000 and food distribution in the amount of $750,000. All of the food distribution funding has been utilized. However, funds remain for the PPE and safe opening, so we anticipate opening another round uh, on March 10th, and that round will be open for nonprofits to apply to until all the funds are depleted. As far as the business rounds, uh, the uh, Redevelopment and Economic Opportunity Department opened round four on Thursday, March 4th. Um, 211 applications were received as of March 8th, and the application process will close as soon as 250 applications are received, and we anticipate that happening soon, possibly today or tomorrow. Um, in this round, uh, the staff and temps began processing as soon as the application opened. We have three applications fully approved and the draw requested and 45 applications under review at this time. <clears throat> the CARES Mortgage Assistance Program opens next week on March 15th and will close on Monday, March 29th, or once 75 applications are received. The Emergency Rental Assistance Program is moving along nicely. Uh, we have 209 applications in the review process, and of those, 144 are awaiting additional documentation from the applicant. 42 applications have been moved to processing, and we are expecting 15 to 20 more to go to fiscal for processing this week. We've hired the remaining staff needed. We currently have, uh, are fully staffed with 20 temps, so we've been providing many jobs to the community um, through the CARES Act over the last year. Uh, in order to get some more information out in the community, the Public Information Office, led by Nick Azera, has designed 60,000 English-Spanish flyers that are going to the school board for distribution this week and next. Uh, we also have our flyer available in Creole uh, per the request, and we will get those out to appropriate locations. We'll be putting the flyers in libraries and sending them to nonprofits and, um, and other organizations to get the word, word out in the community. And we're just uh, continuing to work on staff training, making sure that we have our information shored up for responding to the citizens. And we're also providing information to auditors that I mentioned uh, in my last update. We have worked together to open um, applications for three uh, businesses who were caught in the, uh, I won't say caught, who were um, processed by the uh, attorney, the inter what is it called? The IG, the... Well, anyway, the inspector, inspector general. general. Thank you. <laughs> New term. We used to call it auditors. Now it's inspector general. Thank you very much, Mr. Clegg. Um, so we are working with them to reopen their application and get additional information so that we might be able to approve their agreements. And so that's all, unless there's any questions. Um, all right. I do have one. Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, Karen, um, the... Um, the training, is everybody on the same page? And um, how are we doing? Um, do we still have the navigators? I mean, are those the girls upstairs or? Uh, the, navigate, the girls upstairs are working on CARES business. 
um, the girls on the ninth floor. The emergency rental assistance program staff is located on the seventh floor. They have a dedicated manager, which is Carol Hunt, and she works with them daily to improve their processes, provide additional training, and that is where the navigators who answer the phone and help people through the process are located. And the chamber, are they still, is there a number still that they're fielding calls and helping the businesses or no? Yep, the county is um, fielding all calls for the for the rest of the CARES rounds. That is happening upstairs the, on, ninth, on the ninth floor for businesses and for nonprofits. And the navigators are answering the phone for the emergency rental assistance. So of everybody course, ca calls 211? That is an avenue that, that can be used as well. Is that what we're supposed to tell the public, the easy yes, number? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, and then they'll refer you to you guys. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm told that we have not had that many calls in this round. I, you know, I think it's, you know, I think the navigators are going to help. I think people are, I, I just, I think that everybody's so worn out. I don't think they know. I know that there are some businesses that still need it. Plus, we didn't allow the big businesses that have applied twice now, received monies twice not to apply again. So now we're after the smaller businesses. Um, I know uh, we have staff in your old department that are going out and telling um, Sid, uh, that they can call us and get some help. All right, so commissioners, um, first, uh, before the round opened, our staff contacted every business that had applied previously that were not funded for one reason or another and offered assistance. Um, second, we um, do have our chamber partners reaching out to businesses. Um, we feel confident that we will um, use all the money that is allocated for this round for businesses. We are available to them. We are getting information out through our partners, and um, we feel confident about that. We're still available to answer questions anytime. So I'd respectfully ask the media if they would just kind of keep putting that. That would be great. In the newspapers or on social media, everybody because we don't have an occupational license in Manatee County, so we really don't even know how many businesses we have or who we're missing or who we should be contacting or, you know, that may need our help. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Commissioner Satcher. And I wanted to ask about, uh, in the list of things that the second round or whatever round we're on, but Four. um, the fourth round <laughs> provides, um, you know, it talks about PPE and those things that we all expect, but it also talks about signage. Um, is that limited to just a sign that says, be sure to wash your hands, something that's directly related to COVID? Or is this businesses that are were hurt because of the shutdown, uh, we're willing to help them let their customers know they're open and, and maybe do something uh, significant on that? Right. Yes, sir, that's a very good question. So in that, in the round, in, in all the rounds for PPE so far, um, they could buy the things that we always think of, you know, the masks and the gowns and all of those things, but they are able to use the money for marketing to say, hey, we're open and we're open safely and we're following the guidelines, and that signage um, can be used to advertise that to the community. They could change their sign, you know, and have, you know, open safe, you know, following COVID-19 protocols, you know, all kinds of things, outdoor seating. So yes, it does have to be COVID related, but they can advertise that they're open to do business safely in our community. So they have to be smart and tie it in somehow, like you said, outdoor seating even would qualify under that. So I, I just wanted to bring that out for businesses watching, um, that there might be uh, something, some real help there for, for marketing and uh, under those parameters. Thank you. Yes, sir. And that information is also in the guidelines, which are on the county's website. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other commissioners on the board. Thank you. In that Madam case, I will turn it over to Director Sauer, who will give you the COVID-19 update. Thank, Thank you. Jake, first, before you get started, uh, the board would like to give you our condolences. On Thank you. Your Thank you very loss. much. Thank you. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Jake Sauer, for the record, Director of Public Safety. Let's see if my. Did you do that on me, sir? Okay. Okay, um, as always. Uh, the data included in this presentation is produced based off the most recent information available in the Florida Department of Health and ACCA databases or as it's reported directly to public safety from local hospitals. 
In Manatee County, there have now been 31,997 residents to test positive for COVID-19, which unfortunately includes 614 confirmed fatalities. This is an increase of over 1,500 new cases since February 23rd when I first provided a public, when I last provided a public briefing on the situation. In the last week, the percentage of the tests that come back positive is 5.9%, which is similar to the test, the last time I reported on tests, which was at 6%. You have to go to the next slide. So. On slide three, the graph shows the number of new positive cases per date, as well as the seven-day average, which smooths out outliers in the data to show a trend. Since the second week of January, a significant decrease in the number of new positive cases being reported each day has occurred, which we certainly welcome. As we move past the spike in cases due to the holiday season, as well as, as, well as with increased vaccination efforts locally and across the uh, country, we are beginning to see the downward trend in positive COVID cases that we have been waiting for. In the graph on slide four, the bars represent the percentage of tests that are positive for COVID-19 each day since, since September, and the line is a seven-day running average. Like in terms of new positive cases, there has been a recent and relatively significant downward trend for percent positivity. And for this variable, 10% is a threshold established by the Florida Department of Health as an important benchmark not to cross. And again, Manatee County has not exceeded the threshold since January 28th, an additional signal of improving conditions locally. Slide number five provides data surrounding COVID-19 in our local hospitals. There has been a noteworthy decrease in the number of people in Manatee County hospitals and ICUs since January when there was as many as 102 COVID-positive people hospitalized. Those same numbers have been in the 50s or 60s most days in the past, past week or two. And public safety will continue to engage with and assist our hospitals with any unmet needs through our health care work, work group. The purpose of this slide is to remind everyone that we are operating fully within the scope of the state and federal guidelines from both the CDC and governor's office. The governor's executive order 20-315 limits the population groups that can be vaccinated to include only those persons 65 and greater, those in long-term care facilities, and frontline health care personnel. Since my last presentation, executive order 21-47 was issued, and this order added those that are 50 and above uh, and K through 12 employees, sworn law enforcement officers, or firefighters to the pool of people eligible for vaccinations. And last night, those orders were amended by Executive Order 21-62, allowing, allowing those populations I mentioned, as well as residents 60 and above uh, or older, to receive the vaccine starting on March 15th. The public safety team will continue to plan for vaccinate not only these three groups, but other populations that we anticipate to be involved uh, included in future executive orders. To date, Manatee County has administered 54,831 shots, whether Pfizer or Moderna, via points of distribution at Tom Bennett Park or the Public Safety Center. The number of vaccines administered at county sites will continue to rise as we improve processes and, more importantly, as the state ships more vaccines to us each week. A number of other partners have administered vaccines as well, including at our local hospitals, MCR Health, through the Region 6 Incident Management Team, and via CVS and Walgreens who vaccinate residents of long-term care facilities. Between their efforts and what we have accomplished at our county pods, there has been 71,779 residents of Manatee County who have received at least one dose of the vaccine so far, and that's over 51% of our estimated 113,000 residents 65 and older. 29,108 residents have received both doses of the vaccine to date. The county's allotment of first dose vaccines was the same this week as it was last week, which was 11,000 doses. Vaccination pods will be open each day of the work week at Tom Bennett Park. And from Monday to Wednesday of this week, second doses were or will be administered, while Thursday and Friday will, will bring first dose operations to Tom Bennett Park. Additionally, the Public Safety Center pod is being supplemented by state personnel, and this site will now also be operating five days a week for the foreseeable future doing approximately 1,000 doses per day. Additional details will be provided in another slide or, on, <clears throat> or two on this site's operation. There are now 101,201 unique users that have signed up for the pool, including couples. <coughs> At one time, there was over 186,000 persons in the county's pre-registration pool, which means we have trimmed off about 40,000 people from the peak. 
which we can now start to see in the graph on this slide. These people may have been vaccinated locally or could have received inoculations elsewhere and removed themselves from the pool. The state supported site at the Public Safety Center began operations yesterday and the team will conduct four weeks of first doses followed by four weeks of second doses. The plan is to do 1,000 doses each day. The site is open to the public at the PSC. Tom Bennett Park will continue to operate as the primary pod for the county with around 5,200 first doses being administered on top of the second dose shots given out each week. The Federal Retail Pharmacy Program is a collaboration between the federal government and several different pharmacy networks that aim to increase access to COVID-19 vaccinations across the United States. 18 pharmacies in Manta County are part of this program and are receiving 100 doses each week. This adds an additional 1,800 doses of vaccine to what the county and DOH Manatee receive each week, which, which is just above, which is just a force multiplier that we are happy to have our residents capitalize on. To sign up for either opportunity, residents should check the respective website for either entity. And again, the marathon continues as we constantly look for ways to improve our processes, whether it be the registration system, identifying additional sites, or any other process that is involved. Later this week, we'll be moving our sign-up portal to Everbridge. Residents will sign up through Everbridge to receive a call for vaccines as more groups are allowed to receive the vaccine. And thank you for all your feedback we have received to date from our partners, and we look forward to making additional improvements in the future. And with that, I can take uh, any questions you may have. Commissioner Whitmore. A few. Uh, the pods being set up, um, we have nothing to do with that. That's run by the state, correct? So that doesn't interfere with our numbers, like the one we just did in Colony Cove. That's a state-run pod, did not, a, did not come from our doses. I, yeah, okay. And do you think we could have a copy of that slide presentation? Because people ask me all through the week what's going on, and I was just wondering if somebody could just, I, yes. I want to get a printed copy so that when somebody's asked me a question, I can refer to it for this week, because I know it changes. Yes. Yeah, okay. And then, um, so, uh, the, um, you know, the mix I heard on the news, and I just want to verify it, uh, others are saying, well, Sarasota County has uh, had gotten more vaccines. Well, they, they said it's because their population over 65 is more than ours. Is that correct? I do not know how, how much uh, Sarasota County. said a number. County. It was on the news that Sarasota had an uh, older population. Yeah, and I, I don't know if they're taking into account state-run pods. I know the city of Sarasota did a state-run pod through Sarasota County, so I, I'm not sure how many they're getting. Um, ours has uh, remained the same. I can tell you through state calls, um, all of us, including the state, partic uh, participate in a state call three times a week, uh, and we all anticipate to use the exact words from the state, to be swimming in vaccines in April and May. I hope. Okay. Um, t I asked you during the break, and if you could say this slowly and explain it. I've had teachers ask me that um, <clears throat> want to want to know if we are going to be given the um, vaccines for teachers over 50 and firefighters, which I didn't think we were. Um, but I, I'd like for you to, and then the new rule, I guess, uh, starting the 15th, anybody over 60, is that going to us or is that state? So. And where do these people go or where do they sign up? So we can tell so, them. So there's many uh, different opportunities for all of those that are eligible to receive a vaccine. I'll start with the school board, uh, the Department of Health, Public Safety is meeting with the school board. Um, we have been meeting with them to um, best address those needs. MCR is vaccinating 1,000 school board members starting this week. The state is coming down the 13th and 14th to assist the school board with vaccinating teachers 50 and above that qualify, K through 12. Uh, and the Department of Health Public Safety is looking to add the remaining teachers to one of our two pods operating during spring break. Say that again about this, the last part you said about spring break. We're, we're looking to, to add the remaining teachers that qualify to receive the vaccine to one of our two pods during spring break. That's the easiest for Over them. 50, and that includes firefighters too. Firefighters are done. Uh, all of those that have opted to receive the vaccine have uh, been given um, multiple opportunities. Even with the, the lowering of the age, we believe that most of those, if not all, are done. Law enforcement, same as well. Those that qualify, sworn law enforcement officers from our sheriff's office and our local city police departments have all gone through Tom Bennett Park those that have uh, indicated they want to receive the vaccine. Okay. So I've been on the list since January 8th, and I haven't been called yet. And we have about 100,000 more in the pool, you're saying? 
There is 100,000 after we moved um, from the, the vape portal over to Everbridge to, to start calling those. Um, however, we see, um, and, and probably the reason why this, the governor is lowering the number, is we see as we start scheduling those from the portal, more are opting out than accepting it, and that's because they received it somewhere else as well. So uh, we still believe we're gonna get through the remaining uh, residents, 65 and older, in the Everbridge portal fairly quickly uh, through this month. You think by this month, okay. It's just, I, everybody I know now has at least got their first shot of my group of friends, except me. I thought maybe I'm being punished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. if you think about um, 77,000 yeah. uh, residents, 65 and older in Manatee County, we, we estimate 113,000 of those. And then you take those that don't, don't want to receive it. Uh, the 65 and older crowd, we're, we're moving through very quickly, especially with the, the assistance of the FEMA pop-up sites in Tampa, the local pharmacies coming online as well. Um, a local uh, physician, he wasn't local, he's a physician in Lombok Key, and he um, retired, and they called all of us and asked us to call him, and I called him, and, you know, at first they were very frustrated and told him to have patience. You know, I hadn't got mine either, and they actually sent me a message last night um, thanking us for all the hard work that we did, and they went and got it, and they, and actually then the husband had to get on to tell me how efficient it was at Tom Bennett. And also when I was uh, mixing up vaccines um, recently, I was asked to bring this to the board. Um, we got a card from a citizen that got the vaccine, and it said, to the COVID-19 vaccine staff and to all of you, just a note to say thank you for all you do, and the hours and the sacrifices, blessings from a retired nurse, Connie Burnett. So I told the staff that I would bring this, and um, we'll post that somewhere. And I want to thank all of you for all your hard work. Thanks. Thank you, thank you Commissioner. <clears throat> All right, I'm on the board next. Jake, just a couple of questions. Um, I've heard so many people talk about the second dose and how they've had side effects from it. What is the difference? Is there a big difference between the first dose and the second dose, or are they exactly the same? Or same. What, good, good question. What we, do you know we, on that? Um, through talking with the health department and the CDC uh, on the, the monthly calls that they do, we do expect some will experience some more side effects on the second dose than they will the first dose. Um, we've seen through uh, our staff and those that have been vaccinated, um, typical um, fever chills would, would be on the, the more severe side mm -hmm. uh, and, and tiredness uh, with some of the um, symptoms seen after the second dose. Okay. And I know that the age is, is changing where it's gonna start at 60. When can, when can citizens start signing up that are 60 but under 65? Good question. So the Everbridge portal, our team is working mm -hmm. with Everbridge today. We're hoping to uh, we'll run tests today on that. Hopefully uh, with our PIO team announce that uh, either tomorrow at the latest or Friday so they can start. Um, now please let us know so we can get the notice out. Absolutely. Yeah, to um, everybody. And, and, um, our, our intention is still to hit the 65 and older uh, as hard as we can, adding the 60 and, uh, and up as we move through that to help fill those <coughs> gaps. But, uh, you know, those 65 and older have been waiting a while, and um, that is our, that's our goal to get through that, definitely. I haven't received it either, so. A lot of people seem to, well, never mind. You and I are the only um, Commissioner Serbia. Yes, um, thank you, Jake. Always such an excellent presentation. And to you also, Karen. Thank you guys for keeping us straight on the CARES Act and COVID. Um, so I have some questions about the existing um, residents who are in the pool. And, I, you know, we've heard the numbers, and they're probably much larger than the actual numbers. But I've heard from several um, of my citizens who say, now we're going to invite all these younger people into the pool. I'm never going to get my vaccine. So is there a commitment that we're going to, we are going to finish all of those who are currently 65 or older before we start inoculating those that are 60, between 60 and 65? So that, another good question. So as we move through the uh, 65 and older waiting pool, uh, we're noticing almost up to 30% are declining or opting out of the uh, waiting pool as they've received it somewhere <coughs> else. That, that creates a gap for us to fill all of the available vaccine appointments. So with the governor moving on Monday to lower that to 60 uh, uh, and, and above, 
um, though we will most certainly hit the 65 and older group, move through that uh, waiting pool. I don't want anybody waiting any longer than they have to, but as we get those gaps, we can fill that with those 60 and older. Okay, and you expect we will have gaps, yeah? Huh? We're getting gaps now. You are, um, Yeah, okay. so we'll send out a blast, an Everbridge blast, um, 500 residents for a time frame, trying to fill 285 slots an hour, uh, and, and a good portion comes back, please take me out, I've already received the vaccine. Okay. So, um, and, and, I, and other counties are experiencing the same thing, and that's why you're seeing that age uh, come down. Okay, and then my next question is, do you foresee us um, continuing with this randomized lottery pool, or are we gonna go to a first come, first serve type of so system? So that, that's another good question. Everbridge, the Everbridge system, um, when, it, when, when we move completely over to that Everbridge system, which we're uh, intending to do with the 60 and above crowd, um, that, that's how it, it is native to work. Um, it works in a different way, though. Our, our home-built system goes in, locks that record, <coughs> randomizes it before the operator pulls it. Everbridge takes a randomized group as we move through those hours. So an hour and appointment slot, you have eight for the day, 285 appointments for an hour times eight. It takes a much larger look at the pool, and it says, I'm going to blast out to all of these residents trying to fill every hour. So... Um, because it's native to, to be randomized like that, it really works on a, a first, first to respond type of system because mm -hmm. it's trying to cast its net very widely to those saying, I want the vaccine. Um, and those who respond quickly, yes, I can take that date and I can take that time, it puts it in the slot and keeps that large net out so that it can fill those in a very timely manner. So it, it natively works randomized like that um, it's not a manual randomization that we have built in our home, home computer system, that, so to say. And the new system um, also communicates via text. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And is there the opportunity to share information through that text as well as schedule? For example, you know, I hear from people who say, I'd like to know that you vaccinated X amount and we only have X amount to go, that helps them to understand where they are? It's a good question. So as we move to the, uh, the signups in the Everbridge portal, they're gonna make an, their own login. They can check and see that they're still in the pool and they're still valid. They can change how we contact them. They can add emails, they can add phone numbers. They can do all that themselves. It gives them more control of that system. Um, I would have to double check to see if it has a dashboard like that. but. Um, the, the problem has been moving from the vape into the Everbridge and getting everybody into the Everbridge system. We, we still plan to wrap that up this week, and as we do, we can look at posting a dashboard ourselves of who has left or, or where we are in the system. Thank you, Jake. Sounds much better. Much better system, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Jake, I'm a big fan. You're doing Thank a great you. job. Thank you, sir. You know, your team of paramedics, right down through code enforcement, everybody that's working on this. Members of this board are doing it, including uh, Chairman Barr, are all doing a great job bringing vaccines, getting them from the governor and getting them to this Absolutely. county, and you're doing a great job getting them distributed. Um, listening to what you've said, I wanted to just go through my list here uh, and give the, you know, the newspaper something positive to report on. Tell me if you stand behind this. By the end of this month, all patients in assisted living facilities, all healthcare workers in Manatee County that choose to participate, all paramedics in this county that choose to participate, all teachers 50 and older that choose to participate, all law enforcement officers 50 and older that choose to participate, all firefighters 50 and over who choose to participate, and all senior citizens 65 and over who choose to participate will be vaccinated in Manatee County by the end of this month. Do you stand by that? Oh barring any unforeseen circumstances. Yes. Thank you. Um, and you're doing a great now job. I'd still, like to reiterate that. There's still um, 65 and older signing up. Thank you, Thank you very much. There, there is um, sl slowly still 65 and older signing up. But um, sure. um, I believe that we will see by the end of the month a, a large majority, if not all, those that have, those have been waiting still since January. wanting, still waiting on that pool. If you're called. off by three days, I'm not going to tell you to okay. live in post, okay? Yeah, um, sure. The bottom line is in three months, you know, we will have vaccinated all of those folks. I believe and so. I think it's a, it's a monumental effort. 
uh, and I commend you for it, and all of the people who are working with you as well. Um, one last thing was that you have a paramedic position advertised. Um, is it just the one position? Otherwise, are you fully staffed? It changes. Uh, it's an open, we keep it open. For all the time. charge paramedics, is that? It is was that a charge medic, yeah. Yeah, we keep it open to, to keep a pool. That, so how are you, how are you doing as far as staffing? I believe we're medics? down eight. You're down eight. Okay, so it would not be one. Right. <laughs> it would be eight. Okay. <laughs> all right, that answers my question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Good job. Good job, Kevin. Uh, Commissioner Satcher. Uh, with the uh, chair's permission, I wanted to ask to, if I could dialogue with Commissioner Whitmore. Sure. Uh, Absolutely. So, Commissioner, you've been volunteering and helping out with giving the doses, correct? Yeah. And uh, that's something that uh, you would like to continue doing? I'm signed up for next week. Okay. 17th. So, and I mix syringe. I put together syringes, and I've helped give vaccines too, because okay. you need thousands of syringes, and you have to put them together. Right. Okay. So, and so I don't see. Uh, I think that the the main reason why we put uh, healthcare workers uh, ahead are two different reasons. Uh, first of all, um, because they come in contact with the virus, more likely to come in contact with it. Um, so you can have more effect. The other reason is because they're around people um, that may be sick or have. Uh, issues and so you don't want them to end up getting sick when they're coming to the hospital because they're sick. Um, so I, I don't have any uh, special authority, um, but I would just like to, uh, and I think it might be something that the whole board could say that uh, we appreciate you working um, as a as a volunteer and um, and your skills in that area. And I see no reason why uh, you should be out of you. You should if you're interacting with the population that are coming to get vaccinated, that by definition is healthcare work, different from commissioning work. So if we were moving you to the front of the line as a commissioner, that would be, uh, you know, that wouldn't be ideal, that wouldn't be good, um, but this would be completely different. This is just saying that other healthcare workers have been vaccinated, and uh, so I'd like to encourage you to, uh, to get vaccinated uh, as soon as your convenience, if you to wish me, to. That was that. very, very nice of you. And since I was giving vaccines in there, I would I am eligible. And when you know I taught them, I know you don't really want to hear it, but I said I didn't want to abuse my position, so I wore a mask, a hood, and double gloved. I, I because our job, you know, and I actually told you all that at the meeting um, when we were having our meetings down on the what was it fifth floor. I said I uh, I didn't want to um, abuse my job, so. My husband got it because our son got him in New York City, signed up for CVS and found the CVS by the hospital. There was one slot. Now, if he could have gotten two, I would have taken it. Um, so when, I, when they do call me, I am giving up one slot. But if, I'm afraid if I go in now, I'll mess it all up and I won't even have my name in there. But I really appreciate it. When I, when I go there, I, uh, one of the nurses told me just, uh, I mean, I've, I had a glove on, but she said double glove, which was much easier. And I'm real. I'm, I am can, can say I'm an expert on infection control. So trust me, I don't. You know, I don't want to get it. I just got tested last week. So, yeah. But I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Anything else, sir? Nothing <clears throat> else for me. Okay, Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I've been concerned about that from day one, um, as it relates to Commissioner Whitmore. But I've been silent on it because she is a healthcare worker and she has been in in that. Um, when, when she's in, inoculating individuals, obviously there's some risk there. And um, it, it is a slippery slope, to, to, to be honest with you. But as I, I think where, where we are right now, we need to look at it from a different focus lens. And I'm, I'm with Commissioner, Commissioner Satcher on that, to be, on it, to, be, to be honest with you, just for safety purposes. Um, but I, again, I felt I, I was concerned about that in the earlier phases, but I just you know did not say anything because I don't want all the other dynamics and the optics that we're dealing with to kind of come to the forefront. But I do think it needs to be, because you are a, a healthcare worker, that kind of clears that right there. And and, 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 and it's to your own um, um, preference, but I do, I do think you should look at it a little bit differently at this point. And last time all I did was put syringes together until my hands hurt, and then I had to leave because I couldn't hardly hold the steering wheel. So um, I didn't give shots. Um, the last time, and I was—I only volunteered to put together syringes this time. So I'm not, 
I wasn't going to be with the patients because I was hoping I'd have the first shot by then. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, again, everybody I know, and they're my age, are starting to get their first shot. So my family's very upset at me because I won't go to a pharmacy. I, 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 the day I was there, they had five reactions. I want to be there where there's a paramedic or an EMT. That's, that's the ER nurse in me. So I won't do a pharmacy um, in a store because I asked them how they handle it, and they say they call 911. Well, 911 where the, the Bennett right, Park right. is, so that's where I'm staying. So, but I really appreciate it, and I'm only putting syringes together next week because that actually, believe it or not, that's an important job or mixing the vaccine, but I'm not touching a patient. All right, not seeing anyone else um, on the board. Jake, good job. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you all, excited. commissioners. Um, I'm excited. Uh, there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel here. Yeah. Um, we'll still need a, a motion for to continue the local oh. state of emergency. Second. Yeah, whoa, motion. whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. The I'm resolution, another seven days. Or oh. right. uh, to, to continue the local continue state of emergency. I've already signed the paperwork. Oh. On it. Yeah, but we have to do a formal. Anyway, so we have a, I didn't hear what y'all said. I'm sorry. <coughs> we made a motion. I seconded. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore, second by Commissioner Van Austinbridge. I need to open this to public comment first. Yes, uh, anyone in here want to come forward and speak on this topic? I know, that's a lot. All right, uh, Jake, or I'm sorry, Seth, any phone calls? Yes, Madam Chair, we have 1605. Please okay. press star six. Who's that? Go ahead, caller. Andrew Griffin, yeah, Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. Um, I have some questions. I've noticed that the testing sites are um, being lower and lower with participation uh, from my own personal uh, views of the testing sites. Can somebody please tell me uh, how many tests that we as a county are providing, which locations are either the busiest or the slowest? Because um, I passed by um, the Braden Convention Center a couple times a day and I hardly ever see anybody standing in line. So at this point, wouldn't the testing be better served by their practitioner or doctor if we're not getting enough um, uh, back, uh, testing done at our county site? And then um, also, um, I do think that the uh, vaccinations and what the county, state, and federal government has done here in Manatee County is wonderful. Uh, I'm glad to hear that people that want to be vaccinated can have the vaccinations. Um, I'm not surprised by the 30% drop. Uh, some people are not uh, opting not to take the vaccine at all, such as my mother. She was called and she chose to decline the appointment. So uh, with that uh, being said, um, I, I think I just really want to know about the um, actual testing, um, how, how, how um, those sites are, how productive those sites are. Thank you. Do we have another caller, Seth? That's all, Madam Chair. Okay. I'll go ahead and close public comment. Jake, did you want to <coughs> say uh, Man Sure. Manatee County does not provide any uh, local COVID-19 testing that is performed by the state of Florida and the governor's office. The Convention and Visitor Bureau and the um, drive-through testing site at the dog track on University Parkway is done by the state of Florida. Okay. I thought so, but I wasn't 100% sure. All right. Well, we have a motion uh, to extend the state of emergency by Commissioner Whitmore, a second by Commissioner Van Austinbridge. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. Madam Clerk, it is approved unanimously. Thank you, Commissioners. Jake, thank you so much. Very helpful indeed. Commissioners, it's a quarter to 12. Uh, all that we have left are commissioner comments and our time certain at 1.30. Um, do you want to go ahead and start commissioner comments now? No? Okay, we can wait. We'll go ahead then and break for lunch and we'll be back here at 1.30. Thank you. Did you get food or toys? Uh, yes, yes.
occupancy Wednesday, February 24th, 115. This meeting is called to order. First item of uh, on the agenda is the uh, consent agenda, the minutes from February 10th. Has everybody looked at them? Is there a motion to <clears throat> approve? And uh, I move that we accept the minutes of the last meeting. Okay. There's second. A sec uh, second motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed. Um, thank you. Uh, the chair report. Um, thank you all for being here. I've been working. Uh, I'm trying to pop in and talk to uh, our, our CRA staff every day. Um, spend a lot of time getting getting us up to speed here and everything. So um, once again, if anyone has any uh, you know questions or or suggestions, um, please do please do stop in and tell our staff about it. Uh, administering the oath, and there's. No one here but an officer. I, do we have to administer the officer? <laughs> okay. Um, citizens, re, citizens comment. Looks like none here. Executive, pardon me? No, sir. Executive director's reports. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to give the 45 days State of the Union uh, for me. Um, it's been very exciting and every day I love coming into work because you don't know what you're going to do. You're going to, you think you start your day off one way and it ends up and to me that's exciting. Actually that's the type of work I love. So I'm, again, I'm thankful to be here. Um, I will start uh, my report with a quote that Vice Mayor Barnaby used back in January on the Bradenton update. Wow. And the quote is by my fellow Greek Plato that the beginning is the most important part of the work. And when I read it on the Bradenton update, it was my second week with the city and the CRA. And it hit home. And to me, the beginning is truly the most important part. If we don't get things right from the beginning, then it will never, will always play catch up. So I want to build a solid foundation with your guidance and priorities. I know we have a good board and I'm here to serve you to reach that, that capacity that we can reach. Um, so it's been a very busy 45 uh, or so days. Um, some of the activi activities that I've been involved with is uh, first of all, reviewing plans, reviewing the history of the CRA, um, making sure that what we do is legal, and if there's some things that we've been missing, um, then how do we bring everything in compliance according to state statutes. Um, in addition to that, I'm creating, I'm in the process of creating action plans with deliverables, because I want to be able to show to you, first of all, what are we doing? Um, what are some of our activities? What is there to be done and by what deadline and who's involved? And that way I can give you updates anytime that you ask me a question, I can give it to you in real time. I've been organizing, KK and I have been working on trying to organize our files. Um, we're starting, you know, we're looking into the future, but again, we want to make sure that we have access to the past. So if we have a question about a project, we can go back and find everything we need. Uh, I've reviewed all of our contracts and incentive agreements, and by the end of this week, we would have made all the required payments. Uh, one of them is coming to you later on today, but uh, at least we will have fulfilled that financial obligation. Um, we're also working on the annual report. It's a statutory requirement that before the end of March that we presented to the CRA board and we'll give a copy also to the county. Uh, so we are, even though I wasn't here last year, um, I am working diligently so that I can compile everything that was done and present it to you um, so that you're aware of all the good things that the CRA is doing. Um, later down in our agenda, we're gonna talk about a logo and uh, we're gonna be in the process, we're in the process of creating a logo for the CRA. Um, on January the 14th, 
Uh, we submitted to the state the Economic Development Incentive Survey. It's an annual requirement that the city has to do and the CRAs have to do. It's a pretty straightforward okay. survey. I just want to point out two of the questions there which pertain again to the past year. Um, the question is if there were any direct financial incentives of monetary assistance paid to one or more businesses during fiscal year 1920. And we had five businesses that we paid a total of $216,706. Um, the other question I would like to point out is indirect payments. So give us the, to you know, did, did, were there any indirect financial incentives paid to one or more businesses and or community organizations? And the answer is yes. And there's only one uh, such uh, payment that we gave out to realize Bradenton, and the amount last year was $369,366. Um, we're in the process of being audited uh, for last fiscal year, which is a normal process. Um, the auditor did have three questions that we have responded to them. So when the final audit comes, uh, comes out, it will be given to you and we can discuss it further. Um, I've, I've been trying to do a lot of outreach and partnerships. To me, again, I, that is, I think nobody, we, KK and I are just two people and the five of you, we cannot do everything by ourselves. We need the community. We need the support from out the organization. So um, I've joined, I'm part of the Chamber of Commerce uh, Downtown Redevelopment Committee. So they have monthly meetings. Um, I've already attended one and the end of the week I'll be on my, in my second one. I, I've met twice with Manatee County Economic Development and uh, KK and I will actually be, will be meeting with their management team in the near future so that we, they know what programs we have available, we learn more about what programs they have available, and if we can piggyback, you know, the one thing I hate to tell a resident is no. I hate that word. If somebody comes to us for assistance, then I may not be able to help you, but here's where you can go. I think that's the best way for anybody to handle things. Um, so we have that meeting coming up and we look forward to working with the county economic development closer. I also met with the EDC with Sharon Hillstrom and Lauren Kratz. Um, and also there's a follow up meeting with, uh, with them so we can again understand their programs better and see if, you know, why duplicate things? If they're doing something, we don't need to do the same exact program. We can come and do something different. Um, I've met with the chair of the Central CRA Advisory Board and I'll be meeting with the vice chair um, very soon. So again, we can start talking in the future about you know, advisory boards. What's, after I meet with both of them, I'd like to bring this back for discussion to see what, where we go from there. Um, I've, I met with the entire community policing officers, the five of them, and with uh, the sergeant, and um, he was kind enough to take me on a ride along, and I learned a lot. It's always good to do ride alongs with different people because you get their perspective on it. So we drove around, and he's also gonna be arranging for me to go to the 14th Street CRA and the CCRA as a follow-up with the officers that are in that area since they know it even better with the details. Um, Peter, I met with Peter Diadio. He's the developer from the former Minley Rogers site um, that came before you on December the 30th and we approved the grocery future grocery store. So he's been working on trying to get tenants. Um, he's actually going to be going through the DRC, the city's um, pre-development review committee. Um, so it's at least to, pre to show some preliminary plans. So planning and I have been in great cooperation uh, with uh, especially Marshall and Myra. The, you know, we wanna be involved so that we can make the process smoother also. So they've been wonderful at updating us, but there's activity and so I'll be giving you updates as, um, as, as I have them. I also met with Realize Bradenton um, and learning about all the wonderful things they are doing. 
And um, I look forward to working with them and, you know, on what can we do, especially next year. I mean, the budget for this year was already set before I came, but we'll be having the discussions with you. What are expectations with anything um, and what can we do uh, even more potentially next year? Um, there were two properties that uh, they were under the DDA. So because the DDA sunset it, we're working with the property appraiser's office to convert the naming to the CRA. Um, another thing from the very first week that I joined, I kept getting calls about what are some housing developments that are in the city? How many units? Are they market rate? Are they workhouse? Because potential developers, they want to know who's coming, who's there, how can they develop their properties. So I, after the third phone call, the second week, I figured, okay, instead of me trying to always type an email or try to give them uh, one, two, three, um, I created an Excel uh, a, a list to put them all together, where the status, where are they at the process, are we j did we just sign an agreement, how many units, what type of rate is it, so that anytime anybody asks for that, um, we have it available. KK and, again, uh, the planning department worked with me to finalize that list, and we will be, you, you know, we will be updating it as it comes. So any, any 10 or more units, any development with 10 or more units, they will be in that list so that if somebody is interested, we can give it to them and we can show the opportunity that they have, um, especially in the CRA. Um, developers have been calling, asking questions, so I've been working with them. Um, you know, anything preliminary I'm not bringing to the board, but as we're having these discussions, obviously I will be coming to you for direction, but it's wonderful to see that activity um, and interest, absolutely. I've reached out to the Chamber of Commerce so that we can, uh, so uh, I can become more familiar with their priorities as well as uh, how we can do a partnership in the future. I've updated our information with the Florida Redevelopment Association and KK and I also went into an ADA compliance meeting because we know how important it is to the city and we want to understand it more and make sure that the CRA is also compliant. So that's in summary kind of big level activities that we've been doing. Do you have any questions at this point for me or? Um, I've, I've got a, a couple. Um, so the two properties that were under the DDA, wh what are they? Do you remember the names? Um, KK? The Manatians okay. property, um, the uh, substation property, okay. and the property adjacent to it, which was our daily bread. Okay. Um, so those those were. I'm just waiting for a telephone call for direction. Okay. On um, what exactly we have to do. Um, okay. Working with Scott to to sing at property appraisal office. Okay, good. Uh, and Manatee Ends, we closed on that. So yeah. That's not. Manatee Ends has been conveyed. Yes, excuse me. So, so that one should just, be it's resolved. Down to the two. Okay, so substation and daily bread. I'm still so attached to Manatee Ends. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, it's, that's, that's good. Because I, I wouldn't have, because I was trying to think downtown, that's actually 14th Street. So. It is 14th, but okay. it still was downtown development authority doing right. business as yeah. 14th Street Community Development. Okay. And then um, with the county, uh, I know that you have a, a relationship with uh, uh, Jerry, is it? Yes, yes. so um, Jerry Lopez yes. used to be my former boss, uh -huh. and so therefore we have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So she was my very first meeting mm -hmm. outside internal meetings, and I look forward to working closely with them. And, and because I don't believe that one of the things that I've been hearing is that the county and the city have not been working closely together, so I'm, true. I will be rectifying that. That's, that's great. And then I know I met with um, Sharon Hillstrom, and uh, you know I, I like what she's doing and everything. I like, I like her. But the one thing, I, the conversation I had with her was, because um, uh, I was talking about what we're doing here and what she does, and she said, oh, we don't do redevelopment. And that is... Our, the name, our name says community redevelopment. So we're kind of, wh what we work with them is, is kind of going to be, how they, how they fit in with us will be interesting, but. Well, the EDC, uh, a, pot 
potential for f uh, the same way of communication, how it's been, been in the past, but um, SANS was brought actually Correct. to us from the EDC. They appro approached the EDC, EDC approached um, the CRA at the time, mm -hmm. and so therefore that's a t the level of partnership. So it's important that we have that closeness so that they can talk to us and vice versa. And then um, to Florida Redevelopment, uh, I know that there's, because um, we're going to be looking at our schedule later on, and there, you want to tell us about the annual conference? Or oh, absolutely, and, and that's the part also you're going to see the resolution for the, change, the one potential change in meeting is that, um, let me see, how do I zoom? That's good. You know how to do it? Yes. Okay, I haven't. Um, but um, I, w I, I wanted to make you know to make sure you knew so that you can also save the date and you'll be getting a lot more of these as they as they update the website. But the annual Florida Redevelopment uh, Association conference will be in Fort Myers. Um, is it that way? Okay. Yes. Thank you. From October 27th through October 29th, which conflicts with one of our meetings. So mm -hmm. I was going to come to you to see if you wanted to reschedule that meeting because a few of us will be at the conference. And I encourage you to mark your calendars. It is a wonderful conference mm -hmm. where you make a lot of networking, uh, tons of information about CRAs, what to do, what not to do, like things. I've learned so many things every time that I've been there. So. Um, but I'll be sending you more updates as they provide it on the website. Uh, is this one of the things they all were discussing that we would go towards our hours? Y yes. So th this th these are great. I've, I've attended, um, I think, three of them. One a long time ago, but there was one in Daytona and last year in Tampa. And they are, they are very worthwhile. Um, the city, you, you know, your, your city credit card can be used to book a room. And then make sure when you do that that you have a tax exempt status um, for that. So um, and then and then we can work out the arrangements for the conference itself. But these are definitely um, I, I would advise anyone that can attend to do so. And and then there should be uh, is that is that the one that's going to have the one on one conference? The CRA one on one will be offered. Your, usually they do it the very first day of the conference, so they mm -hmm. offer a couple of courses. There's even a session just for CRA board members yeah. to talk about. So I, like I said, I hi it's a wonderful conference. I highly encourage us so to go. Someone should sign up for that immediately, the 101, if you want to do that. Only one of us or all or, of no, us? No, any, everybody's entitled to uh, that. This is no. Um, just that I, I think the one online got filled. The CRA one-on-one -on -one got filled within a day or so. But this one's and still open. But th yeah, this will be available. So as soon as we know that the conference information is out, I will be presenting it but to I you. It, they, they didn't give us all the details yet. But it, that what I'm saying is you should jump in early because this could fill up as well if you want to do the one-on-one here. Um, I, I think it's the only one they offer at that conference. I'm not one sure. Of, They've I changed some things. I think, it is. So I think yeah. it is. But they have an op they have confirmed that have they? they confirmed it to me I called them and they confirmed it over the phone that it will be offered so but the sign up is not yeah. open no correct and I don't know that the I don't know their process so if you're going if you need to do a separate sign up that I don't know again as soon as I know yeah, I will it, let it, you all know last year it was separate yeah so that, um, that was my I just wanted to get the ball rolling questions okay um, yeah, because I'm looking at this date, which says October 27th through the 29th, and then I look at our meeting schedule, and our meeting in October, you have set here as October 13th. Is that in response to? This is proposed in okay. response to this. Okay. Yes. Because I was going, but there's not a <laughs> conflict. I know we haven't formally adopted this, but I was, yeah. The, what we adopted at the last meeting was the 27th. Okay. All righty. And it's the same day as the city council meeting. So potentially, depending on how you feel about it, the right. city council meeting might need to be rescheduled or. OK. Um, any other questions on her report? It's been busy. <laughs> Good busy. OK. So we'll j jump into um, your work plan here, A, Absolutely. all serious. 
So, um, and we touched a little bit at the last meeting, uh, we dis you adapted a schedule, um, and um, the, as soon as we adapted the schedule, within a day or two, they came out with the dates. So that's why I'm coming before you um, with also a resolution, because according to state statute, we also need to adapt. It has never been done before in this CRA that we've adapted this. So again, I'm trying to do everything by the book and make sure we're compliant with state statutes. So um, on the back, it's all the same dates except for the October 13th date. Um, it was at the last meeting you adopted the October 27th date and I wanted to present to you that there will be a conflict um, and how you wanted to address it. Whether you wanna move it forward to October 13th, maybe you don't want to have one at that month, you know, it's up to you. You give me guidance how, what you want to do. Uh, pleasure of the board. I, I feel pushing it to the 13th should okay. be fine. Yeah. Instead of skipping one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I think we have that. Um, Do you need a, a motion? Yes. To yes. accept this? Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution CRA 21 02, um, setting the days and time certain for our regular CRA meetings. That's a motion. Looking for a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. New logos. New logo. Um, so this came about because I had to respond in an official letterhead. Um, and and I last year we had responded with the city of Bradenton letterhead. So knowing that I'm CRA, I didn't feel comfortable using the city of Bradenton traditional logo. So I asked if we could use our the sunglasses logo and I was told that we are not allowed to use it anymore. So therefore we have a need to create a logo so that um, so that we can conduct our business. I don't even have business cards yet because I'm waiting for something so that um, we can move forward. So realize Bradenton, Jeanette was gracious. Um, she's um, she, in addition, Included to what we give her as funding for the year. She did this for free for us and so she presented us with some options and I They're including your packet um, the first two are Are the same just different coloring um, and I'll We're giving it to you in order of preference. Okay, Kay and I our top choice was uh, the first one, then uh, the second one. And if I can point out to you that we actually um, adjusted it a little bit. So the first one, um, instead of a T, we wanted a palm tree, so we asked for that change. To me, the water is crucial for mm -hmm. our city, and there was nothing before. So we asked for some type of wave and water to be shown in the logo. And on top where it says CRA, there used to be a skyline. Um, and I, we felt that that skyline wasn't a, it was more like a New York City style ties, um, line. So we felt, you know, KK had this great idea. There were three columns there. How about CRA? And that's, I think, from a perspective of people becoming familiar with the word CRA, it just catches your eye. So we really like um, that first logo. Um, you also have on the second page, uh, some other options. So this is the third option that we had, and this is the fourth option. Um, and you know we're excited regardless what you decide. I think it's exciting. We had no problem using the sunglasses, but since we're told we cannot, we need an, an alternative. So okay. I just wanted Mr. your Chairman. feedback, your thoughts. Do you like Good these? Day. Oh, um, just from a marketing standpoint, a couple of things. Um, I, I would, I would keep in mind how they also reproduce in black and white since going to four colors sometimes can be a greater expense. Um, and also I, I find this a lot in a lot of marketing. There are a lot of red, green color deficient people. And so when you have the red and the green, it can just be hard to read. So, I, I mean, I like your favorite one, but those are just two things. I would definitely keep in mind is how does it reproduce in black and white. So. 
Well, and my question was, did you look at the, I mean, because it looks, it looks lovely here. When you shrink it down to go on a business card, or you know, is it going to be like in the center of your? I think it's a blue, but it, we can make it any color. That's why I wanted you to see both options. And if there's other colors that you would like, I'm all for that. Uh, I, I like choice number one. I, I don't know if anyone else. I do too. That's fine. Yeah. OK. I don't know. Do I need a motion to adopt this as a logo? Yeah. OK, so we're looking for a motion to approve. Um, the Braden CRA logo with choice number one. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Okay, that's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right, thank you. And now to the big one, the financial statements. The financial statements. And I also would encourage you, whenever we meet, I w if you have any questions, I would love to do even a dig deeper if you want or any questions you have. Um, nothing really stands out in this month's financial as weird other than if you go on page five under the central CRA, um, sorry, is it five? No, I'm sorry, it's on page, on, on se page seven of the central CRA. Under legal fees, um, we had budgeted for $5,000, and now we've already exceeded that amount of money by almost $6,000. So um, that w next month, I will be bringing forward a detailed budget with appropriations and some updates that we need to do to this budget so that we're compliant, that we're not, and we have the money, so I'm not concerned about finding the money, but we need to make, we need to budget it so that way we have enough money. So just to remind everybody, we have three different, each CRA has its own funds, its own revenues and its own expenses. So, so far the, the only, the legal fees for the central CRA were higher because of the agreement back in December with the Peter, with Peter um, on the Minnie Lee Rogers site. Okay, do we, do we need to adjust for that or can that, that, that what I mean, I was although it's legal fees, it's actually involved with the site prep, so. Um, so what, there's several fields like that that we need to update. Um, I would say there's more than 15 fields like that that we need to change. So my goal was between now and March. I will come to you with what was it before, mm -hmm. and my recommendation is how it should be changed. We're going to be passing an mm -hmm. appropriations resolution because we received a different amount of money from last year that we're carrying forward that has not been accounted mm -hmm. in the financials. Yeah. So at the next meeting, it will take a l the majority of our time will be to go through the annual report as yeah. well as the financials so that way we're all familiar because I think always look at the financials to guide us into the future. Okay. But if but if you have any suggestions, I was going to bring it up later, if you have suggestions on what we should be using money for, it doesn't have to wait until next month. You can tell me today or you can shoot, you know, whenever I meet with you, you can tell me so that way we can start planning for that. <coughs> well, and you, you and I have discussed this, that we know that um, we can't be, in the past we've had, um, we've kind of done carryover with, uh, we call it um, ongoing projects, and we should probably be more specific with that. So with the two CRAs, um, that are carrying debt, it would probably be very prudent for us to pay the debt down and eliminate mm -hmm. the debt because it's, it's, we're not, the CRAs are supposed to kind of balance out at the end of the year. We're not supposed to be, and we, and we want to keep our, we want to keep the CRA funds going. We don't, uh, you, the option is if you have leftover, you can give it back to the city and the county. We, we have never done that. I don't think we really want to, but to be completely legal, it should be, allotted for in a better Connected way than we've done in the past. Correct. And, and the, there's three ways that at the end of the year the funding should be. Either it's connected to a project that didn't get completed this year, that's why we're carrying it forward 
to the same project next year, mm -hmm. call it property acquisition, call it sidewalks, call mm -hmm. it tax abatement, call it whatever we call it, but we can move that. Mm -hmm. Or like you mentioned, we give it back to the funding sources or we pay down debt. So those are the questions that I'll be asking you in March. How do you want us to deal with that extra money that we have right now? I would say we have about 600,000 um, in the CCRA and the Bradenton CRA and about 450 in the 14th Street CRA. So ha this year, what do you want me to do with that money? So you don't have to answer me today, but this is right. things that we need to start thinking about. And the 14th Street CRA does not have any debt. Does not have any debt, absolutely. So but the others do have. So even if we use all of the amount to pay off debt mm -hmm. and have more money in the future, that's an option too. Right. And then you'll have to, um, there's a few things that'll have to be done then in March. Um, you and I have talked about then, uh, like the, the, the desire to put a third person on, like entry level um, to help. Because we've, we've gone from Carl being there to uh, with Jesus being a, a high salary person and then Karen so we're kind of restructuring to a different thing but will we have to set that up in March um, we don't I think it would be a good time to discuss it I right now I'm still evaluating what the needs of the CRA are but if I'm ready to you know to bring it forward I'll let you know but we do need some additional help there's a lot to be done and between two people, especially if we want to an improve our outreach to the community, um, then we need to bring somebody on board. Okay, and then I know it was brought up last meeting that um, uh, possibility of property acquisition of like substandard rentals and, and possibly acquiring them, fixing them up and, and getting them into home ownership would be something we could do. I, I, I like that idea. Um, if you want me to do anything uh, further, just going page by page on the third page, starting where it says, um, I'm sorry, on the fifth page again. The, the first five pages are all, it's our fourth fund, which deals with administrative costs, with supplies, with copies, with reimbursing the city for telephone and printing, things to that effect. But when we, on page five is when we start dealing with the CRAs. So on the top left, you will see central CRA. So in the middle of the page, you'll see Manatee County. So the contribution that central CRA is receiving this year from uh, the county is 566,726. Um, it was estimated to be about 561,000, so the minus is actually good for revenue, so it means we got about $5,000 more from the county that we had estimated. If you look below, three number, four numbers down below that, where it said fund transfer dash 001, that's the city contribution. So the central CRA received from the city of Bradenton 522,380. So our total revenues are 1.1 million approximately. If you keep going to find on the top left where it says 14th Street CRA, this, if we go through that same practice, if it's about four or five pages later, Manatee County contributed 424,996 to the 14th Street, and the city of Bradenton contributed $390,790. Um, so if you see to the very right, the percentages, it was very close estimation, about 3,000 off for each one of them. And if we keep going three, four pages later, on the top left, you'll see Bradenton CRA. The Manatee County contributed $1,970,192. And the city of Bradenton, one million eight hundred and seven, five ninety one. And the total revenues for the Bradenton CRA is three point almost eight million. Do you have any questions 
or comments or any additional ideas that you want me to look for or bring forward to you next month? Everybody good? Okay, is there a need for uh, a vote on this? No. No, okay. So, um, so and, and if you notice on the agenda, we restructured it a little bit. So um, there are some items that affect all the CRAs, so we created that category. So anything that affects all three of them, we're going to be discussing it at that section. And then by alphabetical order, I will be giving some pertinent updates to you for each CRA. So uh, going alphabetically, 14 Street CRAs first. So um, this project, you may hear it, you may know it as Pearl Homes, you may know it as the Metropolitan or the Met, any of these three uh, is that former Manatee Insight. Um, so the, the Metropolitan is a 200 unit apartment community um, and they're along 14th Street West. Um, so they will be consisting of 180 studios and one bedrooms. They, those will be ranging in size about six to 700 square feet and 22 bedroom units with approximately 1,000 square feet. Um, we sold the property to Pearl Homes last year and I believe the city also waived some impact fees and some right of way uh, to make this, uh, <coughs> this housing, and it's workforce housing, so to make it happen, um, that's what we had to do. So this, um, the developer mentioned that this will be a new standard in the green building industry, projected to carry first of its kind um, lead certifications for multifamily residential development. So I'm looking forward to learn more about that. I, uh, Carl, KK, and I met with a developer back in January, and I've spoken to them since. So they are, they're also working the deal. Good news is that groundbreaking is uh, gonna be around uh, May timeframe. Mm. So as soon as we have a date, I'll be working with them um, to advertise that and let, definitely let you know when that's gonna take place. And they believe that construction uh, will begin the second half of this year. And they think leasing expected to begin in 2022. So this is, I went back to the records that we have. I didn't have a colored picture, but especially for those that were not here last year, this is um, kind of what it's gonna look like. So I believe they're gonna have two <coughs> separate buildings with multi-story on each one of them. Um, that's actually great. I, I didn't realize that they were going to be doing a May groundbreaking. That's that's moved up from where where we were last. Yeah. And that is, uh, I think, one of the biggest things that Peter brought forward was that he's going to be using LED uh, green construction, which is um, highest level of modern construction. Made it very attractive. I have a question. This for history. This is workforce housing. Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of backlash <laughs> for this when, when it was going? Um, we heard, uh, as far as uh, like affordable, no, not yeah. at all, not no. at all. Um, it was uh, mostly uh, Village of the Arts people, you know. They wanted to see yeah. artsy stuff that just wasn't uh, market it just wasn't going to work the, the, the tough part about this was making something work that was going to work for the market you know um, and, and it's changed a few times uh, you know because it's got it's got to make sense for the builder or it won't get done and to be honest we didn't put a lot into this this uh, as far as contributions and everything they the the Pearl Homes uh, the, you know they came in with a uh, you know, offering uh, LED construction. People aren't offering that. Uh, that's usually extra. You pay for that. Um, he didn't really ask for much as far as uh, there was no TIFs. There was no, I mean, the, the gib was we sold him the property at a reasonable rate, but, you know, that property had set vacant for so long that it really, it was a matter of doing, doing the right thing. So I, I'm actually you know, my, my goal is hoping to see <clears throat> this stays on track and gets built because this is actually a really good, and, and it'll help. Oh, it's gonna help I mean, if we can put 200 units 
for, for people with jobs <clears throat> right next to on, on 14th Street right next door to the village this is this is an economic driver mm -hmm. this is big <laughs> nice the uh, site originally uh, we paid I think 1.2 million for it 1.8 yeah and uh, the rent I don't know what it is did he is it was nothing it was nothing compared 800 to 1200 or something like that Does that sound right I don't know I'd have to go back and look at the minutes but it was totally different than what you're comparing it to gotcha. to the first yeah yeah <clears throat> and so nice <laughs> no we didn't have anybody contest that mm -hmm. what we had was the villages didn't want anything they wanted to park I think but they wanted these <laughs> tiny homes that that they're one level which wouldn't have put very many people in there and so <clears throat> yeah. yeah between 920 and this you're gonna have four or five hundred people of added walk yeah. foot traffic in the downtown and 14th Street CRA I think it's gonna be great and 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 the CCRA. I mean they're close all the three CRAs are close so sometimes it might be on one CRA but the economic the effect is yeah. seen yeah. in the others this is bicycling to work so yeah, yeah. Well, and also that I know that it, er, early on there was criticism for what it cost to, to buy the Mantian site. The guy, it was, to say it was an economic blighted eyesore is an understatement. It was, it was, a, it was a real embarrassment. And the owner knew that. I mean, he absolutely knew it. And he held the city up for every dollar he could squeeze out of it. To, you know, it's like he was an opportunist, really. <laughs> In the yeah, but, truest sense of the word. But but it needed to go away. And and for CRA dollars, that's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Great. Sorry, but I took everybody to the history lesson, but <laughs> I wanted to know. Okay. And is this helpful? I know that some of you were, were here when you were voting, but I just want to give a background so that everybody is aware. Is that okay going forward? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd really like that. Okay. Um, so the next item is um, request for contract amendment for Suns uh, Insurance. And uh, we have here uh, a representative from Suns. Um, and so if you have any questions, they can participate. Uh, Jeannie Raskin is here. Jean. Um, so back on March 2nd of 2016, uh, the CRA and, uh, created a resolution and approved two types of funding incentives uh, back to Suns Insurance. This was, as I mentioned before, this is a project that was brought to us from the, we worked, the EDC brought it to us and in the beginning it was called Project ABLE uh, because uh, we didn't want to announce who it was. They wanted to relocate to the city of Bradenton, bringing uh, higher p uh, wage jobs. So the CRA approved two types of incentives. One is for TIF, so that every year we pay them the increase in, we, we, do, they, we reimburse them the taxes for the increase in value from 2016 to whatever is to this year. And that's a 15 year contract, so that's separate. Um, what is coming before you is the jobs creation incentive. And um, this was a five-year uh, incentive and that we would reimburse sons for $1,750 for each new job that they created that year. Not if they had, if they had started two years ago and now they, they left and they came back, we wouldn't be reimbursing them. So this is a net new jobs that are brought by sons. Um, so, I have, I went through the file just so you can see what we paid out in the last four years. Um, so in 2016, they created 84 new jobs. Pay, we paid out $147,000. In 2017, 44 jobs. Um, incentive paid was $77,000. In 2018, 32 new jobs were created, and uh, CRA paid 56,000. And in 2019, 22 new jobs were created, and the incentive was 38,500. Um, SANS has come back to us that because of COVID and the negative impact that it's had to, for everybody in the economy, 
that they wouldn't be meeting their goal this year. So they they asked if the CRA board would re, would consider giving them a one year extension uh, to amend the existing contract so that as if 2020 didn't happen and moving it for and 2021 you know paying them how many new jobs uh, would be created. Um, CRA staff is in recommendation. They've been a great partner, um, and I I do believe the impact that they've had in bringing new jobs with a higher wage than average is very important. Um, my recommendation would be to, it, and it's only one year, again, taking under consideration COVID, um, that we do that, but I, I would recommend that we also put a cap as to what that amount would be. Um, because there's, now we're picking up in growth, that could mean three, 400,000 incentive if we don't put a cap. We don't know what that growth will be. So if you cap it at you know, so many new jobs, you know, or up to 150,000, 200, whatever you want to do, that would be our recommendation. And Jean is here if you want to ask any questions. Uh, any questions? I would like to hear from uh, the representative from yeah. Sons, if they could could uh, approach us and maybe give us an idea on what they potentially are looking at, just so that we're aware. Right. Yes. Would you like it wiped down before you speak? You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jean Raskin. I'm the Human Resources Director for Sons Insurance. And in speaking with Katarina, I just want to thank you for the consideration. As you can see, we've had four years of growth. Uh, we want to continue with that growth. Uh, and we had a five-year arrangement, so we are looking to, to, to keep the five-year arrangement. Um, we had a net loss last year. I know we're, I realize we, na we may not be the only company. Um, we are turning around for this year. We have no issue with uh, the recommendation. If you want to cap it, that's fine too. Uh, but we have greatly appreciated being in this area. We have updated our building we've uh, and we look forward to bringing more jobs to this area this is a great area for our business we're a property and casualty insurance company and um, we have increased our benefits to bring more people as well uh, we have adapted to COVID as many have we have gone remote partial remote uh, and that and that helps us to grow as well mm -hmm. How, how many jobs would you anticipate you could grow this year uh, under the best of circumstances? Under the best of circumstances, we are probably looking close between the 32 and the 44 That's what I number said. there. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. And would that be jobs of people located in your office building, or would that be remote and in the office building? Uh, it could be a, a combo of both, it, but it would be specifically for the Bradenton. So even if they were remote, they would be in the Bradenton area. Okay. It, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. That's my question. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> so, um, and I think what the main reason, Katarina, that we would want to cap this would just be for budgeting purposes? It would be. Okay. Okay. I'd recommend that we cap it at uh, 44. That yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's go crazy. That's you told you me want for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, do you need a motion? Yes. I'll make yeah. that motion. Second. You make the motion that we we give them the extension and extension and, yeah. and the cap it at 44 new jobs. Of course, if you want to go and get 40, 
45 or 46. Yeah, if you want to get 45 or 55 and come back to us, we'll, we'll entertain your. <laughs> I'll second that. Thank you. I'll yeah. second the motion. Okay, so we have a motion, a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Aye. Another question. Uh, these jobs are, what, what's the salary range on them? 41,000. The salary range can be anywhere from a entry level, which can be anywhere from 18 to $20 an hour. And uh, as an example, we're, we are hiring somebody to begin uh, with uh, next month and the, their salary is 180,000. So we, we have quite a span. Yeah. Uh, so you say on page two, um, we have, it, it says that an annual Average annual wage of at least 41625 That is correct. Which is, which is literally the family income for this community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, th th very good, very good. Thank well, thank you. you. We appreciate your, your, your business. Yes, thank and, you. and thank you for thank being here today so you could answer those questions for oh, us. Oh, sure. Thank you all for your time. So as we're going to be amending the contract so that we can make that one year extension, um, our CRA attorney firm has a conflict of interest, so we are going to need to, to use the secondary firm. So okay. um, do we need, without talking about this deal, but should the motion have been to authorize the chairman also to sign that, or do I need to bring it back at the I next meeting? Okay. Okay. Um, the second item under the Bradenton CRA also talks about SUN's um, 2020 Economic Development and Incentives Agreement. Uh, the only reason I'm bringing this, and that's the second, the TIF agreement that I mentioned. So one is that jobs creation that we just discussed. The other one is the TIF. Um, I made the calculations in order to reimburse them, and l so we, would, we owe them $15,390.45. In the budget, um, it's, f it's budgeted for 15000 So I have a little bit of a gap of $390.45. I just, before we put in the invoice to pay them, I would like to make sure if you're okay with me um, paying it before the end of the month, which is our contract, and then next month amend that budget accordingly to re reflect that. What's this for? You... This is for the TIF agreement with SANS. So when they came oh, in, they, they brought up, you know, they fixed the building, they made improvements. So we're, whatever increase taxes they have because Chairman of those improvements. They pay all overages like that. Actually, actually, this was a topic because it's it's a it's it's the large number. It's a three hundred nine dollar difference, and, yeah. and we had a discussion as to whether that needed to come before the board. And I said it probably, you know. Well, I appreciate you bringing it before the board so that none of us get blindsided by how come if it was supposed to be fifteen thousand, you paid fifteen thousand three hundred. Three hundred nine dollars. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, if you need a motion, yes, uh, I think the. The motion would be that we fulfill our obligation to the in the entire amount and request staff to bring us a budget adjustment uh, adjustment sorry the longer i wear these masks it's harder <laughs> for me to talk um to our next meeting so that we can bring the books into correct order i'll second that okay motion and a second all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. and opposed thank you and moving on to the central CRA business, an update on Lincoln Village. Um, Northstar, the developer, gave us a construction update. So the project is on track. Uh, as of now, 60% of it has been completed. Uh, buildings A and B have been primed and are ready for interior paint. All buildings are fully framed and insulation and or drywall are in progress. Well, uh, well installation was completed. Uh, paint mock-ups have been approved and they're going to be, this month they're going to be finishing the site work and schedule completion of new sidewalks, curb and equipment pads. And they provided us with some pictures and I love to see the progress yeah, from an idea coming to fruition. This is, this is really a great project. Yes, this is. came out so well. This is a closer 
last year's meeting, uh, you asked for a sign to be put up so that people in the neighborhood Sorry. would knew who to call and what to do, so this sign has been installed. How, is it just that one or? No, no. I think there are more than one. Okay. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Can't miss that. And that's it for me, unless you have any questions, comments, anything you'd like me to do, um, direction? Any comments, questions, suggestions? C can any? you look into the, uh, you mentioned it before, can you look into the uh, abatement program? Sure. Do you need permission from us to, to look into that? No, I, I, I'll research and then in March I can bring you. I know a lot of the tax abatements are being done out of CRAs, um, so I can look into examples and bring it for your consideration. We don't have to make decisions at the next meeting, but at least I want to present you with information. Yeah. Um, I was on that Zoom with, on that market analysis, the and uh, that was one of the questions I asked because I knew that that was going to be a good topic for us and asked her, where are some communities that are like ours? And she gave me a, a, a couple of that. places that, you know, why reinvent the wheel if it's working other places? So um, I, I would love to see from like communities. And they talked about Thomasville, Georgia, Deland, Florida. Um, Dunedin. That, yeah, Dunedin, uh, you know. So I, I, I just wanted to bring that up. Thanks. Thank you. And I think as anyone's running around doing anything, if any idea at this point at all, um, let's just bounce it off her. You know, mm -hmm. anybody can go to her at any time. It's like, I know I was driving around um, Ward 4 and saw something that uh, I, I spoke to our, our director about. I, I don't know if it's possible, something to look into, but, you know, as, as you drive around, if, if you see blight, it's like bingo, you know. Um, that's what we're looking for. Since we're over me, can you tell me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think well, it was your house. Right, it, it, no, it's better that we don't <laughs> announce <laughs> them <laughs> and that we won't. Why is it better them. you don't? I'm sorry? It's better we don't? Not. It would, it would be For any property that we're interested oh, in. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, because I, I, then. I saw a blighted property that it would be nice to see if we could acquire it. It would oh, be okay. best to yeah, keep that secret several. so we don't I'll get the with you up. and I could show you. I can show you more. <laughs> um, okay. Broken sidewalk. <laughs> show me yours, I'll show you. Um, all right. Uh, so, thank. Is there? Is, is that well, it that's for you? The end of my okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you staff. Um, doing a great job. What? I am so sorry. Um, the, as uh, the sergeant is here, I, I didn't know if, I know you, some questions came up about community policing. Um, the sergeant on his own said that he would like to start attending as much as possible the CRA meetings. Are you interested in that being part of the agenda to have a community policing update or? Sure. Sure. Yes. That'd be helpful. Right. Oh, he's always good. Yeah. Great. Be you want to be? <laughs> be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, let me just introduce myself. I'm Sorensen Engler with Brayton Police Department. Been with the uh, city of Bradenton as a police officer for going on 24 years. Um, I've worked in patrol, narcotics, detectives. Um, I was one of the first DDA officers, I guess, at the time, um, years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I recently transferred from detective supervisor back to the CRA stuff. Um, so it's all more officers, more stuff going on, bigger area to cover. Um, back when I started, it was just TDA. Now I got CRA and all these other areas. I do want to go over a few projects me and my guys are working on um, and talk to them about you guys. Um, you know, we have an ASV, that's our mark vehicle. We like to put it around in places with KB McGowan's big head on the back um, and some cameras inside. Uh, works well in some areas. Uh, right now we have it down on 12th Street, 
because we're dealing with some 12th Street, 12th Street issues with um, some of the bars. Uh, we were working closely with Paddy Wagons. They reached out to us. They experienced a few problems over the last few weekends. Um, I'm glad to say that the owner called us and said we need help. Um, we did work in a off-duty security schedule with them where they have officers there Friday and Saturday nights um, assisting with the bar crowds and assisting the security. Since then, they have had zero issues. Um, we, me and Officer Nuttle, try to meet with the owners and the managers uh, at least once a week to see what they need help with, what we think they need to do. Um, you know, some issues within the bar and stuff. It's been going good the last two weeks. Um, if you want a cocktail, I'll be there Friday night <laughs> from 9 to 3. Um, my guys try to cover it if nobody picks it off, picks it up on the duty details. So that's been going good. Um, Riverwalk, we're down with graffiti. I know. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, we have an operation in play now. I've been talking a lot with Ross Peterson. i um, been working some stuff with his guys. I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, but we're working on it. My biggest issue down here right now is the Riverwalk cameras. They're down. That's what I was ask. Um, especially around the skate park. I've been talking to Skynet back and forth. They were out there this morning. Um, as you know, those cameras all Wi-Fi ran from antenna to antenna, but with all the growth, the trees growing, it's interrupting the signals. My biggest area right now is the skate park. Um, they came out last week, got the cameras up, um, and within three or four hours, they were down again. So they came back out with the sales rep who's going to look at some numbers um, to get those back up. Uh, we need those cameras. Detectives need those cameras. When I was a detective supervisor, we used those cameras all the time um, to work cases, complaints, and stuff. It was a great tool when you guys put them in, but the cameras are eight years old. You have to salt water there. Uh, and they are taking a beating. Uh, I don't want to make Sergeant, this too long for you guys. Go ahead. Just a Questions? question. Just a question. Yes. Um, with those cameras, is there some sort of housing that we could put them in that they would be a little more protected from the elements as well as not as being like it's right there? <laughs> right. Um, there is housing. Um, they said it might be a little more pricier. Their recommendation is to wire them all in. Um, that would be super pricey. Um, but to get what we have going now, they want to replace a few antennas, replace a few cameras. Like, um, just for from a cop's point of view, you know, the river wall or the skate park, we're dealing with graffiti stuff. That camera out there is pan tilt. So it moves on its own, mm -hmm. you know, so I have Mr. Bad Guy sitting there spray painting mm -hmm. and then the camera moves, mm -hmm. then it comes back and Mr. Bad Guy's gone, you know, so we'd like to get steady cameras out there where it's always on the skate park and it's always, um, and that was some of their recommendations and we agreed with them. So they're running the numbers for me now. I'll get them um, uh, to Katarina. Is, yeah. is, it, is the reason they're going down all elements like trees and weather yes. or is it vandalizing? No, it's all elements. It's trees, electric, um, it's all Wi-Fi. When the trees start growing, you know, yeah. um, the antennas aren't reaching. Okay. If you know that um, antenna out on the dock where the camera is, the fish and beer, that's kind of like the main antenna. Mm -hmm. And all of them are going to that antenna, that antenna shooting to the PD. Well, that's where they're having a problem. Can okay. I? Well, yes, ma'am. Uh, I know that for the Riverwalk extension, we've budgeted money for that, and I would think that 
we would want to make sure it was all kind of coordinated into with you guys. I think that would be great if it's yeah. all coordinated. I love the fact that the new parking garage, same system. Um, I don't know what happened with the 12 straight cameras, um, but I know Skynet was talking about doing a proposal and I was a detective and I don't know what happened with it. Yeah. Would love, would love cameras. They never do it back up on 12th Street. Well, um, um, that was something I was going to bring. You're going to be busy. <laughs> well, uh, I, to her I, too. I think, I, I think you should, let's let's look at what it would cost to get the right ones in there because and the Braden CRA has a lot of money in it. Mm -hmm. And this is a legitimate expense. So. And I think as much money as we're investing, yes, we, we got to protect our investment. I, I agree. I'll right. Agree. I think I think with cameras down there, you're going to get less people, unwanted people, down there. But mm -hmm. just for example, two weeks ago, when my officers got into a fight at the Lost Kangaroo, and we were like, who itching the head? Mm -hmm. Cracked open his head pretty well. And, you know, if we had cameras out there, you know, it would be a lot easier. We had to investigate it off of cell phone videos that people sent us. and and cameras from the bars who most of the bars work with us some of them are kind of like hey we need video and two weeks later it's oh video covering over is no longer there so i think um it would be a huge asset for the city if we had 12 street cameras set up i don't know what happened to the project skynet said they were working on it and then it fizzled so hmm. that was before my time. I thought we did it. Uh, we are working with um, city landscaping, downtown Riverwalk. We want to do a polishing the park. The police department wants to put it on. Um, we reached out to Realize Bradenton, Bradenton Riverwalkers, uh, reached out to the schools and try to get some kids that need community service together. Um, April 3rd, spent about four hours walking through the park, um, picking up trash, painting, cleaning, um, doing like we used to do back in the day. You remember? I do. Um, and that's actually what brought this idea to me. Um, so we're scheduling that for April 3rd. Um, the grounds guys are on board. They're making us a list of stuff like Resanding the volleyball courts, um, doing some graffiti cleanup, you know, picking up trash and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to bring out our big grill, cook some hot dogs, some hamburgers. Mm -hmm. um, see, maybe we can get some food trucks and stuff out there. So we think it'd be a good community event. It's right near the end of the school year, so I'm sure a lot of college kids are going to be scrambling to get their college credits in. Um, <laughs> So that's kind of in the works right now. I've been working with uh, Ross Peterson on that. Um, we'll, we'll get flyers out to you guys soon. Mm -hmm. If you guys would like to come out and join us, bring your mm -hmm. kids. Thank you. I'm bringing my kids. I might bring my dogs. <laughs> um, I will not bring my cat. I she's bring she's my... not very hospitable yeah. in public. Poor mannered. Um, so we're kind of working on that. Uh, we're doing a lot with the homeless. Um, getting people out, uh, Thomas Grant, put him on buses, um, just took care of a family of four, got him a hotel, uh, for a week. Um, the guy was very appreciative. Um, Ken Reddy sent somebody last week back up to PA, um, to be with his family. So words coming, words getting out about that grant or funds provided for that um, big thing for me is uh, business trespass we're up to 219 businesses throughout the city a lot of them are downtown and the CRAs um, we're trying to do more operations to where the officers can enforce you know operations just for business people on business trespass uh, last operation we did was right before COVID I think we had like 28 arrests. We issued um, 100 and something 
trespass warnings to people on business properties who are part of business trespass. So um, for years, this program's been in play. Um, I try to get my guys to go out and sell it to the businesses. You know, we've got Manti County Bus Stop signed up for it, and they love it. Um, the patrol guys are out there all the time. The new bus place, um, you know, before they got in business trespass, it was a campground, um, and now the guys go out there and uh, enforce that. So, uh, I got that. Um, still working on parking down to Riverwalk. Um, we want, we would hope to have um, two-hour time limit parking around the skate park. As you know, we have our buddy in the red Explorer that parks down here and a few other vans. Um, we think if we can restrict the parking on the road there to two or three hours, um, that will help out with that issue. Um, another issue, we're working with Plaza Del Rio. As a matter of fact, after this, I'm going to put them on business trespass. I just got to give them their signs. But that city parking um, between Plaza Del Rio and the skate park, uh, we definitely need more overnight parking signs out there. I understand there's two out there. I get that, and I appreciate those two. But when you drive in there, you can't see them. Um, and it's hard for my guys to say when they know you can't see them, when they go out there to enforce it, and the guy's like, I didn't see them. We kind of got to agree with them. Um, so that's another project we would like to see um, worked on. Have you asked for that? Yeah. Do public asking. works? Been asking. Do public works? Um, not through public works, to uh, Katarina's been working on it for me and um, through the chief. Okay. So, I mean, you guys tell me. Well, it, it wasn't brought up at city council. I didn't know why it wasn't or the chief didn't bring it up, but uh, is there, I don't know if this, that's a CRA. It's in the CRA, yes. Yeah. Well, I think, as I recall, um, the chief talked about this as, uh, Okay. Needing, needing uh, several meetings ago. She did several, several meetings, meetings ago. That, that, that she needs happen. to have signs up, or that, that that we need to turn it into so ways of making it no overnight parking without saying. Correct. That. So you're like, saying you're saying you need, you need signs. Yeah, I would like to have more. No, right now. No. Make a list out of the signs you need. Yes, sir. Send them to me. Yes, sir. And I'll send them to Public Works. Okay, because like another issue was. Uh, we all know down to Riverwalk, we've been dealing with people sleeping under that pavilion by the children's playground. Um, it's in city ordinance, but there's a time limit. There's hours set on that playground in that pavilion, but it also says in city ordinance that it needs to be clearly posted. So um, that needs the be hours need to be. Okay, okay. Well, once again, once again, so there's no. This is just no. signage, which should be very easy to take care of through Public Works Sign Shop. Okay. So, as a councilman, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I'll request those signs to be, just make sure I know where exactly where they need to go. I mean, if we yes. need to put a sign, if if people are saying I didn't see a sign, then we need to have a sign for every single parking spot saying over there. Correct. Right. <laughs> that might be over here. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if, if, if we're having people At least, breaking the law and, right. and saying, and, I didn't know. You know, you got to understand, in the end, if one of my officers go out there with someone right. for us overnight parking, and there's two pounds of meth in his car, there could be a good chance that, that yeah. those drugs get suppressed and the motion to suppress. Right. Because, you know, the defense attorney can go out there and go, well, I don't see the park, no right. overnight park I, I see your problem, so mm -hmm. let's just fix that. I mean, even if we have to put them up right now and we can take them down later when the problem's solved, mm -hmm. that's, that's good, but we, signs are cheap. Agreed. <laughs> okay, uh, that's all I have, if there's any questions for uh, me. Yes, Jen. Yeah, um, two questions. First off, um, the Main Street merchants, are they still so, meeting? I mean, do they still exist? They do. Um, I don't think they're as active as they used to be. I talked to uh, Rick at Old Bricks. 
Um, I guess Pauly is now the president, um, but I don't think they've really done much since COVID. Okay. So um, I would like to see them get active again. As a matter of fact, I talked to the owner of Paddy Wagons, and he didn't even know about them. Yeah. So he's going to go and get with Rick and Polly and see if they can get signed up to. I, I think we have a budget. The merchants. For them in CRAs. So, I mean, if they're not meeting, you know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Kim. The number said it. The number that's budgeted is budgeted is for specifically for opening merchants events. Events. They they have a uh, they have a fee arrangement with the merchants, and I've heard there's kind of a split that some don't want, some don't feel like any organization, some don't feel their voice yeah. is being heard. And, Others feel that I'm not paying the money if I'm not, you're not going to listen to me and one of those type of things. I don't know if they can be <coughs> regrouped, but, uh, okay. but probably in the last year, you know, they don't really care because they're not having any events. Correct. I know, like, back in the day, they had, yeah, each bar paid a so certain much. fee to be, right. or each business to be in the merchants. Right. Um, and then we had all those issues with the old main and, they wanted to come in, and it was a whole lot of drama about my <laughs> my pay grade. I don't have one other question. Um, that gate at B Town Coffee was—I know when it was initially put in, it was supposed to be only locked at late at night. Right. And I see that thing locked at three o'clock in the afternoon on the weekends. Um, and it, I. I mean, it's been light out and it's been locked and you have to walk all the way around if you're parked back on the other. And I don't know who's in charge of keeping it. I don't know if it's B-Town. B -town. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know specifically when we did that, that was not supposed to happen, that it would be locked during daytime hours. So, KK, was that something that I documented on KK? I Okay, so if we if we can get that, I can. Open during the day. Okay. Yeah. You know, nighttime dark. You know, when yeah. the sun went down, mm -hmm. locked for you know public safety and, and mm -hmm. things because we did have issues. I mean, if we if we can find that, I don't have no issues sitting down with um. Yeah, that, there was a discussion owner. that it wasn't supposed to just be tied to be town coffees right. if they were closed or open. No, and and um, Mike Gold. Yes. No longer there. Right. Mike. So Mike left. I'm sure he turned keys over. Maybe that mm -hmm. is now the issue that. Okay. Perhaps a, yeah, a letter needs to be they sent reminding them. So um. If you want, I mean, staff and yourself can. Yeah, me. Letters. Yeah, my guys can go down there sure. and if, if we can pull it up in black and white because I like to show people hey, this is how it works. Oh, I know. Um, it's I'm sure it's many. You know, I'll take care of it now. Yeah. Okay. I can definitely look good. into that. Very good. That's it. All right. Um, any, any concentration on Ward 5? Anything hot? And you guys are. Um, so you got to refresh my ward. I'm used to zones. CCRA. 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 Yeah. Um, I think the biggest. Project Eric Williams is out there. Um, he just got done with Richard Chicken. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> okay. So you know how Richard Chicken had all the issues in the back parking lot there. We um, we got them on business trespass. Um, he's been steadily going out there, kind of helping out with parking and stuff like that. Um, We've gone out there a few times. It seems that the people hanging out back there have kind of stopped mm. hanging out. We are able to um, help the owner get some no parking signs. Um, and he put them up on the property, uh, which helped for a day, and then they stole them. <laughs> so, um, what happened to Mike? so that's 
that he's been working with uh, Brayden and Village a lot. Um, Sherry from Brayden and Village, the manager um, with stuff in there. But um, that's really. There's a there's a park. I, I think it's MLK Park um, off of MLK and Fifth Street around there. West, yes. Um, all times of day, some people are sleeping on the benches or hanging out. It's it just doesn't even look conducive, child fin friendly. I, I hardly ever okay. see any children playing in there. It's always some people hanging out. They sleep there and they pretty much stay all day. So I wanted to bring that to you. So attention. I will get my guys on that. Um, let me go out there this afternoon. Let me check for signage. Yeah. Might be sign. No signs. I don't think so. See, I and I think for ordinance, that parks on hours too. I would have to confirm that. I think so, but I'm not sure. Mm. Well, let me research it. Um, and if I need signage out there, I'll mm -hmm. add it to your list. Mm -hmm. And then I can have my guys. Mm -hmm. Go out there. Last time I was out there, there was that, that suicide. Yeah. Oof. Mm. That was bad. Mm. Um, yeah, we can take care of that. Thank you. Okay. Are the uh, skateboarders off the moon and the benches in, in downtown? I noticed we put some little pegs in there and then we put some benches around to keep Yeah, it so it looks like they've kind of lightened up with the, uh, up a little bit. Yeah, with the benches now. I've talked to a bunch of skateboarders. If you ever talk to them, they're really good guys. Yeah. They're just out there, like, um, I got, like, three of them down by the uh, bus stop uh, last week, and, you know, they were doing their hollies and whatever they call them off the stuff. And, you know, you sit down and you talk to these guys, and you say, look, man, it's people got to pay for this stuff. You know, you got a multi-million skate park down there, and um, they're pretty good about it. Um, I haven't really seen much of them down there. Um, their biggest complaint right now is the bull and all the graffiti in there. I've probably had three or four of them reach out to me saying, come on, man. They, you know, the workers last week did a phenomenal job cleaning up the graffiti in the bowl. And then literally hours later, somebody went and tagged it again. Is it, is it? Gang tagging, no. or is it? No, it's actually some pretty wonderful artwork, but oh. I can't. The skaters hate it. Um, they say when the sun comes out, it makes it very slippery. It does with their mm. skater vision when they do their turns. It messes with that. So. Um, is there a camera on there? Camera's not working. It's not right. working. Yeah. I know, but it doesn't yes, need, there is a camera need on. to be a camera on that yes. so we can catch the, the, t mm -hmm. the, yes. the people that are doing it and prosecute mm -hmm. them. And to tell you how good those cameras are, I had a kid a few years ago that uh, destroyed the bathrooms, remember? The bathrooms and outside graffiti. Mm -hmm. I pulled him off of our camera system mm -hmm. through his picture on Facebook. He said, mm -hmm. does anybody know him on the BPD Facebook page? Mm -hmm. And I had him ID'd within hours. Mm -hmm. um, went to his job, interviewed him. He confessed um, and arrested him. Okay. So, and the good thing about that is, arrested him, issued a trespass under the city ordinance, and he can't come back to the skate park for a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, that camera needs to be fixed. I currently have an operation going on down there now as we speak. Mm -hmm. Um, to try to get this guy, but the workers worked too hard, and hours later somebody came and hit it again okay. with some pretty inappropriate stuff. Hmm. You want to have fun? Ask them if they can do a backside fakie. Back. Backside fakie. <laughs> it's a skateboard trick. I always did a backside faking when you guys told me to come here. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, like, I mean, you, like you threw out Ollie. Just tell them they good. just missed you doing it too bad. <laughs> yeah, just say, hey, when, when you guys can do a backside fakie, come see me. Okay. Um, I just want you guys to know that we're here for you guys. Okay, so all right. If you guys ever need anything, you know, I'm a big chain of command person. So, you know, if you guys want to get with Katarina or the chief, who will get with me. Okay. You know. 
we'll come down, we'll come down. Um, uh, Katarina came and did a ride along with me. Mm -hmm. um, I invite you guys anytime you want. Yeah. Well, the you chief has kind of said she doesn't want us doing any kind of ride alongs until we get this COVID thing a little bit more under control. Fine. So just okay. just so you know, because oh, I've wow. offered, but I've she's kind of like, let's get it under control before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you're ready, we'll go out, ride around, get some lunch. Um, you know, I have no issues with taking guys around, showing you what we do. Okay. Thank you, sir. Will you get on the skateboard for us? I can. <laughs> Um, yeah, and something uh, Ms. Coker said that um, I was thinking with the, the downtown market study, what I, I, when I watched it, I kept hearing um, the recommendation, and, and I talked to uh, one of the, uh, I won't name him, but a, young, a younger fellow that uh, knows what we do down here and everything, and um, I kept hearing we needed some form of downtown economic development organization. I was thinking, like the Bradenton CRA, you know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, and so I, you know, it was brought up three separate mm -hmm. times as, mm -hmm. as, boy, if we could only do this, we'd really have something going. So do we need to, uh, do we need to put a banner on Main Street or something? I mean, what, because <laughs> that's, I, I know, well, no, and, it, and it was, and it was suggested, uh, Maybe, maybe, I don't know how we could uh, get it out there a little bit more, but since that was brought up as an issue, well, it's, there's, it's actually not an issue. It's already, there's already, there's been something since the 30 some years now. That well, and, and maybe there's some kind of, some way to identify all the things that have been brought about based on that. Yeah. Maybe now that we have a new logo, we should look at some sort of, uh, a sign, Permanent you know, brought to, brought to like, you by. Yeah, like like I showed you that. Brought, brought to you by your oh. <laughs> downtown economic development organization. Yeah. Another sign. <laughs> well, and personally, I think that. The guy spray painted on the garage. Yeah, the, yeah, we get the, Let's get. Let's round up that uh, tagger. The We're uh, graffiti have the guy. Sign shop. Pretty busy, aren't we? <laughs> no, I'm. I'm just thinking yeah. that the best way to do this is to get some of these projects started and completed, and make sure that. They're identified. They're identified. Yeah. Because that that you know is going to make the difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well. Uh, so, anybody else have anything uh, to bring up, or do anyone want to uh, suggest adjourning the meeting? Make a motion that we adjourn, sir. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Done. Okay. <sighs>
call on me. Welcome to the afternoon session of our regular commission meeting of March the 9th, 2021. We have a 1.30 time certain consideration of amending the 2021 legislative platform policy statement for emergency water treatment options at Piney Point. Charlie, I understand that you're the man behind the scenes on this. Charlie. I, I am the person very upfront uh, on this, yes. Uh, and I want to say, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this. This, of course, is a collaborative uh, presentation, really, that, it, that builds upon the record that has been before you for over eight months and the various meetings that we've had. We've made an effort to try to be transparent in information. Of course, there are, there are many companies out there that have, uh, have brought to our attention their technologies, their methods. Um, we, you heard a presentation from the county's own uh, consultant for Deepwell and a discussion about the, the merits of Deepwell. I, I want to say, if you recognize in any of those circumstances, uh, there was not really a staff recommendation that came out of that. It was our desire to let you know that these are the technologies out there. The last time you met as a board in, in work session, after hearing the Deepwell presentation about the facts of Deepwell, um, you, you gave contemplation to amending your platform. state legislative platform. And by doing so, uh, to, to indicate more clearly your preferences, your preferences for technology. Uh, and clear, clearly, so we were asked to bring back to you a comparison, roughly, and a, a very simplistic side-by-side -side, uh, assessment of uh, the technology of surface treatment or treatment with injection in an underground injection well in accordance with Florida statutes and rules. And so we've, we tried to do that um, with a very simplistic chart. Uh, recognizing that uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't a lot of time to, to prepare any independent analysis. There wasn't really time to, uh, to, to discuss these options further with people who do surface treatment or deep well injection. Uh, we made an effort to look only at the documents we had at the time we presented and provide this cross chart here. I will say that I've, I've, I've had some helpful comments from one of the, one of the companies who does surface treatment uh, in clear uh, technologies, and um, they have provided you a letter pointing out some of the shortfalls they believed in the in the side by side comparison. Some of them are valid. Um, I'm prepared to answer every one of those questions they have in on, on the record, but I, I won't go into that right now. Uh, I will tell you though that. Um, I want to make one more point of emphasis before we actually talk about what we're here for, and that is this is not a procurement process. This is not a competitive selection of technologies. We have a county ordinance to do just that. Uh, we, we follow state statutes to do just that. These have been discussions that you've had. These have been information that we've collected, and we we'll try to give you as simple as possible, you know, side by side. But to the agenda item itself, if you choose uh, to 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 assert a little bit more preference on technologies available to help the owner of this property deal with the problem. We provided you, I believe, in your agenda package a way to do that. And uh, I, I won't go into the uh, explanation of, of what you've been provided, what's been out there in the public for about a week and a half, uh, the considerations we made and the considerations you now can make. Uh, to decide whether or not you want to uh, amend the state legislative platform by stating a preference or not. And it's really uh, your task, your, your role, and your opportunity to take a look at what we've given you and discuss it further. So I will uh, stand down, and you can carry the conversation if you may, Madam Chairman, and we're available for any further questions on the basis of the agenda package. Commissioner Servia. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you, Charlie, for your comments. Um, I do, I'm looking at our legislative priority list, and I'm looking at the language for the Piney Point reserves, or reservoirs, rather. And so I have a question, as because that's all we're considering today, is whether or not we should revise this language 
Um, is, is there an advantage to making the language um, more open and less, less specific, or would that hurt Manatee County? Do we need to be as specific as we're, as we're being? Well, uh, yes, there's always a no action alternative. Because let me, let me read from you, let me read to you, if I may, since you all know, but what we're talking about here, for anyone else who doesn't have it in front of them, this is the current uh, legislative platform policy statement that you have adopted. If I, if I may, I'll just read it. Manatee County recognizes, no, excuse me, yeah. start that out wrong. Manatee County requests that the State Department of Environmental Protection prioritize efforts to properly and safely dispose of water currently in the gypsum stacks at the former Piney Point phosphate processing plant. Manatee County supports sufficient state funding to complete the closure of the gypsum stacks, allowing for treatment and the surface discharge in accordance with Florida statutes. Yes, th thank you. And that's exactly what I'm looking at. And so my question is, could we change the language so that the last sentence reads, Manatee County supports sufficient state funding to complete the closure of the gypsum stacks and then, and then delete the language up into in accordance with Florida statutes. That's correct. You could certainly do that, and that would be the guidance that would be sufficient as well to the state legislative process and sufficient direction to DEP that you are interested in tackling this problem in accordance with the law. I, my question is, and I, I would ask this of Will Robinson or someone like that, that if we, if we don't specifically say what our plan is to dispose of this wastewater, does that hurt our uh, chances of getting any money? Which we know in this year, if we get one or two million, uh, Will was telling me it would, it would be a good year because six million is probably not gonna happen. Um, so I just think that having broader language just serves the county better. We shouldn't have to make a decision until we are ready to make a decision. Yeah. Madam Chairman, I may, what you're, ask, what you're, what you're t asking the legislature to do is to, to tackle a problem, not how to tackle the problem. And uh, sometimes you know, better heads prevail on how to do the what. And... Uh, is, is perfect pu public policy at the local level to say, we need your help to solve this problem and look to you for the, um, the manner in which that is done. You know, and as long as we're revising the language, um, it, it's always easy to look back at what we've done and think, how could we do it better? But um, including some sort of sense of urgency in this matter because, you know, this has been going on for decades and we're getting to the point where we do have to solve this problem for the safety of the community. So, uh, well, yes, it does say in the legis in our legislative uh, application, emergency water treatment options at Piney Point. Okay, so that's there. Okay, Very thank clear. you. That's all I have, Commissioner Whitmore. Yeah, uh, with all the the information we've had, we've had um, presentations by someone that wants to do the surface water treatment. We also had a presentation about the deep well, so we've had both presentations on um, which, which direction hopefully the state will take. Again, the state makes the decision, not Manatee County, unless we want to own the whole project, which would be hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, there, when you looked at your comparison chart, um, and, and the DEP did send an internal memo, it wasn't a recommendation to the board, but we did get it the other day, that uh, you know, they had recommended the deep well. And if you look at the comparison chart, you could see why they would have said that. But then last night, all of a sudden, they sent us an email saying that um, they didn't have a recommendation. It was probably wise politically for them to say that um, so that we had something. Because again, actually, it's up to them. I don't know why uh, they even said that. It's up to them what they're going to do. We're putting six million. That's a drop in the bucket of what it's going to take to resolve this problem. <coughs> But what I did notice, and if you all looked at the comparison chart, which I know um, some of you I'm sure did, <coughs> there, there's a long-term cost on this. And if you think that the state's going to pay for this by themselves, and we're only putting $6 million, um, that isn't going to happen. But I think it's called, is it called the poor stack water, where there's water along the, the gypsum stacks that, you know, the surface water treatment, 
there, that you'd have to pay extra, or the state would. Um, the deep well, that, that would be included in the price. So you've got to empty like millions of gallons every year of water um, that are on the sides of this thing, and it's got to go somewhere. And I am not going to support it going into our bay. So, um, and I know you say that it can be treated down the line, but I remember the spill that we had in Bishop's, um, and I'm not going to support that. So uh, we, and I remember Commissioner Van Ostenbridge had said we'd keep kicking this down the road. Well, where we are today with the language that Com um, Commissioner Survey said is exactly why. Because we've had some that are adamantly against it, and it had stopped because no compromise. We're here today to do something. We are now receiving 50,000 gallons a day in our regular um, wastewater treatment because we're only a few inches from overflowing. That's not acceptable. So we need today to make a decision. We can't kick this down. I like the language Misty has. It's kind of the language we had before. And then, unfortunately, DEP got pulled into the politics, and that's where it stopped. Um, we have to go out for RFP no matter what we do, whether it's a deep well or the other. So even though NCLEAR's given us a, um, a presentation, I don't know about you guys, but I got a couple more people that sent me information, and I just referred it to the guys. It's not my job to be doing this. Uh, we have to do an RFP. We have to do this right. And, and actually, wouldn't it be the state doing an RFP, Charlie? I well, just thought of that. This is not our project. Let me, well, let me, let me clarify a few important points there, because it, it has been circulated, and, and we did, in fact, get a policy statement from the Department of Biomedical Protection. I'm the first to agree with her position. The position that is, as a regulatory agency, their responsibility is not to recommend a solution to an applicant, but their responsibility is to take an application, review it for its completeness on all points, and then decide whether or not that application meets the requirements of law. Florida statute, US EPA, and anybody else that comes together with that. Any regulatory agency, is that is their obligation. So it was perhaps incorrect for me to characterize <coughs> that, the, that the Department of Environmental Protection unanimously supports or wholeheartedly supports supports one option over another. Um, I, was, I would be mistaken to make that claim. I was only making reference to the, the public record we had uh, up to, uh, up to this, this point. Well, that's not but but it's, I agree. I agree with the EP. I agree with the, 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 the conclusion that it's probably wrong to say wholeheartedly recommend it. That's not their role, um, et cetera. Um, yeah. Poor water stack. I did, you know, I, with this pollen, with this pollen, I wash my car a lot. <laughs> and the analogy is, you imagine a bucket of water and a car wash sponge. And the bucket of water, you dump the water out, and now you have a wet sponge that's laying on the, on the driveway. Well, you can just step on it and force the water out, or the water's going to drain out of that sponge over a long period of time. A ridiculous analogy, but that's really what's happening at the stack. There's a bunch of water at the top that will be disposed of rapidly in a matter of years. There's also water inside the stack, like a water in a car wash sponge. If it's just left there to lay on a driveway, it's going to take a long time to dry out and drain down by gravity down your driveway. So that's what's exactly what will happen with this, this process. And they say it could be 40 to 50 years before this, the sponge dries out. And so that water has to be disposed of, too. That water has to be treated as well. And so we've had a lot of uncertainty going in as to what may, what may happen to deal with the immediate problem over the next two to three years? And then what, what do we do with the 40 or 50 year commitment that still stays with the, proper, with the problem over the long term? That's, that's what I was talking about, this poor or stack water. But um, you didn't mention the RFP. This is a DEP project, so who would be doing the RFP? I hadn't, hadn't thought about that till now. Yeah, well the money, as I understand it at the moment, in the legislative bill, directs uh, an appropriation to the Department of Environmental Protection to administer a program. And with our experience in the past, not on this problem, but on restoration projects and, and other Im improvements, the state then enters into a, an agreement with the local government and passes that money to the government, the local government, and, and whatever match they can provide. And they administer a program through us as the quote unquote contractor. And at that point, perhaps, we would follow a procurement process. Uh, we're not committing to a match. We're committing to a one time $6 million. 
this property this property is owned by HRK. This That's property correct. is under the auspice of the state of Florida. It, it is We're offering to give six million to get this thing moving down the road, correct? Well, I up won't to, ask you. That's a political thing. But up, up to six million. What yes. about the nitrogen discharge mitigation costs? I'm looking at this chart. I looked at it this weekend. If you did the deep well, there's none. If you did the um, surface water, no matter who you use, it would be approximately a million or more. And so I'm looking at these as a state paying. I'm not Manatee County. No. Um, the, I know you think, but I, I'm not going to commit to my taxpayers' money. I was a nurse in the ER when these steps, these, this, ha this accident happened, and I was in the ER when a county commissioner came in. Um, I know, Eddie Chance. Yeah, Eddie Chance. But, with, uh, he got exposed to all this. Actually, it was yeah, it was a it was an atmospheric di discharge while the plant was in operation. Certainly not that issue anymore. Um, but um, oh, go ahead. That's no, I just want to make sure that the board. I'm hoping um, we're giving the six million. We're getting giving a, a, a we're contributing six million. I want to know what the board's intent. Are we are we intent to to burden other um, county commissions over the next forty to fifty years to pay for this? Um, that's why Bill Clegg had warned us over the years, this is not our jurisdiction. This, we don't own this. It's under the state. And we'd, we're going down a slippery slope. I don't mind contributing $6 million to start something. But we have to, you know, are we, are we going to commit future boards? That's what I'd like to know because I don't think the future boards will like that. I don't think our taxpayers would like it. But I think they want to protect our water, but do they want to protect it by millions of dollars? That's all. Um, Attorney Clay. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Whitmore, I do think it's a little bit speculative at this point to say how this would be handled, assuming the legislature does fund something. The way that Mr. Hunsicker describes it, it could happen that way, but the legislature could instruct DEP to handle it differently, where DEP makes the decision or grants money to the property owner um, or um, it could be that even if the legislature is silent on that the department makes some decision about that so we really don't know yet until we go through the legislative process and the money is actually appropriated to the department right. exactly how it would be rolled out um, it, the, he, Mr. Hunziker is describing one scenario, but this is a complicated piece of property with a difficult history. It may not be treated like other situations. We just don't know until until we see what the legislature does. I, I certainly agree. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to agree with Commissioner Whitmore. I'll keep it pretty brief. I'm going to agree with what Commissioner Whitmore is saying and with what the attorney is saying. Um, the fact that we're so speculative is sort of the point, uh, Mr. Mr. County Attorney. Um, we don't know exactly what we're getting into, particularly uh, right out of the gate, but also if we were to go to filtration because of the amount of time that that would take. And I think that's what Commissioner Whitmore is referring to when she talks about passing this problem uh, and this financial commitment on to future boards. Um, yeah, I've looked into filtration. It's right now that does not seem like the best answer to me. Um, I think that it's too. There are too many question marks with filtration, financial, uh, and um, time commitment. You know, both of those are, are big question marks. And right now, I'm not ready to commit to that. So I, I would ask the board that I like Commissioner Serbia's verbiage, and that if we end up coming out of this with a vote, a hard vote on one solution or the other, I would like the language to be. Uh, this is our preferred solution. Uh, I think that if we use that type of verbiage, um, then we are making we're making a commitment, but yet you're always leaving yourself the out, right? And uh, so I think if we use that language, it does leave us the out, but it shows the state that we are attempting to commit for one thing or the other. Then there's also the question mark, short-term question mark of um, the fact that this property is in foreclosure, mm -hmm. and when the new owner or the, sorry, when the, uh, the lien holder takes possession, which is likely to happen, um, now we're dealing with a new property owner who uh, is going to have different ambitions and wishes and desires and also different abilities of their own to resolve this problem. Um, so 
I prefer to say this is our preferred solution. I do like Commissioner Servius' language. Uh, I think we should leave ourselves an opening because there are still some unknowns, but we're showing. I'd like to show that we are committed to a, resolving the problem and being a partner in resolving the problem. I, I don't want to take ownership of this, obviously, but I feel like to an extent, you know, we already have some ownership of it. We live here. We, this is our community. This is our, our county. That's our bay. And so, you know, we have ownership in this. If, if there is a disaster there, um, a big, a major breach, we own it then, mm -hmm. you know, whether you want to or not, you own it then. Um, so I, I do want us to act today, uh, but I would like to leave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room um, as things continue to, so that as things continue to play out, we can adjust. So thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any other commissioners on the board. Oh, I knew that would do it. Sorry. Commissioner Satcher. <laughs> I was going to um, ask the county administrator, would you see, um, could there be a situation where there's no advantage right now to uh, stating a preference? I mean, could, is there a scenario that you see where we might be better off to not throw in with one, you know, it's a fork in the road, half the legislature, your thoughts on that? Commissioner Satcher, um, I really don't know the answer to that. Right, you know, this her. is a, it's the board's determination about um, what, how they want their legislative platform to read. Um, so I would leave it up to the board to use the information that Mr. Hunsicker has provided and to determine how you would like to go forward with your legislative platform. Okay, thank you. I would, um, I would make a case that we're better off not to be too picky at this point. Once money is uh, dedicated, then we need to make a decision. Um, but it, this is not rocket science. This is two options, one or the other. I don't see, uh, you know, but both of those options get the water, the polluted water, out from over everyone's head, right? The whole community right now has, uh, has uh, toxic water above our heads. And either option takes care of that. There's uh, pluses and minuses to both, but I don't see why uh, we need to make that decision right now because, uh, because some of the legislators may, I could see them more likely to vote against us if we've already made that decision because there's pluses and minuses to both sides. So I would just like to uh, put forth that I don't see where the benefit is at this point and of course, this could all become a moot point. We could have, the, you know, the, the governor could veto it, the legislator could not pass it, um, and then we have to make some decisions on our own, what we're gonna do, and, uh, and that is with the caveat that we didn't create this problem. Um, but uh, it does affect our citizens and our uh, wonderful place to live. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. Well, unfortunately, I agree with you. I mean, I agree with you, Commissioner Satcher. But within, since last night, we got a letter from DEP, and I don't think they did that on their own. I think somebody made a few phone calls. I don't know who. Um, I don't know if they're from state or whatever. So <clears throat> maybe I've got a little bit skeptical about that. So, it, you know, um, unless you, in the letter you wrote, surface or deep well. I mean, I would just, I mean, I agree with you, but we have to make a decision because, um, just within 24 hours, we got a letter. Oh no, we don't have any opinion. How? I mean, how does the state even know that what was in our backup? I mean, they wrote it, but so I, I think we need to firm something up. We we don't have an opinion because they're going to do it. They're going to pay for it. But I don't know. Um, you know, is it just me or did you all notice all of a sudden we got a letter last night? So uh, I'd like to hear what are the other commissioners' thoughts on that because. I'm just trying to figure out a way to get it to Tallahassee, ta let them take our six million, hopefully the governor will approve this after all that's going on, hopefully he will, and we'll start somewhere. We'll have $12 million to start somewhere, whatever they decide. Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I did receive the letter. I am not surprised that they said that. I think we're mm -hmm. a little bit of a chicken in the egg or maybe just a game of chicken here. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're sort of kicking it to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have, they would don't have an opinion right now. I promise you as soon as, you know, 
push comes to shove and they have to pony up with some money, they're going to have an opinion. They'll do the deep well. Right, they'll yeah. have an opinion very quickly. This is cheaper. Um, so, and, and to go to what Commissioner <coughs> Satcher said, um, I think that my suggestion, Commissioner Satcher, sort of plays right to what you're saying. I, I think that this board needs to continue the forward progress and that we need to say, you know, we are leaning this way or this way. And that's why I like the verbiage of our preferred option is this. So we are stating a preference, but we're also not digging our heels in. Okay. It, yeah. Would DEP come back and have a different opinion and say, no, the only thing that we will do is this. Well, I still want their money. Right. I still want them to participate. And I still want them to, you know, to be essentially want the liability with DEP. Um, that's the main okay, what we're ahead. after here. Um, and then ultimately, I think we still want this. We also want the same thing up here. We want that water gone. We just can't snap our fingers and make that happen. Uh, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. We have two difficult, uh, you know, selections. Two different, two difficult options. Uh, neither one. We're gonna lose, lose, Commissioner Satcher. <laughs> that's what that's what you call this. That's uh, true. You know, the medicine does not taste good. Uh, but I do think that we should come out of this having moved forward for one option or the other. Um, at, at this point. I have been satisfied with the present, with the due diligence that I have done and the presentations that I have witnessed uh, that a deep well does not pose a risk to our drinking water. I've seen two separate aquifers and hundreds of feet of impermeable clay uh, that separate the two. So, you know, without getting into the de too many details, I am comfortable. I wouldn't say I'm comfortable. I have made the decision in my head um, that the deep well is the direction that I think we have to go. It's not that I want to do it. I'm not by any means jumping up and down excited uh, that I'm going to likely vote for a deep well injection. Um, but I think it is the best decision in this difficult circumstance. Um, but I'm also okay with saying preferred option um, and leaving the window open. So thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I, I think we need to make a decision one way or another, and you can soften it up however someone wants to put the word preferred or whatever in there, but part of what we're trying to show, I mean, our legislative priority is, is not legally binding <laughs> by any stretch. Right. Honestly, they, it, it's just, they're not going to read that and say, oh, we were going to give them the six million, but they want to go this way, so forget it. You know, it, it's, I think all it's showing, and the most important thing it's showing is we've spent years and years and boards and boards what? debating this back and forth. If we don't have enough information at this point with these seven people to make some decision, then who's going to give us $6 million? What, they're going to give us $6 million bucks and we're going to spend the next 18 years debating one way or the other? I mean, I think what we're showing is we're serious about this. We've done our diligence. We're ready to go. This is the decision we've made in terms of how we'd like to see it done. They may go a whole different direction, but part of this is just projecting to them that we're done. We've had all our discussions, we've watched all of our presentations, we've all been on our tours and, and spoke with everyone, and we are comfortable moving forward in one direction or another. They may, again, elect to do something different, but I think that's what we're trying to project here. And just softening it, saying, we'd like you to get rid of our water, can we have some money? It's like, all right, now let's start this discussion. Uh, we're done with this discussion. We, if you don't have enough information and you haven't done enough research to pick one of two options at this point, then we never will. So I think that's what we're trying to get to here. So I, I'm 100% on board with, we just, it's two choices. Vote for one, vote for the other, right. based on the information. And you can soften it however you want, but I think that's what we need to do today is just let them know we're done. We're, we're capping our side of it. Now it's, it's on you, state of Florida. Everyone, get us the money so we can move forward. So make a motion. Commissioner Servia. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I don't I don't disagree with anybody. Uh, great comments, but I I fall back on don't make a decision until you have to. We do not have to make a decision on one way versus another to ask for the six million dollar appropriation. Um, technology changes quickly. You know there was a time when the board considered this problem and there wasn't Did the option well. to clean the water. Okay. And who knows what the future holds? There might be other options. It may become less expensive, more expensive. So if we don't have to make a decision today to ask for $6 million, I don't think that we should, but I'm willing to if that's what the board wants to do. And as Charlie said, um, you know, regulatory agencies like DEP don't 
make a recommendation until they have all the facts. And they, ne they never do it before an application's made. It, think about, um, and you know, as a planner, I think about going to a pre-app, and there are so many caveats in a pre-app, you know, well, what do you think? Will the board approve it or not? You know, uh, sorry, they can't answer that because they haven't seen the application, they haven't reviewed all the matters, they haven't, you know, done their due diligence. And that's what DEP is saying. We don't have all the facts. So it's not that they're, you know, they're, I think they're just being very professional and what they've said. Um, so I, my opinion is that we should um, reduce the few words in the last sentence to say we're gonna dispose of it in accordance with Florida statutes. But if this board feels differently and you wanna pick one way or the other, uh, I'll accommodate that too. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. Um, I agree with Commissioner Van Osterbridge and Commissioner Cruz. We need to hone down today. We, we committed that we would. Again, we're not going to be kicking the can down the road. We had it before that was we preferred a deep well um, at the last, um, the, our last legislative platform after we heard all the facts. And then, you know, it went awry. But what about if we um, throw in just like um, we prefer a deep well but are willing to support any DEP recommendations? That's more or less what you're saying, right? I mean, because like um, Commissioner Van Ostenburg said, it, they're gonna make the final decision. But if you don't support the deep well, then don't um, vote for that motion, this motion, because it also, it, um, it opens it up for other options, but DEP's gonna make the final decision. And that's what more or less you're saying, because I agree, you don't wanna just say we prefer this, but you know, we are of course gonna support you on whatever you recommend. But this is what we looked at and we preferred. Madam Chairman, maybe maybe the county attorney could help me with this, but again, I don't believe DEP will make a recommendation. They will receive an application and review it in accordance with state law rather than help decide. So we're uh, going to approve something on a property that we don't own, that they own, and somebody else owns the property. It, and we're going to make that recommendation and take that liability? Or is Manatee County going to take liability of recommending what we're going to do? I, I was only attempting to clarify what DEP may, may take action in this regard, but I Then we own base. it. Madam Chair, Commissioners, the honest answer is I don't know. Right. I don't know how it, will, how, it, how it might happen. It depends on how the legislature appropriates the money. There are a number of different ways they could do it. Yes. I don't see anyone else on the board. Commissioner Bellamy, why don't you weigh in on this? Yeah, so what I'm listening to, <laughs> to uh, Mr. Well, I mean, Chair we're KBO. trying to where the board wants to go, so I, I just want to hear from you. Well, to, to me, where I am, is just, just listening to everything, I'm like, George, we need to make a decision whether we go up or down. Um, but I have the same concern as, I mean, are we going to stick the future board members with a, a bill? And I don't even think that's any of our intent. I think our intent is to get something started so we can show our constituents that we are striving or we are attempting to address the issue. Um, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago when we did the presentation, when the, when the surface water treatment came up, I was like, oh, that's, that's something new. Mm -hmm. um, I actually thought, um, based on some, some of the strides that was taken by the chair and some of the um, information that had came down, uh, from I think um, Mr. Robinson, that we were going to stay within the deep well injection, um, and, and I thought that's where we were. And um, actually, that's kind of where I am, to be to be honest with you, unless something changed. But just like George said, if we don't have it by now, we're not going to get it. Right. We just need to make a decision. So I'm, I'm ready to make a motion to say one or the other and just vote it out and, and hear from public comments and go from there. I don't think we complicate this. It's, it's, it's convoluted, it's, it's as difficult as it is. I don't think we um, complicate it anymore by going back and forth, tossing verbiage and things like that. Make a decision. I like preferred. I like preferred. It, it gives us some options, but just like um, Commissioner Cruz said, it's, 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 uh, it's our legislative platform, but it's not a binding contract. Right, exactly. we, we have the opportunity to take and come back, the same seven of us, and say, hey, maybe we need to look at this with a different focus lens and go in this direction. I don't think we drag this out. 
Um, that's why I sit here and listen to a lot of it. I mean, we go back and forth in, in, in the brains, you know, go to moving around, but I think we need to make a motion and then hear from the public and then go from there, to be honest with you. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'm gonna defer to the county attorney here for, for wording and verbiage, but I'm gonna make a motion that we adjust the legislative platform to read that this board prefers the deep well option. Second. So, Madam Chair, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, there are, there are choices in your agenda item for a deep well or a surface water treatment option. And I believe option Page, uh, A. Page 9, 945. Yes, the suggested motion A is I move to amend the 2021 state legislative platforms, platform statement for the emergency water treatment for Piney Point to specify the county preference for utilizing underground injection well technology and to convey this information to Manatee County's legislative delegation and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Is that satisfactory? That's or the do you spirit want to of modify my that. No, that, that's the spirit of my motion. I, I hope it will be nothing that wordy because you'll lose them two sentences in. That's but, a lawyer, so. Right. <laughs> well, this was written by staff. I know, well, right, so that's, made it wordier. That, I could have. <laughs> but, but I think you're just moving suggested motion. Correct, ahead. correct. Yes, that's the spirit of, of right. what I, my intent. So, yes. Uh, as read is my motion. Yeah, second. All right, we have a motion and a second, and before we go to the vote, I need to open public comment, and I do have several cards. Um, when I call your name, come up, give us your name, and you'll have three minutes. Cynthia Zarzano. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank God for lunch break, huh? Gives it time to reset. Um, Ma'am, could you please state your name for Cynthia, the record? I'm, I did. Sorry, Cynthia Zorzano. Um, there's something I would like to share with you guys because you find you guys are in a very delicate situation, especially today. Um, but I, I just want to make sure you're clear on the position that you do find yourselves in. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, and that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servant, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Destroy them which destroy the earth. I want you guys to understand that clearly. That comes out of Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. One of the reasons why I'm not real up on the whole terminology of what's going on here today is because I spend more time reading what's really important. Um, there's another I want to share with you. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. God's, this is God's plan, this is God's earth. He created everything in it. We are to be proper stewards of what he blessed us with. You guys, I don't envy your position at all. I really don't. But do you really, do you really understand what position you are in? And why are you not working with your surrounding counties, the counties that find that are going to find themselves in the same situation that you find yourself in today, being DeSoto County, Hardy County, Polk County, Charlotte County. Charlotte County is the recipient of your decision, the Commission Board of Polk County. They are the recipient of the decision of DeSoto County, and we can't do anything about it. This is, my county is Charlotte County. I live near the water. I have to breathe in the red tide. I have to re breathe in all the poisons that you guys are talking about dumping into my harbor. So while you're making your decision on what to do, why don't you share the predicament you find yourself in with your comrades and your constituents of the neighboring counties? 
Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, next is Michael Zarzano. State your name and you'll have three minutes, sir. Good afternoon, County Commissioners. My name is Michael Zarzano. I am here on behalf of the Florida County Congress, a Citizens Grassroots Oversight Committee. I'm here to serve you notice of liability and your failure to perform due diligence. That's right, I'm here to serve you lawful notice of liability for your failure to provide due diligence. Clearly, you are in a dangerous situation. Uncertain and unchartered are the waters. No pun intended. There is no need for a decision today. You've not performed your due diligence. Thereby, you create a liability. Dilution by pollution or pollution by dilution. That is the proposal that I'm hearing. I am also here to warn you for your liability that if you insert or inject millions of gallons of highly toxic poisonous wastewater into the lower aquifer, you are threatening the destruction of a well in eastern Sarasota County that has readings of purity and volume that are off the charts. This recently determined well has capabilities of supplying millions of people in the southwest Florida area with highly medicinal quality water. And if you inject this water into the lower Floridan, and by the way, this well is around the 2,000 foot range, give or take 500 feet, you stand the chance of destroying a pristine historic aquifer that has readings that are off the charts medicinally. We will provide you the evidence for this well and, and the facts surrounding it. But I'm here again to warn you of your liability of failing to perform your due diligence. Please do your job of due diligence. Pollution by dilution is not the answer. Are you really thinking about dumping millions of gallons of poison, toxic wastewater into the lower aquifer? You have no idea where it's going to end up. You cannot honestly say where that water will end up. Thank you for your time, and I urge you to consider a plan that is not dangerous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next is Tim Ritchie. <clears throat> well, good afternoon, commissioners. <clears throat> My name's Tim Ritchie, and I'm a resident of Charlotte County, and I am the citizen water czar and founder and president of March Against Mosaic. In 1966, Piney Point opened, located next to a rail car line to Port Manatee, an ideal location for receiving and shipping finished products phosphate fertilizer products. And they create a byproduct that is called phosphogypsum, which is radioactive. It's a 400 foot tall, giant radioactive stack. Piney Point has no liners. Isn't that wonderful? Seepage into the ground. Then it turns into saturation of the land and the air. It's windy today. Radioactive sand dust flying all around from the top of the gyp stack. Today is a very important day in Manatee County. 
This decision affects not only Manatee County, but it affects every citizen in the state of Florida. We're talking about a problem. What are we going to do with this radioactive, blended, acidic wastewater? First solution is we will no longer be issuing any more NPDES permits to Mosaic or any of those type of companies. FDEP, I know John Coates, I know Vishwa Soth. I went through an administrative hearing, case number 202569, the Mosaic Bartow Chemical Plant, modification and renewal. You remember those words, renewal and modification. They went from 2.6 million gallons every day into the Peace River up to 27 million gallons. That's the first step, everybody. And I wanted Mosaic to build a giant industrial wastewater plant to recycle this water. I would highly recommend we go with the one solution of NCLEAR and get that water to be cleaned. But we're not going to put it back into the rivers anymore. We're not going to discharge any more waste into the rivers because that's what we live on. It's the most valuable commodity in the world. It's worth more than all the gold and platinum in this world. It provides us life. We do not want injection wells. I would like everybody to understand this affects everybody. And since I know that the governor, DeSantis, who I voted for, is behind this, and I know you were in Polk County the other day, governor, it's time you address mosaic fertilizer. Florida's number one environmental polluter. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Anyone else from the public want to come forward on this topic? If so, come up, give us your name, and you'll have three minutes. Not seeing anyone. Uh, Seth, phone calls? Yes, Madam Chair. 445. 445, please press star six. Good afternoon, Glenn Jabalina, for the record. I must be missing something here because I think the legislation has failed Manatee County catastrophically. Let me, let me understand this right, that nobody's, we haven't had this problem anywhere in the state. I'm big on numbers and best practices. Out of all the Egyptian stacks out there, we're the only ones with this problem. I don't believe that for one second. And I would leave your options open to everything because EPA might say, we're not going to take either one of them. So, so why would you limit yourself? So let me ask some of the commissioners that went out to Mosaic, when you were out there, did you ask them, hey, if Piney Point was under your umbrella, how would you fix it? You guys are the experts. I don't see Mosaic at the table. They're part of the problem. They should be part of the solution. As far as the money is concerned, let me get this straight. We're going to invest maybe $6 million dollars on a piece of private property that we're going to go on and pump or injection well into there, and we're not going to have a lien on the property, I think Attorney Clegg needs to get a hold of the bankruptcy and say, we want to get in line here because if there's anything left over, we have to do due diligence for our taxpayers to do that. So I haven't, I haven't heard anything in that, in that direction. And I, and, I, and I do know about that deep wet old wall in Sarasota. Has, it, has we have any geologists that, that can clarify that if we go down that deep, that might, that might be cleaner water than we're getting now. And you want to pollute it. Have we done any studies in that direction? That's what I'm asking. So I would think that the legislative, should, you know, they, they come down and say, oh, uh, we're going to give you some matching funds, but you figure your own problems out. Are you kidding me? They should say, we've got Polk County, DeSoto County. We've got catastrophic failures throughout, and here are the best practices. Instead, they throw you under the bus and tell you to figure it out yourself. And by the way, we may not even accept that either. That's the insanity of this whole part. So I'm not, I'm not in favor of, of, of rushing ahead. I think we need more exploration into the deep well and see if that is cleaner water before we want to poison it. And uh, there, are, there are better solutions out there. And I would suggest strongly to get in line with the bankruptcy if we're going to go in and spend any money. And you're right. 
you're not you're not in a position to add additional funds to commissioners that come up behind you. That's not your that's not your role in the government. And I would I would suggest that there's best practices out there. You need to do your homework. I can't believe they, they threw you under the bus and tell you to figure it out. There are a lot of people out there a lot smarter than me and this board that's entrenched in the phosphate industry. Mosaic claim is, oh, we'll just dump, dump a couple of hundred million pounds of concrete into the sinkhole. Anyways, there's my time. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Any other callers, Seth? That's all, Madam Chair. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and pl uh, close public comment. Commissioner Whitmore, did you want to make a yeah. comment before we vote? Charlie Hunsicker, where are you? I just want some of these questions addressed. We have done our due diligence. I've been on the board since 2006, and we've been talking about this issue for at least five years. It's actually in 14 I asked to have it um, put on the, I mean, in 17 I asked to have it put on our legislative platform to get some kind of resolution. But the geology, um, of phosphate. That is, um, you know, at one point Sarasota and Manatee County were one. Manatee County was Sarasota and we split off years ago. What's the geology? Uh, is there any phosphate south of here? Were you on the board when that happened, Commissioner Whitmore? And, yeah, I feel like it. it no. no. <laughs> this guy right here, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, why I'm in this little glass case. <laughs> Geologists for a long time have discussed the Bone Valley Formation in Florida, which is what? Ex the, the geologists of Florida have discussed the Bone Valley Formation in Florida, which is resplendent with extractable phosphate. Uh, there is there is phosphate in many locations throughout Florida where it's not economically feasible to extract the phosphate and make a profit uh, in, in any market. But within the markets that we've operated around, around the United States and around the world, uh, phosphate can, has been mined uh, as far north as northern Polk County. There's also some phosphate mine up in White Springs. There's phosphate mine off the shore of North Carolina. But in Florida, um, the mining is, is confined to a, a generally circular area covering six to seven counties, including Manatee, DeSoto, Charlotte, as parts of Sarasota even. <coughs> but as, as, as we proceed southward, um, the economics uh, do not pan out. Okay. Uh, so the most the most economical phosphate was located, uh, no secret, in the late 1800s around Polk County in the streams, and uh, mined there. But I also want to say something about uh, phosphogypsum. Uh, Mosaic never had an ownership interest in this property. What uh, all these glass things? I can't hear yeah. you. I'm sorry. Mosaic never had an ownership interest in the Piney Point property ever. Okay. Uh, but um, it is one of the few. No, it is the only. Uh, phosphate stack that has no mining interest owner that can help solve a problem such as that. And I'm sure Mosaic would be able to answer the question what to do if they had ownership of this stack, but they're not in the picture. Okay. Um, I want to also clarify something that, that geologists do know and groundwater hydrologists do know. The water along southwest Florida moves from east to west. It doesn't move it's to east. It doesn't back up. There's no capillary movement. It is a gravity-driven system that moves east to west. Where Piney Point is located, um, only thing west the is Gulf. the Gulf of Mexico. And that was one of my comments. I know we're going at, down a little over 3,000 feet. At 3,000 feet, none, like nonetheless. Like 20 miles out in the Gulf, and I'm not sure how many years until it starts. Well, even then, uh, the depths of 3,000 feet in the Gulf of Mexico are far further than 20 miles. So it's, we have to do our due do diligence. Um, we've done our homework. We, Piney we have. Point does have a liner, correct? It has a no. It does twice not, now. I, uh, yeah, I just it has had, a liner at the surface, at the top. It does not have a liner at, at the base. Okay, uh, but it has it was, one at the top. It does. Phosphate uh, stacks now are built with liners under current rule. When that was constructed in the 70s, uh, the rule did not require a liner, and this, this does not have it. We're just trying to address the actions that happened in the 80s with this. But one other question, surface water treatment that somebody mentioned, NCLEAR, or any surface water treatment company that you use, it eventually goes to our bay, correct? It, it directly goes to the bay. There, it, it doesn't goes get to Bishop Harper. They were saying it didn't, and I, I've been doing our homework and yes. our research, and it does go into the bay, and that's what I'm trying to avoid, and to go into Bishop Harbor. What And what's... What will, be, what, will be, what will be minimized with surface treatment will be its impact on 
the environment of Bishop Harbor or the environment of Lower Tampa Bay if it's discharged through Port Manatee, which is the current plan, uh, if that's to, to ba does. base. But there will still be a residual effect in the sensitive, shallow, tidal environment of the coast with that type of discharge. We don't know what it is. We do know that when emergency discharges did occur three years, like four or five years ago, yeah. we saw an immediate response in the blue-green algae and the impacts in Bishop Harbor. Uh, and you may want to say our nitrogen loading, we have an agreement with the, if you explain that, I mean, that's why we don't want this kind, these kind of products to go into our bay. We're, we're belong to the consortium. That's correct. We have, uh, surface treatment can reduce the nitrogen load to 0.6 to 0.9 tons per year, I think that was. Uh, they're currently HRK property owner, currently has a permit for that level of discharge, but no more. This would be an additive. This would be what they're discharging now and then added. If we did surface If we do surface treatment. And that is why we have said that there must be an mm -hmm. offsetting right. action on the land to offset that additional delivery of nitrogen to Sarasota Bay. Um, the, there, there are real consequences there as well. Okay, but, um, thank you. I wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to be clear that there's a lot of, there is a lot of valid concern about where the water goes and how it behaves at these depths, uh, <coughs> but it is undisputed that the water moves east to west on that. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Servia. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and, and thank you, Charlie, for the continuation of the facts. Um, I want to say to the public who came to speak, thank you. I always appreciate hearing from the public. I appreciate that you drove so far from Charlotte County. And I, I also want you to know that everything that Manatee County does, does, we do it with a regional focus. You know, we're in constant communication with our uh, surrounding counties and the, and the counties throughout Florida. You know, we're a member of the Charlotte County Estuary Program. We have a representative who is there. So, so please know that we're not operating in a vacuum. Um, you've heard some of the due diligence that uh, we have done. There's been a lot over years. So please know that we have done our homework. Um, my fear is that there will be new things that we're not aware of today. You know, and so that's why I wanted to, I didn't feel there was a need to make a decision today when I think that we should always make a decision when we have to. Um, but having said that, we do know uh, what the risks are with deep well injection. We don't know all of the things that are associated with the surface water discharge, as you just heard Charlie say. And as a native Floridian, you know, I, I just want to give you assurance that every environmental decision that I make is always with protecting our natural resources and our waterways in mind, always, every decision I make. So thank you for being here. All right, I don't see anyone else on the board, so we'll go ahead. Um, Madam Clerk, can you repeat the motion, please? was made by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge to amend the 2021 state legislative platform statement for the emergency water treatment for Piney Point to specify the county preference for utilizing underground injection well technology and to convey this information to Manatee County's legislative delegation and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The motion was seconded by Commissioner Whitmore. All in favor of the motion, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. The vote is uh, six to one, with mm -hmm. Baugh dissenting. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we'll move on from there. We'll go to um, Commissioner Comments. Why don't we go ahead and start with Commissioner Servia? I like this. I get to start every meeting with Commissioner Comments first. Not, okay. It's okay. Your tone setter. So that yeah. she's saving the best for last. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> it. Well, I always come with my list, so. 
Um, and I want to start with the 8.30 um, time start today. That We started our meeting early to go through the proclamations and um, employee of the months and all of those things. We're going to try and do those in a little more efficient manner by starting at 8.30. I know it's the first time we've done it. I will ask that all commissioners please be here for that. Um, the people who weren't probably forgot. So um, just please, I think it's important. It's not that it's... It's, um, it's information that's uh, not less important than the rest. It's certainly very important. Um, on this past Sunday, March the 7th, I was part of a uh, building dedication, the Harbor Life uh, Church, which is in my district. Uh, John Barnott was there as well because he helped them to get through the process. As I heard, he helped them a great deal. Um, so welcome to their church. It, uh, it is largely... Uh, uh, ministered well I shouldn't say that John Jonathan Bruce is a minister he certainly was a project manager former commissioner Jonathan Bruce who who helped to get them off the ground and then his son Ben Bruce who has been here uh, to say the opening prayer with us is the music pastor there so um, very nice church on 63rd Avenue um, I met with the sheriff yesterday and um, we discussed what's happening in District 4, and you already heard my comments on the homeless. Um, I also received an update on the massage parlor ordinance that we adopted last year, or maybe now it's two years ago, I don't remember exactly. And that was one that I championed because I have the largest number of massage parlors in my district. Um, Yes, it looks like Mr. Van Ostenbridge wants to say something. Well, I'm just curious, how did that? How did the conversation with him go? Because I brought it up when I spoke when I met with the sheriff maybe two weeks ago as well. And so, like everything, um, COVID has has set them back. Oh. You know, COVID has set everything back, and um, and the massage parlors were not essential businesses, and so they were shut down. The sheriff uh, would go around and, and tell them they had to close when the governor uh, was only allowing essential businesses to be open. After, um, after the businesses, all businesses were opened, um, they just didn't see the uptick in business, maybe because there are still COVID concerns, but they do expect that's gonna change and uh, they are ready to do the work that we once talked about, which is to help us to control the illegal activity there. Um, the sheriff has just been fantastic and his deputies in helping me with the US 41 pool hall and the Onico Rose package and bar business. These are two businesses that cause the adjoining neighborhoods a lot of pain because of noise and cars in the parking lot and drinking in the parking lot and uh, drugs and other illegal activities that are happening. But I'll tell you what, the, the sheriff has deputies constantly patrolling and trying to help to control uh, those businesses when they get out of control. And, and I can't say enough about the US 41 pool hall owner. He's been very cooperative. The sheriff tells me just extremely cooperative and has done anything that they, he was asked to do. Uh, the Onico Rose business, uh, we are looking at posting some signs that say no loitering. And hopefully that's gonna um, provide just more teeth to, um, to enforce you know, asking some of the people to leave when they're hanging out. Um, I can't uh, not take this time to thank Karen Stewart and all the directors and the staff for their continued hard work. Karen, you are doing the job of three people and you do it still with a smile and so organized and so professional and all of your staff is doing just a great job. So. Thank you for continuing to help us during these difficult times. Um, April 27th, if you guys remember, I invited you to the Feeding Tampa Bay um, drive-through food distribution at DeSoto Square Mall. Each of you now has a, um, a little volunteer application to fill out if you are still interested. I think six of you are interested in serving. Um, please do so, please fill that out so we can send that over to Feeding Tampa Bay. Again, I see this as a real team building activity. Not only are we gonna be helping the community, but you know, when you get out there and you start working together as a team, you get to know people on a different level. And, and that's what I really want for this board because 
Um, I think that we're all really good people with the same sort of mission, and we need to understand each other a little more. So I hope you'll all join me out there. Um, Pop-up or pop-up uh, vaccine clinics. You know, we've heard that term recently because it's being used for COVID vaccines. But have you thought about a pop-up vaccine shelter or vaccine uh, pet uh, clinic? Yeah. Because that's what Sarah Brown right. is working on. Right. And I've talked to Sarah Brown about bringing that to District 4. I'm really excited about that because it helps us to get you know, ready for hurricane season. You know how many pets are lost during hurricane season or that you can't go to a shelter because they don't have their vaccines. So this is gonna really help our community prepare for hurricane season. It's also gonna get more, um, more vaccines into our pets and uh, microchip them as well. We have a lot of microchips that we can uh, do that service for free. And so think about that, the district commissioners. If there's a place that you have in mind, because Sarah is making those reservations and appointments now. Madam Chair, uh, Misty, we've done it. At, we used to do it all the time at Pride Park. It was a great place if you hadn't thought about it. We did that years ago, We had, a, and then we had all the rescues come also. But vets came, but we also did the vaccine, so you may want to um, think of that. Uh, location. Are these free vaccines or you're charging? Yes. Yes. We They're get free. money for I, Yeah, we like free in District 3. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, we all pay. <laughs> will not stop. At the dog park. Sure, all free in District uh, Yeah, yeah. We like free in District 4, too. So uh, I can't afford it. <laughs> I think everybody does. Just paid mine. Um, so, yeah, that's a great thing. So talk to Sarah about getting some ideas in mind for where you'd like to host that. Um, and then I'll, I'll just close with saying, um, you know, Manatee County, working for Manatee County, the employees here um, have always had this culture that is so positive and so, um, so different. I don't know what it is. I can't even really explain to you what it is in words, but um, people love working for Manatee County. And I think our tagline that's, that is work that matters is what people really take to heart. And uh, it's just, I've been an employee here and, uh, and I've worked with employees here. And one thing I noticed that is that people love their jobs. And when people love their jobs, they do a really good job. So I just want everyone to remember that um, as we go forward and find a new county administrator, that we need to embrace that culture because, um, you know, we have some spectacular things going on here and it's the employees that make that happen and I'm so thankful for them and uh, I just I just want our whole board to recognize how great they are thank you Commissioner Bellamy okay I did have opportunity to speak with Sarah and we are in the process of identifying a location or two um, in district two or three because we actually came up with some different spots north of the river and then east you know out in the Somerset area as well as west you know right off 14th because you have a lot of you know pets and things in that area so um, Sarah and I've had that had that conversation in the last five to seven days we had a lot we had a bad accident right there by the debt while was like again and um, we're, we're almost there though and um, I had someone from the community um, to speak with me either yesterday or early this morning about their concern. And I just want to, um, we did get caught up in permitting earlier um, around December where they initially thought we would be there by the beginning of the year. But um, just to, to let the community know, it's in the process. The polls are already up. And from what I understand, the next four to six weeks, um, we're going to have the lights flashing so we can actually, you know, have that safety concern um, addressed um, from a different perspective. Um, I, I do want to make sure um, that I get some support. I, I plan on meeting with Ray Dowling um, next week from FPL in Georgia. I'm, um, I want to talk to you about it because I know that you are on the Peace River. Um, hold on, let me stop that. Let's get on my nerves. Something. I know you're on the Peace River board. Um, I'm going to ask for uh, we've had the Somerset Light Project, we've had the Memphis Light Project, um, and now I'm going to ask to, um, to go into the initial phases of the Washington Park Lighting Project, and that's right there, 23rd Street East um, to 29th Street as it flows to Canal. Um, that's a very, very dark area, and you have some 
um, you know, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, but you also have um, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th avenues. The difference is some parts of them is Florida Power and Light, and some of them is um, Peace River. So I'm not necessarily sure who I can communicate with, with Peace River, if you can help me with that um, to talk to so we can get them in Florida Power and Light to the table to see how we um, navigate through that. In the, in the past, from what I understand, it was a little difficult to get Peace River to the table. Um, so I, I'm not necessarily sure how true it was. Are we talking about the same Peace River? I don't know, are we? I'm talking know. about Peace River Electric. Mine's a water authority. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like the other utility on the monopoly board. The county is not represented on the Peace River Electric utility. So, so at all? No. No. I'll make a call for the you. Well, hell, I, I don't call. know anybody. I could make that phone call. I thought it was the same one. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm still planning on moving forward. Uh, I, I got to figure out how to navigate through this. So if if any of the at large commissioners know anybody that's connected with Peace River Electric, I appreciate that. I apologize for that mistake um, right there. But I do plan on moving forward with the Washington Park lighting project. Next thing I want to do, we'll see how it go. Thanks. I'm surprised that's Peace River there. Hmm. That's it. Um, Commissioner Satcher. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to go over um, a few things. First of all, I wanted to disagree with Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. Um, he said we were in a lose-lose situation with Piney Point. And I don't think that's true at this point. Um, I think that uh, for decades now, the county's been in that situation. But right now, um, we're tackling it head on. And so I'm encouraged about it. So it was a win-win. And I think we chose um, what's going to be the most workable solution. And, uh, you know, none of us are huge fans of the situation that we're in. Um, and none of us played a part in getting us there. But we are playing a part in getting us out. And that's getting stuff done, uh, significant time. stuff that hasn't been able to get done uh, for decades. And so that's exciting. Uh, just some housekeeping. Heritage Day uh, up in Parrish got moved to, because of weather, got moved to March 20th. So that's a Saturday coming up. You're all invited. Everyone watching at home is invited. It's going to be a great time. Uh, next Saturday. No chili, right? No chili cook-off? Still no chili. I have heard rumors of of food some food involved okay. so um but not a full chili uh cook-off uh, but it's still going to be a great time um i probably should have uh sent word to to uh, commissioner servia um, but there is uh bradenton hope fest is coming up in pride park uh, it's going to be march 31st and then april 1st and april 2nd and uh, it's just going to be neat they're going to be giving away uh, thousands of dollars of uh, prizes to the community um, and they've gone through uh, for months now planning and doing a great job so I just wanted to let the community know about that um, you know we also had a, a good couple of meetings now in a row when it comes to parks so uh, last meeting we uh, moved from Lincoln Park and uh, moved to rename it to Shannon Park that's right and uh, so that's exciting uh, to to pay some respect to our local heroes. Uh, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> yeah, you weren't here. I did step out on surely a uh, principle that I do not like <laughs> changing funny. anything. <laughs> I don't like funny. changing anything named for Abraham Lincoln. I mean, that's the dinners we go to every year, right? Um, Lincoln dinners. So, uh, but uh, I do appreciate. Uh, you know, respecting and paying respect to uh, people that have done a great job in the community. Uh, it's exciting to hear about the vaccine progress. Um, it, it's, you know, more and more of the people they call have already had it, plus we're getting more and more of the vaccine. So that's exciting for it to be available for the people that are, uh, that want to get the vaccine. Um, rumor has it that at 301 and uh, 60th by the outlet mall, we're getting a Chipotle. Yeah. That's the cheers that you're hearing coming from District 1 right there. And, um, and I'm looking forward to tackling uh, homelessness with, uh, among veterans, and I would like to add to that teenagers um, going forward. I also got to tour the uh, Boys and Girls Club, and just an amazing uh, job they're doing there. And uh, so I'm excited about 
uh, progress being made. I like to, to sit down and, and get something done that's worthwhile for everyone. And I feel like there's a lot of that going on. And uh, so I just wanted to say thank you to everyone on the board for being a part of that and for allowing me to be a part of it as well. Thank you. Commissioner Servia, do you want to say something? Um, yes, Commissioner Satcher, thank you for the uh, heads up on the Hope Fest. Can you tell me what what is that? What is the Hope Fest? Um, so Renan DeBarros is uh, putting it together, but he's got a lot of, uh, you know, support from different ministries, um, organizations, uh, pastors, in the area. So, I mean, you know, it's a ministry, so there's going to be, uh, they're gonna, you're going to invite the entire community. They're actually going to the streets between now and then. Um, and then they're going to have kids, adults, everyone come. Um, they're going to preach a message of hope and life. And uh, so lives are going to be changed through that. Uh, but then they're also going to use um, prizes and things like that. And I, I believe food, I believe food, but don't quote me on that. Um, but to get people there, to get a crowd there, he's expecting to have over a thousand people there. Um, oh, wow. yeah, so it's, it's going to be exciting and it's outside at the, uh, softball, uh, field. So everyone can distance. He's, ha he's done a lot of work, um, in regards to that. And, uh, so it's going to be great. I appreciate that. And then I also, um, I heard, uh, over the weekend that we may want to get with the city of Palmetto since they own Lincoln Park to ask them if we're going to rename the park. So I don't know procedurally how we do that, but we we might want to investigate that. They own park. Yeah, they do. I can, Thank you. I can speak to that, Madam Chair. I mean, w when that came up last week, I was aware that they, I mean, I wasn't sure who owned what because with the pool, we're going to own part of that park. That's the intent right now. But we will draft a resolution and bring it back to you that will ask the city to rename it after Coach Shannon. So it'll be fine. Great. Okay, a, cu a couple things. I, I kind of heard that over the weekend also. I did speak to the mayor of the city of Palmetto this weekend with a very apologetic tone. I reached out to the, the county attorney because the intent was not to do anything um, in, inappropriate, um, but it was a great effort, and I do appreciate the support. Um, the county attorney has assured me that we're going to work on it. Um, the city of mayor, the city of Palmetto's mayor, um, is aware of it, and uh, obviously waiting on our next steps. And I think that would be a embrace by the um, city of Palmetto. I did forget to mention one thing, Madam Chair. Um, I did have opportunity to speak um, with Mr. Hopes, not about the county administrative position. We did have a great conversation, and we talked about public safety as it connects with um, sidewalks, and um, I told him that's the conversation we need to talk about coming from the school board of Manatee County, and um, I think we should um, find a way to, to, to communicate with the school board as far as the schools that have youth, and probably all of them do at this point, walking, and they do not have sidewalks. It's not just um, Lincoln and LMA, it's, it's, I'm, I'm on the record, probably multiple, is that fair, the, the best terminology? And I, and I asked him, to, you know, can we look at that collectively to see, because we're talking about sidewalks right now, but if we can identify those sidewalks with the support of the, um, the school board, we can kind of look at that conversation when we start talking about our priorities of sidewalks and things as, as we talk from budget time. So I did want to make sure we... Um, I, I bring that forward also. But I do know I want to call back because my son came. Do you have anything else, Commissioner Satcher? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. I'm going to go next instead of last this time. Um, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Satcher for his help. He's, he's not letting you know that he is involved in Hope Fest, and, and that's just going to be remarkable. It's, it's going to be a wonderful thing um, for that area. So. Um, I want to thank him for doing that. Also, on the 27th of April, I cannot join you, and here's the reason. My sister, as you know, moved here in August. She's 88 years old, and she's having a medical procedure on that day. So I'm not available. I will say, though, that um, I'm still involved with Meals on Wheels. I think it's a very important organization, and, and through COVID, um, they have really extended uh, their reach to the community. So, um, you know, just to let you guys know that, that I do have that going on at the time. Um, Piney Point 
you know, I, I am glad that this board is uh, moving forward and making that determination to, to get this done. It needs to be done. I'm not necessarily happy with the solution you came up with, but the main thing is it needs to get done. Um, it is uh, a disaster waiting to happen, and, it, and it's going to happen. And, you know, I, I know for a lot of the time that I've been on the board, the consensus was pretty much that, um, you know, we didn't want to own it. Well, you know, the bottom line is we can't get away from it because it's in Manatee County. And if anything happens, it's going to be on us. So I'm glad that something will be moving forward. I remember Commissioner Johnson uh, when he brought this up and he put it on the legislative priority list. I think it was like three years ago, um, and I was excited that maybe we could really move it forward and get something done. And I will let you know that he doesn't let me forget that he brought that up. Um, so I am happy about that. And I want to thank Jake um, and, and his team and, and everyone that's been involved in the, va uh, the vaccination clinics that's been going on. I am thrilled to hear that they really think that they'll have 65-year-olds uh, taken care of soon um, and then moving to younger uh, people as well. Uh, it's really been a long haul. Uh, it's been a long year dealing with COVID. Um, I thank the governor for all of his help. Um, you know, as you know, the state now is, is out there at uh, the EOC at the Public Safety Building. Um, you know, it certainly has been a Manatee County state uh, situation in trying to get this done. Um, you know, no matter what has happened or whatever, I think our governor's done a tremendous job in supporting this county and other counties, all of the state of Florida, really, in moving forward. So just wanted to touch base on those items. Commissioner Whitmore. Yeah, uh, to be clear, um and it's just, it's maybe splitting hairs, but it isn't. In 2017, I asked to have Piney Point put on the legislative platform, and Commissioner Johnson was the chair then. So, um, and actually, I just spoke to him yesterday. He said he wouldn't be watching the meeting. So, but he misses everybody because nobody's calling him. <laughs> um, Meals on Wheels, Feeding Tampa Bay, I support anything for, uh, ho um, you know, homeless or food. And I've given equally to both of them to um, support them. Um, I would like to, uh, Madam Chair, if you're involved, I had somebody call me yesterday asking, are they going to switch back? Somebody wants to put their family member on a, oh, actually it's Priscilla Trace, uh, but her mother won't eat the frozen dinners. And, and if you could find out if they're going to convert back or is that going to continue? Because um, I told her I would ask, and if, you, if you're in, really involved, if you could call and ask it, or let us know if there's a plan, probably not now because of all the issues going on, but I'd like to be able to, because they're having to bring her a hot dinner every day, so of course they were wondering. Um, on February 26, I met with <clears throat> the sheriff, the chief of um, police of Brainton, Palmetto, and we talked about um, the eviction pro process. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the only one that actually convict people from their homes is the sheriff. And he, uh, he, What's happening is, uh, again, whether you love it or like it, a lot of these people have animals and they're getting, uh, there's a potential, there has been in the past, but they're getting turned into animal services with no history, they just get brought there. So we all met with the police departments and animal services and figured out a way that we can make this a smooth process and possibly these animals not even hitting the shelters. There's many rescues that would do something like this because they actually have a history on the dog. They'll know, you know, if, if the dog's been around kids, et cetera, where now it's just uh, shoot, you never know. So um, the sheriff thought it was, uh, and um, Sarah Brown, Sarah Brown's going to present the sheriff's office with a process, and we're going to pass this out to all police departments in the county that they can give have citizens if they're having problems having to leave their homes, even if they aren't evicted. So uh, that'll be presented to us. This was a recommendation by the Animal Services advisory board. So um, I brought that forward and that's moving forward. On <clears throat> March 1st, uh, we had our fifth emergency housing meeting and that includes United Way. It's kind of what Dr. Conard was talking about today. 211, Manatee and, and Sarasota Community Foundation, um, the State College of Florida, all these various social service agencies were there. And um, there's a website and I just went on it too. Uh, when people call the 211, it's tracked. 
And you can see who's asking for what. Like right as of now, 32.6% of the calls are for housing and shelter. And utilities is 25.2%. And it will even break it down by zip codes. We really need to encourage the citizens, if they have a question about anything that's going on, where to get help, that they start with 211. And um, just so you know, the website is www.suncoast211.org. And if you could get that out to your various uh, people that you work with, that would be great. Um, met with Karen. Uh, thank you, Karen. Um, we met with <coughs> two business owners. Uh, one was a fairly new one. He wanted to know how to get involved in the community, how to, how to, he has a construction business. Another one has a healthcare business. They were together. And how to get more in the community, how to uh, tap into, um, you know, to get out there, what to do with the CARES Act. And Karen was very gracious to, to we did a Zoom call the other day, so I very much appreciate it. Tonight at 5, I've been invited to attend the ribbon cutting for Coastal Orthopedics out on Lena Road. And yes, they paid 500,000 an acre. And Dr. Um, Valaday was very upset because a lot of that property had to go for uh, stormwater runoff. He goes, that's just like, I can't believe I had to pay for that much and I couldn't use all my property. I said, well, welcome to the real world. So I've been asked to help uh, be there for the ribbon cutting and to say a few words. So that'll be at five o'clock. Um, on the second, I met with Tarnisha. Uh, um, she was a former NAACP president, and now she's the director and CEO of Black Chamber of Commerce. We talked uh, with about hiring practices in Manatee County. She does have a follow-up meeting with Kim Stroud and Karen, I think, coming up in the future. It was a good education for me because I met with Kim Stroud after and got a picture of how we do the hiring. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm glad that that call happened, so I'm very happy that it happened. Um, I still, I know you're, you're set on it, but I, I still question the Tallahassee trip with COVID. And what I'm seeing on fact, there everybody's being encouraged to do it remotely. Can't go into the Senate chambers. I mean, to me, I don't know how, our, how we expect our lobbyists to get us in, um, especially as I don't know how many are going, but I would just, you know, I don't think it um, shows a good, uh, Example, if we're going up and doing that, I mean, if we, if we knew we were going to get money and lots of money and everything was going great, we could see everybody. We can see our locals. We can see our locals here, you know, but we can't see the others, and I understand that. So, again, I would just ask you to reconsider that. Um, also, Karen Stewart, I don't know if you're going to talk about it, but or is that supposed to be at another meeting? But you did give us a list during our briefings about you would agree to stay a little while longer to... Um, so we find somebody so we don't aren't rushed and you gave us a sheet of paper on who you would assign what areas to be that person since you are doing three jobs so I don't know if that was I thought it was going to be discussed today because that's why we got it but maybe not so um, but anyway I agree uh, I, I'm very happy that you agreed to step up to um, take on that until we uh, we do it right also of course I'm gonna um, Bring up, we've gotten a lot of calls, a lot of social media, a lot of calls. I got a call from the news today um, wanting me to comment, and I wouldn't. But uh, I just, you know, we've got a lot of negative press in Manatee County, and there's a lot of issues going on, and I would ask that the chairman step down as, as chair. And um, if that happens, I still will have intentions of um, nominating Commissioner Cruz and I'm just asking that she step down. And if not, I'd like to make a motion. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. Madam Chair, point of order. I have a question for the county attorney. Um, if, a, if a motion has been made and denied, uh, what is the procedure for people continually bringing up, you can bring that, it up. that same uh, topic and making the same motion over and over? Madam Chair, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, there really is no prohibition on, on doing that. I know we have a, a rule of reconsideration in our rules of procedure, but because the board is a legislative body, the board can make the same proposition again. Um, I understand if it's already been denied, it seems redundant. It, it I, is, I right. It, We're trying to heal and move this yes, I government forward. I understand, forward but, but it's, opening that's the law. They, somebody can make that motion okay. because the rules of procedure provide that the chair can be removed from her position. Sure. So we can't say from a procedural standpoint we're taking away the right of the board 
to okay, do that. I was that. just looking for clarification. I, I understand. Thank you. And in all due respect, thank you, Commissioner Manosovich. I've gotten hundreds to ask that and maybe three people to say everything that happened was fine. So I represent the entire county, and um, I just think it's only um, fair that and for us to heal and to move forward, we need to heal and move forward. And we can't when every time we open up the paper, something different's happening. And, you know, I, and I, you know, the last couple of meetings have been fine. That's not the point. The point is, is I think we could move and heal if we had a different chair. So I'd like to make a motion to remove the current chair from her position. There is a motion made. Is there a second? Madam Chair, may I make a comment? Of course. Go ahead. Yeah, and um, I, I, the, the, the temperament and, and, and tone um, of where we are right now is, is very, very unfortunate. And um, I made the motion the first time, and um, it did not pass. And um, with all due respect to, to Commissioner Whitmore and the many constituents that are continuing to email um, us, um, I've asked the chairman would she resign. She said no. I've asked a motion for the resign. It was denied. This is my concern. If we're, I wrote this down, F-O-C-B-P, right? Focus on county business, please. This is county business. And to, to, to a certain extent, I, I, I agree. Um, but I'm not necessarily sure at this point with all that's going on from this group right here, why do we continue to um, address it? I don't think we're going to get the votes. I really, I really don't. And I don't like keep going back and forth on stuff that's already, you know, I've, I've lost a lot in my life. And I, with, with the losses that I've had, I take and, and I learn and, um, from my mistakes and I, and I move forward. I mean, I can go through this and for the good of the goose and the gather, say, okay, yeah, I second it. I second it. But one, one thing that I um, um, said to Commissioner Ball is that I want to move forward. And, and, I, and I think in order for me to be an example, in order for us to be an example, there, there's, there's a double-edged sword that we're facing um, for, as a board, not just individually as myself and Commissioner Whitmore um, and Commissioner Ball as a board. What we're facing is the emails that we continue to get, the public comments that we continue to get, and um, the people that we support or, or we, we, that we represent, this is a request coming from them. This is a request coming from them. And I, I answered that call um, once. And I, I just don't know how we heal. I just don't know how we focus on county business and we continue to revisit this. I just, I'm just, I'm, I just don't know how. And um, I want to talk about, you know, can I get some support for the Washington Park lighting project? Can I get some support um, for the homeless, for the veterans? I mean, I, 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 and, and, and the, the homeless veterans and, and the, the 2,000 youth that we know in Manatee County that are homeless. I mean, I, there, we have so many issues that we have to discuss. And... Um, Playing baseball, you strike out. Sometimes you get hit with a ball. Sometimes you have foul balls. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the reality of it is, <laughs> even when that game is over with, it's decided. And I, I and this is not a game. And I, and I think people need to realize this. And, and and I'm tired of going back and forth with it. We have to focus on county business. And it, 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 I honestly think it's it, wherever she is at this particular point in time, that's up to her. I don't think we're going to get the votes, but wherever we are right now, wherever we are right now, please, can we not go back through this again next Tuesday or next Thursday or next Friday? You know, there's a lot of other entities out there that are, are, are making statements, and they have the right to. And if they feel like they, they want to do that, go ahead. It's Amendment 1. But what I'm saying, it's going to be hard for us to heal. It is going to be hard for us to get things done if we keep addressing this. That's the, that, that, it's just me, and, and I'm not trying to protect you, Commissioner Ball. I'm not trying to side with you, Commissioner Van Osterbridge. I'm not trying to side with you, Commissioner Whitmore. I'm trying to find a way to get things done in the county. 
Sorry. You know what? I'm going to step in at this point. Um, I see the emails. And I also know that a lot of it's political. But I also know that there are people in the community that are not happy with the fact that there was a pop-up clinic in Lakewood Ranch. Bottom line was my thought process was totally that it was 3,000 more people that were going to be vaccinated. 3,000 more. So the bottom line is the reason it keeps coming back is because we are getting ready to go into 2022. And I realize that there's nothing I can do to, um, to change that. However, for those that are upset with me over it, I've also heard from many that thank me for doing it because it got 3,000 people off that lottery to, to allow for 3,000 more people to get vaccinated. The bottom line is I, I would not, um, you know, go against the governor in any way, shape, or form. He was bringing vaccine to our county. That's very important. I stand by it. And by the way, I, you know, I haven't been convicted of anything. There has not been any sunshine violations. There has not been any, any criminal uh, activity from, from me. Uh, I am getting beat up pretty badly. I got big shoulders because I know it's not true. So I stand by this board as I've always done. I am proud to be the chairman of this board. I try to do a good meeting and uh, you know, run a good meeting. I stand by the citizens of Manatee County um, and I try to do the right thing. So for those that are not happy with me, I'm sorry, but uh, that's just the way it is. So um, Commissioner Servia, did you have something to add, ma'am? Yes, I this? did. Thank you for recognizing me. Um, I'm, I'm exactly where Reggie is. I just am. Um, I, I do believe that it would have been the best for this Board of County Commissioners if Commissioner Baugh would have stepped down from chairman. I do believe that would have been the best situation. But the vote wasn't there to do that, and I respect that. And so I think that it's time to move forward. I don't, I don't want to keep opening the wound over and over. It takes a lot of energy to continue to talk about this. And, uh, and yes, those citizens have their rights to say and do whatever they would like, and they do. <laughs> that they and do. There is a, uh, there's a criminal and an ethics complaint that are being processed right now. Let the process work. Let those uh, institutions uh, tell us what they find. And we have a lot of business here to stay focused on. We have a lot of challenges ahead. And, and that's where my head is. And so I want to move forward. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I thought that this would come up again because someone vowed, what? Commissioner Whitmore vowed to bring it up at every single meeting. Um, so I had a, uh, a response typed up, um, but I am not going to read it. Um, it would be, it's quite partisan, and I think that we're crossing a bridge here. Um, and I thank Commissioner Bellamy and Commissioner Servia um, for your desire and efforts to just heal us and move forward. And I feel like this is a bit of a ceasefire, and that's what I want. I, I want this to us to be able to put down sort of our political swords and to focus solely on running this government. And I'm hoping that today starts, I hope it's sort of a new day starting today. We had a, a pretty productive meeting and uh, I thought everyone, you know, was on their best behavior and that we got along pretty well. And uh, so anyway, I just want to say thank you. And I met a, Madam Chair, I, the motion seems to fail for lack of a second. I think we can move on. I've still got commissioners on the board, we'll have to say. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore, did you want to speak and, again? Yeah, of course I want to. Um, I, and I thank the governor for bringing the shots. No, I mean, I mean the vaccines. Nobody's ever said that, even though there's others that saying that Misty and I don't support it. We're getting. I got one again the other day, but um, no. What the point was is is that a list was made, a, a, a VIP list, and that was nothing to do with the governor. We all know that. But here's my 
I would stop bringing this up if I could see the behavior changing of our chair. I have seen, and I'm not going to disclose anything because I'm not going to go that route. I have seen um, our, and heard of our chair directing staff, telling them what to do of something that we haven't voted on yet. Um, I've seen um, employees crying, and um, and that's that's if that would stop, and you and we would do our job, and you do your job as chair and run the meetings and do what we're supposed to be, but. The administrator of the employees is Karen Stewart. That's who we've made to be the administrator. So in all due respect, if I keep seeing that, I will keep bringing this up. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because people are afraid not to do whatever's being told. And that's not how we work. I think employees shouldn't be afraid to go to personnel, but I know they are. But I'm just telling you, um, I've seen it twice now in the last couple of weeks. And um, that's not the role of the chair. We, th who directs lower employees besides the directors is our county administrator. And the chair should go to the county administrator and do that. But to set policy without any of us even knowing about it, that's nothing that we've directed, I don't think that's fair. And that's why I'm bringing this up. If it stops tomorrow, I, you'll never hear me bring this up again. I think she should have stepped down because, uh, and it wasn't because of the, the vaccines, amen. Let's hope we get more. It was because of the list and um, me of anybody who has a very ill husband at home that needed to get the vaccine, but the optics didn't look good. You know, that's why I didn't. So anyway, let's hope that things change. That's what I'm seeing, Madam Chair. If, if, if everything calms down, we all stay in our lane and do our jobs for the citizens, you won't hear me bring this up again. Thank you. That's all I have. Once the... Um once everything is settled, I will be having a press conference, and I'll be talking about this so-called VIP list that everyone has decided upon. Um, I still haven't had the vaccine. I am going to get the vaccine, but at any rate, we're, we're, we need to move this county forward and stop it. Then let's all work together. In my together. opinion, Commissioner Bellamy, yes, sir. Yeah, and just to be, this is where it gets political, right? Um, but my, my approach is that, that it's, it's over. Um, um, some people that probably um, would want me to, okay, I second this motion. This motion is not going to pass, right? I, I, know, it's, I know it's not going to pass, and I knew it wasn't going to pass when I first made it, to be honest with you, but I was hoping. My, my thing is um, a, a total different tone, to, to, to be honest with you. A lot of the, the content that Commissioner Whitmore um, have, I, I've heard some things about it and things of that nature right there. But my, my position is to, 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 to allow things, you know, in its appropriate areas. You know, um, I'm not, I can't say whether or not certain commissioners are saying certain statements to staff and things like that, but I can tell you what Reggie Bellamy is saying. Thank you for everything you do. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Reggie Bellamy is saying and trying to learn and to go from there. I want to um, appreciate Commissioner Servia. Um, if we read between the lines, April 27th is a, is, is a team building opportunity. And I pray for your, your sister, your 88-year-old you. sister. Um, but I, I don't know, maybe we should start doing cornhole contests with commissioners or something like that. <laughs> so we can, that either. So we can, <laughs> So we can have a little bit of fun, all right, I'm done. How about horseback riding? Can I'll, we do no, that I'll one? Try. I can do that. I'm on Reggie's team. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not fair, right there. There you go. Uh, Please, well go let's home. go horseback riding. <laughs> Give me something I can do here. Um, I'm Commissioner Servia. Oh, thank you. Um, look at you, Cornhole, trying to get the best player. <laughs> it's it's I thought I was player. the best player. Forget about that. <laughs> Okay. You know, sometimes when I go RVing, if I didn't worry so much about sunshine violations, I could have all of you there, and we could play cornhole, but, you know. All you have to do is advertise. Can you imagine? Advertise. <laughs> advertise. All I had to do was say it. And make sure it. we invite 445 and 125. Yeah. <laughs> all those individuals that call it. I, I know out I of control. to say something during my comments, and that's why I press my button again. Um, and I, I just want to say clearly, I don't think what we've heard from the community is about the 2022 election. I just really don't think it's about that. And I think that, um, you know, the, 
the opinions of the public are about what they felt was right and wrong, not about what the next election holds. And maybe that's just me because I just don't see this. I don't. I never saw the pandemic as political. But um, yeah, uh, just please know that I do not believe. Commissioner Servia, I wasn't talking about the pandemic at all by any means, and I wasn't talking about Manatee County either uh, when I said that. Okay. Well, no. I, okay. So maybe you're referring to the governor, but I was. Um, yes. But any, I'm sorry. So, yeah, I, I'm ready to move forward. But I think all the comments are really important to listen to. They are. You know, this board sets policy. That's not all. one commissioner ever sets policy. Right. So, um, so yeah, the comments are important, and and let's all move forward. And uh, we'll be in Tallahassee soon, uh, working together for the same things. So. Thank you. I think it's going to be a, a great trip, and, and I know there are going to be a lot of people there when we're there, but, um, you know, from what I'm hearing, I think it's going to be good. Uh, Commissioner Satcher? <laughs> oh, no, we're, we're way past that for the moment. What? And we all got to go but you. I, <laughs> oh, he hasn't made comments. What? Like wasn't second. Well, I'm still giving, you got commissioners on the board that want to talk about it, so I have to give them that option. Was the motion seconded? Not yet. I thought right but there's still commissioners I'll talking. I'll give a second. Have nothing to do with the motion. Either someone seconds or they don't, Madam Chair. Let's fail for Mac. All right. Uh, well, I'm with them. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually with them, uh, too. Commissioner I mean, Satcher, did you have something on. to add on the on the motion? Um, or, on the mo assuming it's going to uh, fail, I just wanted. It's not even a motion. Not it's I, I like it it died. For there hasn't second. been a second. Not get a second. Okay. So unless you're going to second it. No, I'm there withdraw. In the spirit of moving on, I'm going to withdraw gallery. my motion. I'm going to withdraw my motion because there's no second. Thank okay, you. then thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Commissioner <laughs> Mr. Sass. You were going to like what I was going to say. Could I second it? <laughs> no, I wasn't going to second it. <laughs> okay, forget it. I was just going to remind us all that it is uh, <coughs> that it's important for us to uh, to adhere to the protocol and procedures. You know, going through the administrator. That's never. Um, it's not even. It's not first nature when you need to ask someone to do something to ask somebody else to ask them. That's weird. Yeah, but um, but it's the right thing, and it's the way we're set up. So I just want to remind us all that. We can work on that. Thank you. You're absolutely right. And if the line of that happens, you won't hear from me. It's still your com your commissioner comments. That was it. I just had a little accident. I'm sorry. Okay. George got rambunctious. Uh, you know. You're on the board. Did you have anything to add, sir? I'm just waiting for my commissioner comment. All oh, right. You haven't done it either. Uh, commissioner Whitmore, are you finished? Yeah, I said Okay. That. Uh, Commissioner, it is your turn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I try to keep proper decorum. So in District 3, um, I'm very interested in doing a pop-up pet vaccine <laughs> oh, for free uh, site at some point. And I, yeah, I will be reaching out to Sarah Brown. I think that's a good idea. Uh, is Zeus going to be there? I would do uh, no, he's all for squared away. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I love uh, Commissioner Satcher's um, event that he's helping to coordinate at Pride Park. I think that's fantastic. I'll try to spread the word for you. Uh, we do have some Be good there. things coming in District 3. I spoke to Mayor Brown, and uh, the good news is that Wawa has reached out to the city, and they're starting to pull permits. And for they'll 75th be build Street? 75th Street, Manatee Avenue. Yes, Finally. absolutely. They have the best um, so, noodle soup. You know, it, it takes a little time, but it's it's coming. And I you know, spoke to John Osborne when he was here, and he told me that uh, Target had reached out uh, right before he left, before John left, Target had reached out to the building department to start pulling permits, uh, also at Manatee Avenue and 75th Street in the old Kmart oh. building. Woohoo! Hey. So Target and Wawa Good. sounds like coming down the pipe there. Uh, and I have also heard from very good authority that Chick-fil-A <coughs> is very close to the deal in West Bradenton as well. Really? And I will hold back until it's Tell us the where. ink is dry. Uh, but I have heard that Chick-fil-A is, is very close to coming to West Bradenton as well. So we do have some good things coming in West Bradenton. Yeah, because we're as old. Always. We need that. Uh, we're we're old. Um, so there were, there was, I wanted to ask a question about uh, the administrator, um, hiring of an administrator. We have the 23rd is our day uh, that we have set aside to actually vote on that? Is, is that correct? Who knows? That I know that's why, the that's why I'm is asking. Is that what it's looking like to, to know. you? My, my question is, should we, should we set a day for a special meeting to address this, just that single issue? I was going to bring that up, actually. Oh, well, I, I will. Special meeting on this. Would you like me to hold off and allow you to do that during commissioner No, comments? you go ahead. Oh, well, you weren't going to bring it up then. 
Um, <laughs> so, so, and, and I'm looking for, you know, a consensus of the board. I'm looking for feedback on that. Um, I, I would like to do it really sooner than later, to be honest. I, I don't want to uh, continue to kick this can down the road any more than I do Piney Point or anything else. Um, I think it's part of the, the healing process that we should um, move forward with this. Karen has been extremely it. generous and kind and uh, doing three jobs at once, three jobs with two hands. And uh, we're appreciative That's of Karen. it. Um, but I think for the stability of, of our government, I think that it's important to move forward with this as reasonably and responsibly quickly as possible. Okay. On that note, uh, Commissioner Whitmore, you're on the board. Were you going to comment on what I, he just not said? Not that one, but I forgot something whenever. Okay. Well, okay. I, I'm, I'm also on the board because I wanted to comment on what he said. Why don't you um, go ahead and do that then? I, I'm looking at dates right now. Yeah, I think it's thought. very important that we do. Everybody's getting we have to a little. <laughs> um, I think it's very important that we look at the interim county administrator. And, you know, this board has really had a hard time since the elections and moving forward. And we need to stop that. Uh, you know, we owe it to the staff members here. We owe it to our citizens in Manatee. We've got to start moving the county forward. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is to start making decisions, difficult decisions. But I think this board is up to it. Um, you know, that's what we're here to do. That's our job. So I am with Kevin, uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, on that. I think that we should probably set up a date for a special meeting and go ahead and get this done, get an interim in. Uh, and start moving forward. So we are advertising this until Friday. Yes. And I, I've, we already, uh, Kim is sending us resumes as they come in. I already have 10 to look at. Um, yeah. So. Today? Uh, she sent them yesterday. Yes, last night I got, you know, I got it, them last when night. When it first opens, you're going to have a, a, yeah. a surge, right? Mm -hmm. um, to be fair, eight of them are Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he listed his. Dr. Hopes, Wait, Scott Hopes, George. you know, Dr. Scott Hopes, he, he's sort of, he's increasing his chances. Um, he's so, consistent. I'll have to say that. So, I mean, I, I've pretty much, I've pretty much dead scheduled, pen, penciled in my weekend to reading resumes. Um, mm -hmm. And I've already looked at five of the ten. Um, Although one was Dr. Hope, so that doesn't really count. I don't assume that. <laughs> there but, were 11, uh, actually. I okay. Think. Um, <laughs> so I guess my question is, I mean, we all seem pretty dedicated and committed to this mm -hmm. process and getting and getting this done as quickly as possible. Uh, would Tuesday the 16th be, we have a workshop that day. Wait a minute. Um, would we all be open to holding a special meeting piggybacked off of that workshop? We'll all be here. Uh, that is the Hi. afternoon. Is it not that we're supposed to Believing. be leaving for Tallahassee? You cancel the work session on the afternoon, she so you could go, to, go Tallahassee. to Tallahassee. I'm not. Yeah, I, I'll be doesn't. here. I'll have it. You want me to have it? I got Carol's going to be here with me. I'll be here. You will, too. Well, before uh, okay, we that's always... Fine. You know, we can push it further if you want. I, I didn't want to go. Are we you still know. left the board? for Tallahassee at 2, yeah. 3 in the and afternoon, just so you know. And 5, we've actually left. Yeah. All right. We've got people on the board. Commissioner Whitmore, I'm sorry. You're still on the board. My, my is that on is this the, item? My suggestion is the 16th after the workshop. I'm open to feedback. Okay. Commissioner Servia, your comment, is it on this? Yes. Oh, am I next? It says no, I'm right sorry. Time. Commissioner oh. Cruz is. I apologize. Yeah, I, I think yes. the 16th is, is way too fast. I, I get trying to get this done quickly and efficiently, but Nobody up here is an HR director. I mean, we shouldn't be randomly saying next Tuesday, a week from today. This application process is open through Friday, so you may be still be getting applications Saturday. That's great. You're going to block your weekend to read resumes, but I've read a lot of resumes in my life. I've hired a lot of people. In my life. Uh, they're not always true, and just because someone looks good on paper doesn't necessarily mean they'd be good as an administrator. I, I think we owe it to ourselves, owe it to the staff, owe it to the citizens of Mountain County to at least kind of come up with an actual system, working with Kim, working with Karen, working with ourselves, to narrow it down and then speak to these people because I've seen people with stellar work history or stellar education that were horrible, horrible employees. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people with lackluster resumes that were incredible employees and their personalities were great. I'm not going to pick an administrator for this county based solely on a piece of paper. There's we'll gotta be another interim, step to right? it. Not, I don't care what well, it is. It could you know, be I just for one day. Sure I'm not going to pick talking. it solely based on a resume. We used to do Zoom. Permanent. Yeah. Um, now it's my turn. Yes, ma'am. That's what I was Thank getting ready to you. ask you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cruz. Totally agree. Yes. 
we, we need uh, to honor our process. I'm so glad that Kim has walked in because what I'm looking for is a timeline and I think that that's already probably been thought of. Um, although maybe Kim can come up and talk to us about that. Um, and you know, we need time to do background checks, reference checks, that kind of stuff. That's still part of the review. I just don't think we can do it in two days, but uh, I love your enthusiasm for getting it done because I want to also, Kevin. So, but we just need to go through a process. Do you have a suggested date? Or would you want to hear from um, Kim? I, I'd like to hear from our HR director because I would imagine she has already put together a timeline, although I don't know. I haven't talked to her about that. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Kim Straub for the record, HR director. Um, so I met with all of you yesterday and, and talked a little bit about the schedule. And um, I agree when a posting first comes open, um, especially when there's this much uh, publicity about it, we got flooded over the weekend. The posting went up on Friday. You, you voted it for it to be advertised on Thursday. The posting went up on Friday. Uh -huh. And we got, um, I don't know, about 11 applications over the weekend. And we're getting some today. And as I indicated, I'll give you an email every evening um, with whatever has been received that day. And then um, the posting closes on Friday. This Friday at 5 p.m. Will, will be the last application that we receive. So I think really the schedule, as I talked about yesterday, really is, is going to be dependent upon um, how many applications we receive. Um, the board wanted to see every application. So you know um, you've gotten 11. Maybe not all 11 are viable applications for this position, but it is a lot to look through. Um, so my recommendation really is based off of how many total do we have and how much time does the board need to look through those. I've encouraged you all to look through them as you get them. If you want to meet with anybody and have a discussion, which I would encourage you to do, um, I would ask that you, you allow me to help facilitate that so I can coordinate that process for the applicant. Um, and uh, so again, I think that the timing really is based upon how many do we get. If we get 50 by the end of Friday, that, that's a lot to, for the board to be reviewing and, and scoring through. Madam Chair, may I dialogue? Yes, go ahead. It, it is, that's, but I still wanted to request that. Um, so, uh, Kim, do you have, if we leave this open-ended, uh, I love my colleagues, but um, we, this could go on forever. So if we have some sort of time certain or at least framework to work within, that would be helpful. Um, would you have a suggested time frame for us to work to within? Cut it off and review. Or do you want to come back to us on Friday with a suggest? Email us on Friday with a suggested time frame, because then we'll have all the resumes and we'll know how many we're dealing with. I mean, I, I can I can certainly make a suggested time frame. The the um, it it does it it's reliant on the board though. I mean, you you all have a lot to do, and because I don't know how many applications are going to be received. I mean, we could say next Tuesday. Maybe you have a, a special meeting um, next Tuesday, but again, if you have 50 applications, does that give you enough time to have conversations with whatever applicants you may want to have a conversation with? Could we set a special meeting to we, piggyback that would be very quick on Tuesday after the work quick. session, simply to say we have this number of applications, let's try to set this sort of time frame to work within you know, to make a decision? That's a question for my colleagues. Um, I'd like to make a comment, and I'm next on the board, so Go I'm going to do this. Um, I agree with Commissioner uh, Van Ostenbridge. What I, I think is that once you get them all to us, Kim, if fr Friday at 5 o'clock is the deadline, um, that gives us the weekend and Monday to take a look. And then on Tuesday, what I think we should probably do, we could each select from the group perhaps three people. And then on Tuesday, we could look at that and try to narrow it down if possible, and then set up appointments for whomever it is to come in and talk to us, you know, one day, hit all of us in our offices. It's the interim. It's not a permanent position. So, um, I mean, I think that would be more in line, you know, than sitting back and, um, you know, we, we each need to select maybe three. 
What out about of the group? one? Because then that's seven. We all have. Well, we can do it that way if you can. I mean, if you feel like it's down, up, it's up to you up individually. To you can select up to three. Oh, up to three. That could be twenty-one yeah. applicants. So, that's well, assuming I, everyone chooses three, then they're all different. It, and they won't all be different, I'm sure. Right. So, yeah. Never know. I, I mean, that's what I would think, Kim. Yeah, uh, I, I would be a good idea. I think. Knowing that we have right now, with what we got in today, we have at least 15 applicants. And again, I know not all of those are going to fit the need of the board. Exactly. So, so essentially what you're suggesting, and I think it's a good recommendation, is, is for the board to come with your own short list. Um, thinking about it over the weekend, whether that's done during the workshop on the 16th or a special meeting, and then we can determine um, who wants to have conversations with, with which applicants. And if I could add to that, I mean, the reason I, I said what I did is because some of us up here on the board seems to be having problems sleeping for some crazy reason. And so I did look at all of the applications last night that, that you sent us. Um, and, and, you know, whenever you have a group like that, there's always some that, you know, you might feel doesn't really fit the bill. So it does help to, um, you know, right. get rid of a few here and there. And, so. and Commissioner Cruz, if, if we come back with 20, we'll reevaluate at that point. I mean, but we You're could also gonna. come back with five. Me too. You know, totally Everyone's not going to come back with three. Up we'll to just three. add it on to the work session and we'll keep going we'll through that, lunch so you guys can leave or whatever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if that's what the board wants to do, I mean, I think that would work, Kim. You, yeah, I, you I, agree. I, so. Yeah, I, I would. I would. I think a short list is really important in this case. I also mentioned I think the board ought to um, consider uh, when you get to the point of voting on a finalist that the board also ought to consider an alternate. Okay. Yes, good idea. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I know we talked about that yesterday. Right. For contracting reasons, yep. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy. Uh, yeah, I, I was just hoping that we can really, um, because of time, allow H instead of us guiding HR, right, allow HR to guide us um, through the process as far as the timeline and everything like that once all of the um, resumes are received. And um, I know we have the, the concern about the minimum requirement, but we still will have the ability to come up with our list of um, two or three um, individuals and as commissioners we're gonna we have the ability to bring those names for um, anyway I'm, I'm just concerned um, that that we're in it a little too much because we don't have the HR background I think there's certain things as far as the vetting process um, and what I mean by vetting process people put anything on resumes nowadays right and, and who's going to vet that we're going to read it but we're not raising our hand to say that this person graduated from Yale or, or got, got a college degree or things like that. Those type of things to um, make sure we don't embarrass ourselves, right? I think we should let HR um, kind of do some of that work for us because that's what they do. That's what I mean by... And Commissioner Nabellamy, I, I agree with part of what you're saying. I think this board should look at all the applications. It's We only hire two people ourselves you know, in this entire county. So this board should look at all the applications, I believe. And then once we narrow it down, which we will do on Tuesday, then I think at that point, Kim, you know, and her staff could start looking and, and evaluating to make sure of what we're hearing and then set up, you know, we'll meet with them. Yeah. So, so if I could just add some clarity, um, just to make sure that all the board members are, are clear on what HR is going to be doing here. Um, we're, we're handing you all of the resumes. If, if the board decides to shortlist, that's great. I agree with Commissioner Cruz. I think it is important for the board members to have conversations with the applicants that you are interested in. Um, and because you all are looking for certain attributes of, with these applicants, and that's gonna be your opportunity to find out. Um, but once the board decides a finalist and an alternate, that's when HR will do all of those background checks. Right. We, will, we will do a criminal background check. We will do an academic background check to verify that what is on paper um, is actually in reality. Right. Agreed. Okay. Um, Commissioner Servia? I'm sorry. Commissioner Whitmore, you're still on there, and I don't want to leave you out. No, I uh, is there uh, anything? No, if I want to talk about that, I'll raise my hand. Okay. But no, this is a, I forgot to say. All right. Well, I just wanted to make sure, uh, Commissioner Servia. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and um, 
Kim, is it possible to get, uh, I know you and I talked about you're preparing a spreadsheet. Is it possible to get that before we do our short list? You know, yeah. that, okay. Absolutely. Yep, my intention is I'm, I'm just putting together a spreadsheet and it's really, um, it's just really reflective of what the applicant has put on their application. I'm trying to give the board a tool to be able to have a quick look at all of the applicants to see how they fare up with the current ordinance, knowing that the board can change the ordinance, but also to give you an idea of what level of degree do they have, how many years of experience in public and private sector do they have, just so you can have a quick look. So you will get that spreadsheet um, Friday when I send the final applications received on Friday. You'll also get that spreadsheet with all of the applicants on there. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I, I think that's an important issue, you know, because We've talked about this in our last meeting, it, you know, looking at um, what our resolution says that are the qualifications. And I think that that can be changed. I talked to the county attorney about it the other day, and it's something that can be done fairly quickly if we so decide, uh, depending on the qualifications mm -hmm. that we're looking for. Okay. Good idea. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. So, Madam Chair, before we conclude that discussion, I just want to make sure, is the board looking to next Tuesday um, make some decisions about narrowing the field? Well, or? I was going to make that conclusion right now. Or try to okay, draw that because conclusion. I think if you are, that needs Football to be a special George meeting uh, rather than a... Uh, whether, rather than tagging it onto the work session. You can't take uh, action can't in, a take a vote in a workshop. Oh, yeah, right. so I think it would be a good yeah. idea. And you can do that without a motion to vote from the board. The chair can, can call a special meeting. So it, I'm just going to make a statement as to what I interpret the will of the board to be, and then if anyone objects, feel free to object, but no uh, action object. right? No action is necessary. Uh, so I take it to be that the will of the board is to re spend the weekend reviewing the applications that come in that will be sent to us by uh, Ms. Stroud, and then on Tuesday, uh, a special meeting will be piggybacked at the tail end of our work session. And at that meeting, we will each bring a short list with the goal to be no more than three on your short list. If you come with four, you'll be tied to the post and wet noodle whipped, you know, till the end. But uh, yeah, so the goal would be for three. Uh, if you come with less, so be it. But essentially, be prepared with your short list at the special meeting at the conclusion of the workshop on Tuesday. And don't forget we have budget and coastal high hazard maps too, so we got to also spend the weekend doing that too. It's going to be an yeah, exciting so I, I weekend for Zeus and myself. Do you what? I'm sorry? I so said I have to uh, object that I'm going to be able to commit my entire weekend to that because oh, I have on. a tough funeral that I have to attend. Oh, funeral? Oh. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Um, and I do think Tuesday is kind of quick. Do we have any other options? Well, because we're going. We're off to Tallahassee, way. and there's no studying in Tallahassee. <laughs> back by Friday? Are you back by Just Friday? Teasing. Madam uh, Chairman. Um, you're not on the board, dialogue? please. No, no dialogue. Misty, hit your button. <laughs> oh, I'm like, please. Okay. Did you finish up at oh, this point? We were going to dialogue. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, is it possible, since we need a special meeting anyway, that we could oh. pick a day later in the week, like Friday? In the afternoon, like about 1 or one. Or in the morning? Uh, I am not rushing back. Isn't that the day we're coming back from Tally? Thursday. No, we come back Thursday. Is it Thursday? I'm busy Friday. Okay. Well, I'm having, yeah, a, I can't do Friday, I'm having a medical procedure actually. Friday. So oh, wait, this I is next week. Next week, Friday. I'll be here in the afternoon, but not morning. I'm available Friday of next week. I so, can do it at 12 or 1. Does anyone object to Friday? I have meetings all day. I don't have to move. Can I? Sir. One second. Yep. Okay. Um, Commissioner Bellamy, go ahead. Yeah, here, here's what I'm thinking in my briefing with the um, interim county administrators. She expressed that um, if there needs to be an extension of her time, that she would. Next week is going to be a tough turnaround because of some of the things that's already pressing um, on us um, that's, that's, that's coming up. So I'm asking, well, maybe because we're, we're looking at Tuesday, if we can't get it done Tuesday, the bottom line next week is going to be very difficult. That's the reality. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. So with her already... Um, expressing that um, 
we can en enhance it uh, another 30 days or something of that nature. Can we get another week uh, as far as bypassing next week and going to the week after that? Because I think our initial press was because we had to get to the 23rd. Am I correct? Because that's what, what she expressed in the briefing, and, I, and I'm sure it's, it's as good as she is, she expressed it to all of us, that she would be willing to... Till to, we find somebody. Yeah, till, till we find somebody. She said. I'm, I'm concerned about how many I'm going to read this weekend, to be honest with you, Commissioner Van oh. uh, I'm just being honest with you because we don't know how many is coming in, first of all, and then there's some other things that all of us have already committed to. Next week is going to be very, very difficult. With her already identifying that she's willing to... Um, and, and extend her, her, her time, maybe we could look at the week after next. Do we actually need a special meeting to submit three names, Mr. Clegg? No, you do not. It's just that if the board decides, if you decide at that meeting, well, we want to make some decisions here. I'm going to have to give you the advice that everybody hates, that you're in a work session, and right. so you, you can't vote on that. You could just right. talk to... You can well, each give Kim your names at that meeting. That's fine, but you can't vote. Then in the spirit of giving everyone more time, how about I say we all have a homework assignment, and that is to produce three names from the resumes that Kim gives us, and you have to email your name in to Kim by Friday the 19th, your three names the 19th. or less. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with Friday the 19th. I, I think I'm that's okay more that. than enough time um, to object? read some applications and, and come up with your recommendations. Does anyone object to narrowing the pool on Friday the 19th? Um, I Commissioner Cruz, you're next on the board, via sir. Email. Oh. Via email. Huh? No? I do have a medical procedure, then, but it's only a CT scan so and I can come after and that's at... Right. Oh, I thought we had to... You had somebody to Commissioner. No. Oh. Boy, everybody's hitting it. Quick. Email before the 19th. Commissioner Satcher, you're next. I was going to submit uh, Commissioner Van Ostbridge's idea that we do the email. There's no issues with that. As long uh, you as you're know. not copying one another, you must send them just to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'll send them Please. Them. Yeah, the problem, right? I'll probably put you in it. <laughs> yeah. um, and then. I handwrite mine. I, Five dollars in and whoever messes it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I hate to muddy the waters late, but we want these. This is going to be unprioritized. So the third right. name is the same. That's the, the first, first name that you yeah. submit. Is that right. correct? The All way that we're submitting to do it at this point. That's another wrinkle in this. I, I had a whole. I have a whole little plan that I haven't <laughs> talked about about how to do it. Um, but you do it but, however you want. But this, everyone likes this, so let's go for you it. You can make that notation on your list. <laughs> uh, Attorney Clegg. Well, I understand the board wants to keep this moving, and I think that's healthy. That's good. But on the twenty third, we have a meeting that day, and. There's no question we're going to have to extend Karen's term as acting at that meeting regardless. Sure. Because even if you agree on the 23rd on your chosen candidate, okay. you all, there's a Ford vote majority for a particular person, we still have to negotiate a contract with that person. A contract requires a meeting of the minds. It requires both parties to agree to it, so we'll have to go through that process. So... It seems to me it might be easier to just do this on the 23rd, but you know, if the board wants to email things to, to Kim on the 19th, you're still going to wind up having to discuss it on the 23rd, regardless. The only thing is it gives Kim a little bit more time to process. That's true. It might give our list and do the background right. research that you would do. So. I, I do think it would be helpful, um, and, and I would look for Mr. Clegg to redirect on this, but I do think it would be helpful when commissioners submitted their three, up to three names, that they are submitted in order of preference. Oh, that okay. then gives me the opportunity to kind of lay out, there's going to be shared applicants on right, everyone's of list. It yeah. gives me the opportunity to lay out um, maybe even a, a scoring methodology right. that, right. that could be used for um, the applicants submitted. Great idea. So, yeah. All right, uh, Commissioner Servia. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I was going to suggest just what Bill Clegg suggested since we're so close to the 23rd. And here's, here's why. Um, if we shortlisted the candidates during a meeting, it would be more transparent. Everyone understands what others are thinking. And when Kevin may say something that I hadn't thought of, and the public can also comment. 
So uh, I'm willing to go any way the board wants to do it, but there is that um, that uh, extra layer if we do it at a meeting of, of just more transparency. Um, Commissioner Satcher. Okay, so since we're so close at this point to my original plan that's been in the back <laughs> of my head for a long time, I'm gonna just state my original plan. Uh, my idea was to for everyone to submit three in order of priority, um, with, and then we would set a number that we wanted to end up looking at at the end, uh, with the caveat that your number one choice, even if nobody else votes even on them as third, your number one choice gets to come through, commissioners, and um, so go through the first round of vetting to so that publicly we could you could make a case for that person. So, but at this point, if we're, everybody that gets even a third place vote from one commissioner is going to go through, then there might not be a need for that. But that does mean that we're going to end up with more total names. It seems All right. likely. So to summarize, what I'm hearing is that we will send the names, three names, up to three names. It doesn't have to be three. To Kim on Friday the 19th, and then that will give her time to do what she needs to do. And then um, we will actually bring it back to our board on the 19th. in our, our, our actual meeting on the 23rd. Is that correct? Am I hearing you correctly? Three names in order, like you just said, preference. Right. Up to. Say that. Up okay. to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In your prep, right, order of your preference. Right, right, yeah. I guess. One being the Kim, most you preferred. Good with no. that? Yeah, okay. I, I can figure that out. Thanks. <laughs> Go ahead. I, have, I see you over there. I apologize, Madam Chair. <laughs> I just, to add one thing is that, uh, and we all know this sitting up here, but I just wanted to say this to the public watching at home. Uh, when we send that email, it'll be a public record. Yes. And so we're not trying to do anything uh, behind anyone's back or that we would never tell the public. This is a public record. Everyone will be able to look at our email and see who we put as one, two, and three. Well, they're getting the, they're, you know, our record, I mean, our emails are a public record, and, and we're getting the applications now. So they're out there for people to see. Um, Commissioner Servia? Yes, uh, they, it is public record. They would have to make a public records request to, in order to receive it. But, um, yes, they could go through that process. So um, let me just understand, we're all going to email our top three by priority by the 19th to Kim. And then what is going to happen on the 23rd, Kim? Are you going to tabulate, tabulate the top three or the top six? Or? Well, what, um, based upon what, what things look like when they come in, my, my thought was to... Um, to provide the board with a summary ranking of um, of everyone's top one, two, or three candidates. So all, all of um, them, all of them. Right. So so the board can see that maybe candidate A has has five commissioners asking for that candidate to be interviewed, and candidate B has four commissioners. So th that's really my what I would <coughs> expect that I would be providing back to you on the twenty third is a is a summary of that. Um, and, and then a discussion can happen in terms of what, how the board wants to proceed from there. Again, I do encourage interviews, um, phone calls, face-to-face, -face, Zoom. I think that's important for the board to have that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments, commissioners? All right, and Attorney Clay, we don't need to make a motion and vote on all that, no, do we? we do not. Okay. All right, well, then that's... That's that. Um, Commissioner Whitmore, or Commissioner Van Ostenbridges, do you, do you have anything left? There, I do. Okay, uh, go there ahead. Was, there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about, and that's that um, as we go through this process, um, we have some, <coughs> some positions that are advertised right now that are big positions. There's a radio communications manager that pays up to $123,000. Yeah. Really? Um, and there yeah. are a couple other managerial positions as well, senior fiscal manager. Anyway, I, I guess I wanted to talk to um, Acting Administrator Stewart and ask her, I don't want to, you know, totally derail, you know, tip over the apple cart and say, well, let's do a hiring freeze. That, that seems like a bit much. Um, but is there a certain level um, or a tier uh, of employment status that we as a board could consider freezing f positions from that point up? Um, certainly, I would think like managerial supervisory positions, things like that, because my, my reasoning is that whomever the new administrator coming in is going to be, 
uh, they should be making these selections. And in my office, you and I discussed, like, you know, the deputy county administrator for one and the, the head of IT as a department head who's leaving, and that certainly I don't feel should be filled. Uh, but even some others, like the radio communications manager and the fiscal manager, anyway, there are some others as well. Um, so I'm sort of looking for some guidance from you on that. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I would agree that the positions that would report to the new county administrator <coughs> should be frozen until that person is um, selected. And we do have um, those positions kind of backfilled now, so to speak. We have an interim IT director. Um, you know, we have someone doing the work of the deputy county administrator right now. So I, I would be um, com comfortable with that, and I think that would be very valuable in, in uh, recruiting a new administrator. Some of the other positions, I've given some thought to you know, what we talked about yesterday. What I would be concerned about, especially even with the managerial positions, is those managers lead a group of people in a project. So for example, the radio um, manager, the radio um, operator manual, uh, manager, sorry, um, they are involved in a very large project right now with public safety that revolves around the, around the 911 system. So I would be concerned that any work there would stop. Um, we do have someone who's in the interim at the moment there, but that person does not wish to be the manager. So, um, and also when you talk about a fiscal manager in a department, um, that person, you know, reports to the director um, and is important to filling and getting the budget information prepared going forward. This is the budget season. Uh, so I would be concerned about those types of, um, of positions um, not being filled for up to a year. Um, you know, that would be a long time. Are you talking about until just the new interim? Or are you until, talking until the new interim, so 30 days, which I think is probably even more than we need. Well, would you, um, as long as we could go ahead and recruit and be ready to hire pending the approval of the new acting administrator? Okay. Something like that could work. I just don't want to stop any forward progress that we have going on. Right. Because recruiting and um, hiring staff is not as easy as um, you know, one might think. We do have positions that are harder to fill. And um, you know, while unemployment is talked about a lot, our unemployment in Manatee County is 4.3. So there aren't a million people out there looking for jobs. So we want to be able to recruit, you know, do the interview process, and then um, if we have someone on in 30 days, it could be pending their approval. That's that's really would be ideal, I think. Is there a certain – because I, I don't want to uh, put this whole uh, organization in neutral no. necessarily either. I want to keep us in drive. We just heard from Jake about what a great job we're doing vaccinating people. Um, you know, Mike Gore left, but, you know, to his credit, when people come home at the end of the day, the trash can is empty, and when you when you hit flush, it goes away. And, and these are, you know, you call 911, someone answers, and someone shows up. When you this, turn on your services. faucet, water comes out. Right, you turn on the faucet and clean water comes out. So these are the services that I want to ensure are un uninterrupted. Um, but at the same time, you see where I'm coming from, the new, the incoming administrator um, shouldn't be having a say in, in who are in these sort of top-tier managerial positions that are making up to six figures. Hires. Right. And um, you mentioned that the top of the um, right. of the wage, though, for the radio control. Yeah, it was so 77 to 123.5. Right. And I will say, too, that, you know, our managers are a very important, uh, they're the linchpin of, of the county government. They're the ones who are on the ground supervising staff who are doing the work of the people. So, you know, we, we do need managers in place. So as long as it's a short period of time, I think it would be all right. right. I, I wouldn't want to go over 30 days. And, and to be honest, to credit what you're saying, I'm not wanting to do this because of the unimportance of those positions. I'm wanting to do this because of the importance of those positions. Uh, is there a sort of a tier or a level that we should be, you know, how, how would you phrase, if I were to make a motion for some for a 30-day freeze on filling those positions, how, or do I need a motion? No, she just told you. Mm -mm. Mr. Clay? Uh, you don't necessarily need a motion. I mean, it's it, it depends upon your confidence in Ms. Stewart, and I have great confidence in her. <laughs> She's a person she of her word, absolutely. represents to the board. Sure Department directors and deputies have to come to the board for, for approval anyway. It's right. it's the, the managerial the people in the, tier, directors. Yeah. in the tier below that that are, I think, the concern, you know, because they, they she couldn't hire a department director without coming to you in the first place because sure. the, the code provides that. 
But further down, I think she's representing she's not going to do that. Is that a fair statement, Ms. Stewart? Right, as long as it's a short period of time. Yeah. yeah. 30 days is, is all I would be looking for. So. Okay, so I have that commitment on, then. On that note, okay. with what you guys are talking about, actually I, I remembered something that goes right with Sorry, that. Um, there, there's a couple of books out there where, um, and Karen actually brought it to me yesterday, and she's making copies for all of us to have, of all of the resolutions that refer to um, the county administrator with any um, guidance that he has received, he or she has received from this Board of County Commissioners, so that we'll all know what the county administrator can or cannot do in their position. So that's getting on? done. What well, we voted for the county? Is that what you mean? Forever. Any that have been voted on by this board, not. <clears throat> there's a lot there that I had never seen, done way before I came, and probably uh, okay. Commissioner Whitmore, a lot of it was probably done maybe before you came. So anyway, copies are being made, and all the commissioners will be receiving that so they can take a look at it. So, want that? Uh, Madam Chair, may I say one more thing? And that is, uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, um, when we talk about the IT director and the deputy county administrator, if you're asking my opinion, I would wait for those positions to be filled by the permanent county administrator. Not the interim. Not the interim. Um, they would be working for the permanent county administrator. We do have a deputy, uh, an interim IT director who's very qualified in place, um, who will not be leaving anytime soon and, and will be available. Um, that would be my recommendation to hire a permanent administrator and let them choose, if you ask my opinion. Right. Well, yeah, I think that all, there's a lot to play out still, and I would want to see who the acting administrator is going to be first before I'd want to make a decision like that. So, uh, but thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, that's Commissioner, all, that's thank all you. Uh, Commissioner Servia, did you have a comment to add to that? I do. That's why I pressed to, my button. Thank okay, you, that's Madam what I thought. Chairman. Um, okay, so uh, this is the first I heard of, of the book of resolutions I, for all of time. I've been trying it to sounds, get it. It sounds massive. It's I do. Not that big. Okay, so it's not massive. Not that big. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's actually I, about like that. I, I have like other you're things. You're familiar with the Beijing phone book? It's no big deal. I, I, I'd <laughs> rather read other things than that. Um, so uh, what I would rather have is like a spreadsheet summary that gives me the facts. I don't really want to go through even that they many resolutions, it. please. They already printed it. Oh, did you already print it? Oh, no, you it? hadn't. Oh. Good. You okay. need to take a look at it because there's a lot of things in there that you've probably not even thought of. Okay. I, I just, uh, I'm not a big uh, printing type of person uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. But, um, okay, spreadsheet summary would suit me if it's possible. Um, as far as freezing the hiring of mid-level management, even 30 days, that does give me a little bit of heartburn um, because I don't want to take the foot off the gas. We have a lot going on, and I understand where Commissioner Van Ostenbridge is coming from, but um, I don't know. I, I, I really I don't want a, a possible excellent employee that we may be in the middle of recruiting to be put on hold and when he probably has three or four offers and take another job. So, uh, you know, the, the workforce, it's hard to hire anyone today. So that, that's my only concern. I, I know 30 days sounds like a short period of time, but it's not if we're at the end of the negotiations. Oh, that's true. And um, I did not hear, I know there was an emotion and a vote, and I'd always like for there to be that when, when we're giving direction to the staff because I don't think the staff should be listening to whoever makes a comment and then doing what that person said without taking a vote. So not that I necessarily disagree with where you're coming from. I just, I think about the worst case scenario and that gives me some pause. Uh, does that make sense? Um, you want more clarity and certainty around it. Yeah, I just want to make sure that the recruiting process is not um, paused unnecessarily just to wait for the interim county administrator. And 30 days could be a deal breaker in recruiting the right person. M maybe it's not. I'm not even sure about that position or where we are. So 
Um, I, and Perhaps I would ask something for, that if it could be that the county administrator could bring forward to the board just to discuss with us. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see motions made and seconded and votes happen whenever we're talking about giving direction okay. to the staff. And as far as the deputy county administrator and directors, I, I strongly believe that the permanent county administrator should be making those decisions. I really do. Okay. Uh, we have interims in place to get us to that point but I don't think that an acting county administrator should be making those uh, very important hires. We need to wait till we have the permanent one. That's just my opinion. Commissioner Van Austenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and the, whether or not the, you know, the acting that we play, the one year acting administrator should make those decisions. Um, I'm not gonna say that I disagree because I don't know who the acting person is going to be yet, um, but I think it's a discussion and a debate for another day. Uh, once we have that person in place. Um, Madam Administrator, how would you like me to word my motion? Because I agree with Commissioner Servia, I should make a motion of some kind so you have a, a, a firm directive. Uh, how would you like that worded? And I guess I'm looking for how would you term, you know, what, what sort of terminology should I use to define the staff that I'm referring to, the managerial staff that I'm referring to? From what I understand, sir, you would like for there to be a freeze on hiring any director positions or deputy county administrator positions um, pending the hire of the next acting county administrator and that managerial positions that are critical could be brought to the board for review for the next 30 days. Would that be how are acceptable? We like how, are, how are we defining critical, I guess, is my question. It's, it's the, All the managers department are critical, is, sir. <laughs> okay, I'll say, I'll say the department head up is, is easy. Uh, it's it's how, am I, how are we you know, referencing the managers below the department heads? I would have to say that all managers are critical, honestly. Okay. They run their so, then, so then, Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion uh, that we have a 30-day <laughs> freeze on hiring managerial and department head and deputy county administrator positions. I could make it less wordy, Mr. Clegg, and just say That's managerial fine. positions. Honestly, from a uh, legal standpoint, it's fine. Okay. I so, will so, second the motion for discussion. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion, commissioners? I have. <coughs> I do. Do I need to push the button or? Hey, you're already pushed. I tell you what, uh, Commissioner Whitmore, I'll stay you go off first because you you've okay. been. Well, this isn't about that, so you don't want me to talk. I want to talk about the motion. I don't support the motion. Um, I, I understand where you're going from for the directors. That should be the permanent county administrator. The permanent county administrator, we have a, the temporary may be here a year, maybe not. So I can understand the directors, but managers, I don't even think you know, is it, isn't it Willie is the manager of the radio? He's been here. I don't know. He, he Whitmore, works with every time. law enforcement agency in the county. Every radio that we have in the entire county, our 911, our, all of our line, law enforcement, we can't go without that position. I mean, we've got people that work for him, and he's been the manager for years. So um, I don't think you should be putting a hiring freeze for 30 days on managers, on directors, whatever. I agree. Uh, uh, it should be the county administrator doing that because actually, does the county administrator um, approve the manager when no, they get hired? No? No, ma'am. The directors hire their own staff. So and we would be micromanaging then if we did it this way because we don't do that. That's not been our practice ever, right, that you know of? So the county administrator has ultimate hiring and firing authority over every that, county though. employee here. There's Is that correct, Mrs. There's a process. No. That's okay. correct. <laughs> Kim Stroud, for the record, HR director. Um, I, I believe that's in the ordinance um, in terms of a responsibility for the county administrator. But um, in terms of the organization chart, for example, we have a senior fiscal analyst position that we're trying to hire for for public safety, manages the entire budget of public safety. The county administrator would not be signing off on that hire. Mm -hmm. The department director, the Whoever whoever that person reports to and then ultimately the department director if there's a mid-level in there in this case There is not so that position reports directly to Jake Sauer at public safety and Those hiring packets never go to the county administrator that that's a responsibility of us as department directors to determine those hirings Thank you mm -hmm. That's all mr. Chair, I think George is has to take over. Mr. Chair. 
Oh. Yeah, you're in charge. I can't see her stream though. Uh, push or serve you, you're up. Okay, thank you. And I, I think, um, didn't we, Kim, refer to those those managers under the director as mid-level managers? Yeah, Is I mean, we don't, right we don't have, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't have an official term of mid-level managers. We've got managers, we have supervisors, we have superintendents. Um, there, there is a level of um, positions that have different titles that all report to um, a, a, count, a director. Right. So I, uh, I am of the opinion that the directors need to continue on with business as usual. And the only positions that I would like frozen are the deputy county administrator and the directors until we have a full-time county administrator. Uh, I, I just think that's the proper way to do things. Sorry. It, Sorry. If, if I could add something about the radio manager, chair. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just I just want to add a little bit of detail about the radio manager. Radios are um, a unique um, field. There's not a lot of applicants out there who have the kind of um, expertise, unique expertise that is needed for public safety. Um, I, I would say that normally, from what I've learned from both Paul Alexander and Jake Sauer, is that normally the radio folks are part of public safety, not part of IT. We've made them part of IT and that works. <coughs> so, so when we go out at some point in time recruiting for an IT director, it's likely that many of those candidates are not going to have an expertise in radio because it's not typically part of IT. It's, it's infused with public safety. But because it's such a niche, um, a position. We we are receiving applications. We've we've had that position posted. We have probably two, maybe three qualified applicants, and that's prior to the interviews. So I would I, I would want to just make sure the board is aware of um, just <clears throat> that position, that situation, and it's it's tough times to recruit. Um, especially in public sector, sector, some of these folks can go into the private sector and probably make a lot more money than they would get here. Point of order, Madam Chair, I'd like to amend my motion. Uh, I would like to amend my motion to say that the, uh, we have a 30-day hiring freeze on deputy county administrator and department director positions. Thank you. I, I will second that. Thank you. So no mid, low, whatever? Correct. Thank you. No mid, low, whatever. <laughs> Um, uh, okay. Um, Commissioner Servia, did you want to comment on that? I do, and I, I, I can't support that because I think, it sh I think it should be the permanent county, I don't think it's necessary, the permanent county administrator should be making those hires. So I don't think a 30-day freeze on those positions, you know, we're still going to have the acting county administrator in 30 days. I don't think it should be his or her role to fill the deputy county administrator and the director positions. Uh, okay, I'm gonna open the motion to public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to come forward and speak? Um, no one on the phone? Okay, then we'll close public comment. Uh, Madam Clerk, did you get that motion? I think we're all getting tired at this point. <clears throat> Pardon me, the motion was amended by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge to have a 30-day hiring freeze on department directors and deputy county administrator positions. Um, and Commission, uh, Chairman Baugh agreed to amend the motion. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore, you are on the board. Did you have something that you wanted to say before we vote? Not on that. I'm, okay. I put myself back on. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Nay. Okay, if I read correctly, looking at everyone. I was I was going to say. I thought you were. I, th I think there's only two nays. Is that correct? Commissioner Bellamy and Commissioner Servia voted nay. Only because our temporary so is going to be here a year. The motion passes five to two. Maybe a year. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Can we, or can we move past you now, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge? Are you done? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Whitmore, I'm going to go back to you. You've been waiting a long Just time. Just real quick, thank you. Sorry, I know George has been waiting longer. <laughs> um, guess what? Commissioner Satcher is a representative on the Charlotte um, 
the Charlotte yeah. Estuary, because I asked Vita, because none of us know who's on it. So it's you. I found that out. And I want to thank you for your support today, um, not directing staff, an uh, individual commissioner, not directing staff. It should go through Karen, or, or the director it should go through that. So I appreciate it. Thank you. But um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, there's a gentleman that works here, and he's probably in his 40s. And about seven years ago, he asked me to um, marry him and his wife, perform the marriage. And he's in his 40s. And I just found out last night he has COVID on a vent, and he's on a vent. Oh. Well, when you're on a vent, that's not good. And he maybe has had one or two children since I married him. And I just found out. So my prayers to him. Um, he works in the county. And... Um, if, you know, if there's anything we can all do to contribute to the family and stuff, but he, he, thank goodness he has insurance. So, and with that in mind, today I've noticed, I got this and I've been wearing it, but we haven't been practicing social distancing and there's two high risk people here that haven't gotten their vaccines yet. So if we could please, I respectfully ask us to do it, figure out a way. We haven't been wearing our masks this afternoon and I don't, we did a little bit this morning, but I know we have these. If we have these, that's why we asked for them. But we really need to, I mean, really it's only tight down at the end because I think, well, of course, George and Kevin are six feet apart. We really need to, to, to avoid all this. You could put this up, guys. I know, you know, some of our constituents may not like it, but it is hard to work all day in a mask. I agree with you. So, um, but I, you know, we do, we get picked out enough, so we need to comply until things change. Thanks, Commissioner Whitmore. Were you referring to you and I? What makes you high yeah. risk? <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking. We're the only two high risk. Oh, wow. <laughs> that haven't been okay. called. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, like oh, forget them. The computer spits us out. <laughs> I want to be done. Commissioner Cruz. Oh, be quick, Cruz. I want to take my sweet time. Oh, here we go. Make m lots of motions. I got till five. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll just try to really, really quickly blow through. Um, some of it's based on what other people have said. James, if you're excited about Chipotle, you need to go to Simply Mexican up there. It's the same thing, but way better. And it's a local restaurant <laughs> up there in Parish. It's awesome. Simply Mexican's <laughs> great. I'm just saying, well, I thought about that an hour and a half ago when he was doing his commissioner comments. Where are you? Because of this dumb thing here. Um, the, the fact trip, uh, I, I appreciate your comments, but we've been invited to a, a lot of things with fact this year. We were, a bunch of us were supposed to go to Jacksonville a couple months ago, and we turned that down. And then there's been other random things they've done. They've switched a lot of stuff online. This is, you know, we're not going to Washington, D.C. This is kind of one thing. It kind of goes along with what Commissioner Servia is doing relative to the, the food drive. It's it's just an opportunity for all of us to get out and do something good together someplace outside of this office uh, and, and have our meetings and do our things. So I appreciate anyone who doesn't want to go, but, you know, I, I think this could can and will be a, a good and meaningful and productive trip. Um, as for Washington Park, uh, Reggie, I'm actually meeting with, uh, with with Ray on Thursday, so I'll be sure to bring that up. And uh, ever since my, my campaign, I've been talking about sidewalks and streetlights because they, yep. they help with crime, they help with safety. Uh, I, I put them everywhere if I could. Um, so I'll 100% support you on that, and I'll bring it up on Thursday, start getting the ball rolling. So uh, kind of get a couple of us piling on top of FPL. And if, if she knows anyone at the Water Authority, then uh, I'll be sure to let you know. <laughs> Um, a couple of things uh, real quick. Um, one, you know, it's not come up yet because there was a delay with the, the census, but at some point in time later this year, because it has to be an even number year, uh, we are going to start talking about redistricting. Uh, it has to be an even number year, so it's not the end of this year. It's not for two years. Uh, I'm sorry. Odd number year. So if it's not the end of this year, it's not going to be until 2023, so I'm assuming it's this year. Um, fact does... Wednesday webinars, but they do them on any day they feel like it now. Um, <laughs> so like two two weeks ago, they did a whole webinar on redistricting. I looked. It, the, unfortunately, I watched it, but the link's not up to see it, but there is a presentation, like a 40-something page presentation that they showed. I kind of laid out all the rules and regulations on how redistricting is supposed to work. Um, I, I have it downloaded so I can send it through, through Karen or Vita and have it sent out just so you guys can see it if you didn't see the webinar, but it is something we have to discuss. Uh, February 16th, you all should have gotten an email uh, I, at a meeting with procurement about figuring out whether or not our local preferences for procurement matched what the other counties around us have. So we're not just 
continuously handing off our, our jobs using our taxpayer dollars for people outside of Manatee County. I'd prefer it to stay within Manatee County. It's, it, it all grows on each other. Um, I, I had them put together a whole memo, like I said, on the 16th. You all would have gotten it if you want to take a look. I'd like to have that discussion at an upcoming meeting at some point and see if there's a way we can potentially modify our procurement. Uh, there are certain counties surrounding us that we give them local preference, but they don't give it back. Yeah. So, so our Manatee County companies can bid and say Pinellas, and, and they're treated as out-of-towners, but someone from Pinellas comes and bids for us, and they're treated the exact same way as Manatee County businesses exactly. are. I think that's wrong. I do too. Um, so take a look at that memo. They laid out like 10 different counties and what their rules and regulations were and how our current thing is. It, it was a very well-done memo and kind of summarizes all of it. I would like to have that discussion to try to give more of a real local presence uh, or a preference. Uh, to Manatee County companies. Um, and the last thing, I'll, I'll skip this other thing. The last thing, uh, it, it's something that they're also working on for me, and, and hopefully there'll be a memo on this as well. We have been talking about these density bonuses. Um, I'm waiting for a memo, so we'll, we'll wait to see what that says, but I will just point out, if you look at our, our Muni code, section uh, 545, or comp plan policy 6.1.3.5, that says that we are to maintain a density bonus system, which allows density bonuses for affordable housing. If you look at uh, the REO department's incentive program guide that just came out in November, it's updated every year. It specifically states, and in fact, it goes exactly along with the conversation in our last land use meeting, uh, projects with at least 25% units designated as affordable are eligible to request a density bonus from the Board of County Commissioners. This density bonus may allow the maximum project density to increase to the maximum density in the next highest category on the future land use map. For example, and this is funny because it's literally the exact example that was brought to us. For example, a project in a Res 3 area would be eligible to request a density bonus equal to a six dwelling, equal to six dwelling units per acre maximum of a Res 6. And that is contingent upon a 25% unit uh, uh, afford affordability. So I, I just want to bring it up. People were saying these things don't exist, and so therefore we can't hold people to them. It's literally in both of our both our mini code and our comp plan and our incentive program guidelines. Uh, but they are putting more information together, and then we can all discuss when we can start using the policies already in place. Uh, that's the end of my comments. Thank you. Whoa, that's it? I want to go home. Wow, you didn't even let me get any water. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Servia, did you want to make a comment? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Commissioner Cruz. Uh, on the affordable housing density bonus, yes, absolutely correct. We have those in the comp plan. Um, when I hear Glenn Jibalina talk about density bonuses, I, I don't think he's talking about that exactly. And that's what I was commenting on. Um, so, for example, mm -hmm. in a, a Res 6 future land use category, um, sometimes an applicant may ask for six dwelling units per acre. And I don't think that's a density bonus. It's not because that's not a real example because a Res 6 does allow up to six. But say more, for instance, which was the project we had been discussing, it had a future land use of Res 3, and they asked for Res 6, and then they promised only to build four and a half. So they were, in fact, asking to go up to the next highest next highest zoning permission from from res three to res six we actually allow that in fact it's the exact example that jerry and her team use it's just conditioned upon 25 percent affordability what glenn's referring to and and i don't f disagree it's just a matter of you know studying it more to understand the exact right number it's hard to always build uh, affordable units because when you build more units someplace it you have to shrink all the lots. You're, you're, you're piling more on. It's not like an apartment complex where you can add a floor. You know, when you're doing single family, you're, you're in a certain envelope, so it makes smaller. What Glenn's proposal was, and it has been done elsewhere, is you still require the 25%. We do require it. That's what I didn't understand last time. It's in here to require. But if somebody opted not to build the 25% because it would require smaller lot sizes and so forth to, to put more houses there, he proposed a dollar amount basically to buy out your, your affordability. So whatever number you come up with, you know, 10,000, 20,000, whatever it is, it's like, okay, 
you're going up to 100 units, that means you have to give me 25 affordable, and someone says, ah, I can't really cram another 25 in here, or I just don't want to put the affordable housing here. Well, then you can pay for that density, which would then go into an affordable housing trust fund, if you will, that we can then use to provide affordable housing someplace else within the county. So somebody's still providing us some level of affordability, even if they're not building it themselves. That's all Glenn's saying, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong, I'm just saying that's the example he's using, is giving people a, an opt-out clause in exchange for a monetary compensation. Okay, yes, I understand that, and thank you. So yes, the only density bonuses we have are if you provide affordable housing up to 25%, or a minimum of 25%, or if you're on an urban corridor, right. we also allow some density right. bonuses. It used to be if you were in a res six future land use category, you could do four by right, and you could do six with special approval. Now that all that is gone, when people come here and they request the maximum, there's no longer that um, that gap to consider if the additional density is appropriate or not, um, but rather they just have the rights to ask for that. And so that's what I thought some of the discussion had been. So thank you for clarifying that. Regarding um, procurement, great topic for us to talk about in a workshop. Um, yeah, I love local preference too. I wanna make sure that our local people are getting all the opportunities for all the work but there's always a, another side to that, right? And the other side is that sometimes um, bids become less competitive if too much weight is given to local preference. Um, if you widen the net of applicants, there's more competition and therefore better pricing. And the second thing I'm concerned about is just the number of people that we personally want here in Manatee County to possibly build roads in a triple P, you know, we need a wider net sometimes. So as we develop a rating system for local preference, I'm in favor of that, but we have to be careful that we don't get an unintended consequence uh, of the two things I just mentioned. Yeah, no, and, and take a look at the mem memo because it does talk about that. You'll see some of these counties actually, have, anyone can bid on anything. It's just some of them will say if you're from our county or from our county and the neighboring county, whatever they then they have the right, if they're within a certain percentage of the dollar, to basically bid down to that lowest bid and, and be awarded. There's a lot of different verbiage that can be factored in. And, and I also understand you don't want to isolate other counties because then some of our Manatee County people may do a lot of business in, say, Hillsborough or someplace else. And, you know, you don't want to get into a, a trade war, if you will, from doing that. But if you really look, I think we give – and don't hold me to it – I think we give – local preference to five or six different counties surrounding us. But only, I think, two of those counties give reciprocal preference to us. I think Sarasota and Charlotte are the only two. But we give it to Pinellas, we give it to DeSoto, we give it to Hillsborough. They're counted as local for us, but we're not. But our local counties aren't getting reciprocal benefits going the other direction. I just think that's wrong. We either need to get, our, get these, these businesses reciprocal rights there or we need to start focusing our attention to basically our, our friends that are cheating us right. Thank you. Are we done with that? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did my four minutes of comments take too much? How did you go? <laughs> yes. Phew. Anything else, George? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that is funny. <laughs> Carol left. Yeah, see, she didn't I know, think it was important. Yeah. Anything right. else? Commissioner? No. Seriously. I'm serious. Okay. Well, um, you know, I just, I just want to mention this. I have already forwarded this to the county, um, so, but I just happened to see. Um, please don't turn our aquifer into a landfill. I have ag wells very close to HRK. So that is something that perhaps you don't think about necessarily, but we do have some farmers in the area. Uh, that that could be very concerning to. I just thought I'd, I wanted to tell you. Um, Madam Chairman, can you tell us who it was from? Since Alan you Jones. Read it in the record. Thank Alan you. Jones. Thank you. Um, so I have, like I said, already forwarded that to the county. But um, before we leave, real quick, um, Karen, did you have anything you want to bring forward? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Charles has come forward um, with METV and uh, requested that we move our work session for Tuesday to the chambers. Um, because of some electronical issues up there. So would that be suitable, Madam Chair? Uh, it, it is with me. Is it okay with the rest of the commissioners? I'm fine. 
Okay. All right. We'll plan it for here then. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to add before I adjourn this meeting that um, I thank all of you for the faith that you are showing uh, me, and uh, I do appreciate it. And as I always have, I will always try to be an example and, and be a good chairman for you in this position. Um, I, I do believe we have an awful lot of work to do. We are behind the ball, behind the eight ball here on what we need to do. So I'm hoping that we can all come together, work together as we should uh, to, to make the decisions necessary for county and staff. So that being said, unless uh, uh, um, county attorney. I do have to just. I was the, going right to the you. The risk of r incurring the wrath of the client. I do have to um, <laughs> just make sure it's clear to commissioners what Kim is going to do next week. Because there is some sunshine law that says that if you're going to use emails to her to eliminate candidates, that's a problem. So I want to make sure it's clear. She's going to get your emails. Each of you is going to show who you prefer in those emails. But until the board meets the following Tuesday and actually makes decisions, right. you're not eliminating anyone from the selection. Right. She's just getting that information to help right. her to prepare for the discussion on Tuesday. Right. I just want to make sure that's clear for the record so there's no question. No, and that's, that's all what I thought I we were doing anyway. I, 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 that was my understanding of the board's intention. But I don't want anybody out there to Got misconstrue it. what the board is doing next week. Okay. So, All right. Thank you very much for that addition. Had a two minute very limit, welcome. and then I was going to make a motion to suspend what? the county attorney. But yeah, I got out of here, just made it. <laughs> you see this in my hand? <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>